She wasn't a witch. She she drowned. So I'm half Cuban, um, and I think my ancestors more recently came from like either France or Italy. So can you tell me some aspects of your culture that are independent from mine as two white people, just because you have those particular ancestors? That's why we have statues of Athena in our courthouses. You know that Lady Justice that you just said, that's not Athena either. <laughs> a different Greek goddess. Oh, like, right. You don't well, know any of I these things. You're the one that brings them up. Of I'm studying computer science. I've written a lot of papers about AI and automation. Yeah, so like you even have... reading like the thing that you linked me, like I'm just like scrolling through this. It is important to note, however, that even when some tasks are automated, employment in those occupations may not decline, but rather workers may perform new tasks. When they were brought uh, yeah, over as slaves, all really of them were basically mixed up. And so they don't have like the trip to Ellis Island to read the books. It's, oh, this is when my great grandfather came over. Or like, oh, my great, great, great grandpa came on the, the Mayflower. Great, 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 great grandpa came on the Mayflower. They don't know that. So the idea that like black people are like, oh, no, I'm not actually American. I'm from Kenya or some shit. That's just, if you're a descendant of a slave, you don't know shit like that. I didn't my want to get to school. told me that my IQ was just like right above the limit in order to get into the gifted school, which was 132. What do you think? What does like assembly mean? Assembly? Like assembly code? Yeah. What does that like mean? Like the zeros and ones? <laughs> That's binary. You don't have any idea what any of this is. You said you're in comp sci? I'm done. Go to the next question. Um, like, you're a fraud. Okay. You actually have no idea. You're a compulsive liar, yeah, and go, you're a fraud. Ahead, 140 plus IQ and is now arguing pro-race realism while representing themselves with a cartoon girl while thinking marching music is big. Listen, he just didn't remember it all, guys. You can't expect to quiz somebody that was a professional musician, worked at a ski resort, um, publishes his own uh, AI program, goes to school for comp sci, went to a specially gifted like institution for X-Men. You can't expect to remember all this shit. But he will read you yeah. the Wikipedia definition of Plato's forms that also has the same example of a horse. <laughs> well, I'd like to tell the story, sort of. A story of a specific civilization and a uh, group of people descendant from the ancient ones i'd like to talk about ancient greece and how that was in many ways the uh you know the first civilization remotely like ours how they, they you know they had lots of ideas they had the, the great ancient greek philosophers even the pre-socratics you know, you had you had Heraclitus and Democritus and people like that. You had Socrates. His best student was Plato. His best student was Aristotle. His best student was Alexander the Great, who captured, uh, who conquered half the known world. And then, you know, to, as a, a civilization that combined with that one, that that took in the best parts of it and uh, and combined it with an imperialism. Are you tired of clean with clothes that just don't smell clean? A sort of what if your clothes can martial order and zeal and. Um, uh, of, of obvious nationalism the romans the the romans were obviously you know they're they're quoted all the time as you know one of the great civilizations ever known to mankind an empire that lasted for a thousand years and it started as a, a pagan empire and then you know it's uh, for a while it's i think official religion was judaism or at least the prevalent one and then what happened is uh, starting with the emperor constantine the Christians started to gain major influence in Rome, and, and now we see the, the real foundations of all European descendant civilizations that were under Rome before the fall, before the, the split between you know, the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire. And it seems like since that point, we've had many different civilizations, many different ethnic groups from different places. You see you know, uh, England, Spain, France, Germany. It's all of these civilizations are, are descendant from Roman Greece in some way. They share the philosophers. They, they uh, respect them. They, they learn about all the ancients, even people they disagreed with, because they thought that the ideas were important. There were great thinkers who came before them, and they respected that. They respected tradition. They respected the ancient knowledge and wisdom. And... You know, you can see this play out in their architecture, in all of their cultures that grew side by side, distinct. They all had, you know, many, many differences. And you can see them, obviously, just looking at those cultures, looking at their traditions. But they all had some things in common, being descended from these mother civilizations. And they still do in many ways today. Now, I'd say that 
at some point, the these civilizations have largely derailed from this, and they've gone in a different direction, which is, you know, obviously, it's uh, a different. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say a different direction, and it's the, they've turned to liberalism, starting with what the French Revolution or something somewhere around there. Now we see in America specifically today these these ancient this ancient wisdom is being completely abandoned. We see the the cultural, um, I guess, decay. From, from these mother civilizations that we no longer respect them. We want to tear down all the statues from history of the, the great leaders all throughout it and all of Western civilization. I'm not just talking about slave owners, but you know the, the founding fathers of America, people who existed even before America. Um, the, there are people here now who completely disrespect this and, and reject the entire history of this civilization. Now, when these these separate civilizations all created empires and dominated the known world they had they they brought order to a lot of people that didn't have you know infrastructure and things like that i think in many ways they made a lot of the colonized countries greater than the ones who were next to them which never were colonized and you know as we see decolonialization we see that these these other peoples who are not descended from this are rejecting it entirely and going back to their old ways. And when that happens, things don't turn out so well for the people who are descendant from those mother civilizations, the European descendant groups. And for me, I'd like to argue tonight that these civilizations should still exist, adapting in many ways maybe, but they, they, there's something worth preserving there. I'm expecting Destiny tonight to you know, get into all sorts of little... You know, maybe little nitpicking details about how is Mexican music different from American music, like he did before. Maybe quiz me on musical terms, like partials and blues scales or something like that. Um, I think that's all completely beside the point. And, you know, I, I, maybe I couldn't tell you with the correct terminology the difference between Mexican music and American music. But I can tell you that if you play them t both in front of me, I can tell you the difference. And that's what you see today is, you know, a lot of these things like culture, which are very difficult to articulate and describe, they are they, they are visible upon plain view when you go to different places, how these people are different. So, you know, I'd like to get into that a little bit tonight, and I'd like to talk about the future of, of where this nation is headed, where all of Europe is headed, the future of a white minority in the United States, while we have these two separate groups of peoples or that, you know, one descendant from ancient Roman Greece, and uh, largely categorized by Christendom throughout history, and the people who are not, who see them as invaders, as oppressors, as colonizers, as, as slave owners, as, as you know, uh, people who did the Holocaust. I, I see all this as a major problem, and I think there's going to, you know, um, there's going to be all sorts of, of cultural and social conflict that we're headed towards that won't be so good for those people. Okay, thank you. Um, that's me. Um, I'm sorry. What the fuck is this debate over again? I just can I get a quick refresh on that? Immigration and you know little Timmy. Okay. Um, Jesus. <clears throat> so I think that today, I think that the internet, especially, and all the technology around us, has kind of led us to be more isolated than I think we have at any other point in human history. Uh, technology was supposed to be the thing that kind of like bridged our worlds together, give us an ability to communicate with each other and allow this kind of like inflow and outflow of culture and friendship and relationship and communication and all this stuff to happen. And in some ways it has, but I think in other ways it's left people feeling uh, more disconnected or isolated than they have in the past. I think that these feelings of disconnection and isolation are weighing on people, and I think it leads them to try to find these little niche groups where it feels like they have something that they can identify with, um, because it is no longer with your local communities, or it seems like it's no longer with a local church. So some people, uh, you know, become rabid socialists or communists, and they try to pretend that they're Marxists or whatever, even though they've never read a word of Marx. And other people, unfortunately, you know, look at their skin color, they find white identitarian groups, and like, oh, well, we're white, like, that can be our thing. Uh, I don't want to go back to shitting in the streets. I like playing video games on my computer, and I like all of the modern 
uh, accessories and luxuries that exist in our current day life. I don't see the need to get rid of any of that. I don't see an advantage of going back to, usually people say go back to the 1950s, but I guess now we're talking all the way back to the 400s, um, if, we're, if we're going back to Rome. Um, so yeah, I think that the idea that you can freeze culture in any type of glass and have this unchanging, unmoving culture is really silly. Uh, I guess through the course of this debate, the thing that I'll seek to establish is that one, you don't really have a good way of identifying what any of your problems are. Instead, it's all kind of just these vague notions of like, well, what about this, if that, or giving some incorrect diagnosis for why Rome fell. Uh, spoiler alert, it wasn't because of uncontrolled immigration. Um, and then I'll more importantly point out that even though you can't identify the problem, or especially because you can't identify the problem, you also have no real prescription. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the saddest things for a lot of these more radical groups is you get a lot of these people that get kind of funneled into these groups where they're like, okay, well, we're white, we gotta protect our culture, what do we do? And you don't really have any answers for that. You're not winning legislatively anywhere. You don't have your own country anywhere. You don't have any representation anywhere. Um, and you really don't have any plans forward for like, well, how do we make these groups? You know, Instead of encouraging people to live healthier lives, to make friends, to go out and socialize, it's more just like getting more and more in the weeds of these insane online uh, whatever groups where you know you continue to like exhibit the, the most unhealthy behavior possible um, so yeah I guess that's what we'll talk about in this conversation sure well the first thing I'd like to say is I'm glad that you openly admit that white people who seek to preserve and uh, you know sustain their any form of their culture and, and any part of it they have no representation today. They are largely outnumbered by people who are against that. They, you know, don't have any political power. And um, yeah, there's there's basically no one sticking up for them. And I think that's a, a big part of the problem I'd like to get into tonight. Sure. Can so, you tell me um, what are what aspects of white culture do you think need to be represented politically that are not currently represented politically? Well, it's a it's a good question. What I'd say is that the yeah, America right now is a lost nation in some ways when it comes to culture. And it has been for quite some time, as you correctly pointed out before. America has been a, a mixing of different ethnic groups for a very long time now. And even while it was still just the European descendant groups that are all mixing together, even though they had more, you know, more in common than people from Africa or China or India, they or, or South America, there's still a, a mixture which is is causing yeah a, so a we're lack, getting we're kind of like of a cohesive culture yeah so and we're trailing these, off these communities in order to it to dissolve like you said where people are not able to just go out and uh, you know in the public square or in you know have what, what i don't know but like public dances things like that you can which go on the public they, center of public dances get to know each other right you can There's do that all right now church. you can do all of this right well, now so I'm going to go back and oh, ask yeah, you the question can, again. But people are not for some reason, and that's the question, right? <sighs> yeah, but why, that, this is the whole. People... Yeah, so this is the whole point. So I think there's a lot of interesting conversation that we can have about why people aren't going out publicly anymore. Um, I think there's an interesting conversation to be had about the loss of churches as the kind of centerfold for communities. Um, I think the loss of union culture probably plays into that quite a bit. I think that the hyperfixation on moving to the coast into these like more concentrated cities for jobs, the economic opportunities, is probably a reason. I think that technology leads us to be more and more culturally isolated from each other because we connect via the internet now instead of via face-to-face. -face. I think that there are plenty of interesting kind of questions to ask to figure out why we're kind of like more isolated. I don't think the answer is because there aren't enough white people or we're losing our white culture. So I'm gonna bring us back one more time and we'll see how, how long you talk without actually answering this question again. What are some aspects of American culture that you believe aren't adequately represented in Congress? Like what are some aspects of white American culture that you'd wanna see represented in Congress and where should they be represented? Well, it's it's funny that you would phrase the question that way because it's uh, you know ob there's an obvious push in in all of you know the not just the media but in government uh, against what people in critical race theory would call white culture and they they seem very uh, very good at describing it describing the differences between white culture and African American culture or Latin culture and uh, they, they seem even more interested in making our uh, the culture in America like those other ones than uh, what you call white culture. So can culture. you tell me, what do so, people in critical race theory define white culture as then, if they've defined it? So you can't give me your definition, so how do they define it since you're citing them now? Uh, yeah, sure, things like the, the Protestant work ethic, things like, um, you know, the uh, focus on, 
um, so America is already like, one of the like, most uh, overworked time nations. Orientations yeah. are, you know, so, there's an um, emphasis yeah. on the scientific method. So there's America, yeah, so America. Yeah, so, there's uh, the holidays. There's the traditions. It's the heroes. Okay, okay, it's hope. the shared story of a people <clears throat> that goes back for thousands of years. And that's okay, yeah. the difference is that yeah. these people, they see themselves as descended mm -hmm. from these civilizations. That's the story that the, a lot of Americans grew up being told is, look, here is the the long course of history of your civilization, of your people, and, and you have a, it, you're born into this. Whereas other people from other groups, they don't see it the same way. They have a different shared story. And this, these shared stories are one of the most important cults of, uh, or parts of culture next to language, which is they see it as these people did all of this and then colonized and oppressed your people. And, and they, they see it as a bad thing rather than a good thing. And so I think a big part of it is just simply embracing the traditions, embracing the historical Western European um, identity. And, and this, the people who are not from that are not going to, to buy into that. Whereas the people who are, I think that our, we could live a much better future if they did that. So two big parts. So number one, um... I, this is kind of pointless, but I'll just bring attention to this. Every time I ask you a question, all you do is you start reading me another script or another monologue, like you're giving a speech. Um, I'm trying to engage you in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but it seems like every single time I ask you a question, you have to kind of like dive off into some other. I don't know if you have these written down. I, yeah, I don't think that well, I don't think that happened yeah, at all. I that, think I gave you four or five different yeah. answers of just small examples mm -hmm. of white culture. Yeah, so, and largely what I'm describing mm -hmm. more, I see that you're trying to drag the conversation down into the weeds on like specific parameters or, or facets of culture. That's like, what's this one thing you want? And we can talk about that all night. But there's something larger than that happening here. I'm yeah. So if you wanna, if you wanna, yeah. yeah so if you wanna, story if you wanna do turnabout as fair play, if you want, you can ask me about some more complicated topic that I enjoy that has many facets to it. I will be able to defend to you every single one of those facets about that particular thing that I enjoy. I'm sorry, but I wholesale reject this idea that me asking you about any of these four or five things that you say are the most important qualifiers of your culture as getting lost in the weeds. With all due respect, well, see, these are the weeds the, that you're running right us there. into, and you're the one that has the inability to defend them. I notice that you opened the speech up being upset about our last musical conversation. I will remind you once more, the only only reason we had that conversation is because you're the one that said that you had the background in music and you were a professional musician and you were the one that wanted to get into that conversation. And we don't have okay. to have that conversation, but First if you're all, going to I bring up a topic, I am going to ask you questions. Okay, hold on. If you want to go line by line, we can do this, but when you when you ramble on a monologue, I'm going to respond to every single thing you said. So I'm, I'm going to do that. This is why this conversation is, is already kind of like getting yeah, off track, sure, right? Yeah, sure, of so course. If you, just, so if you're going to bring up four or five like things that are all part of... I haven't... No, no, I'm not losing anything, right? Forests don't exist unless trees are in them, okay? We're trying to figure out if you have any trees that's at all that's true. the problem right now right so when you start and to so say you're things, denying that there's you're denying that there is any uh any facet that exists to white identity at all or, or european descendant groups in any manner is that is that what you're saying there's no trees in this forest i think whatsoever. that in the united so states of america all over it in the united states of america wait are you trying to talk Brittany? um no no go ahead i oh. was gonna God. Okay. Um, in the United States of America, if people were to start asking me where your big cultural divides are, I think that my the, the number one easily would be urban versus rural. That would be my, my huge cultural divide. Um, and then we could start going down other lines. But in terms of falling down ethnic lines, um, I mean, firstly, like how you would even begin to define white gets hairy, right? What are we talking about for like mixed race relationships? What about for like a lot of Hispanic people? So like m my mom is Cuban, but none of us are really dark. A lot of people that come from Cuba aren't. Um, you know, you've got the whole mestizo versus castizo thing. Um, like you've got children of like relatively Hispanic looking people that look pretty white. Like this whole idea that you're trying to separate things out as like these people have this culture and these people this culture when it's probably way more regional and people can tell that like this is another thing too like people can tell just by the jokes you say or the way you sound you know like are you from the east coast are you from the west coast are you from california are you from northern florida um these like racial lines that you're so obsessed with drawing i don't think most people even identify across these culturally uh, yeah i didn't put it that way at all in fact i'm, I'm not talking about skin color in any way that's something you brought up I'm um, talking to be about clear you said mixing a lot of, of different ethnic groups you 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 used that word multiple times. I've written it down on a notepad in front of me. I'm writing that down. So if you sure, tell me you this think has that ethnicity and race are the same thing, can you tell me the difference between the two? 
Uh, yeah, sure. Race is, well, let's go with, for the sake of discussion, the critical <laughs> race theory definition. No, no, no let's go race. with your definition. Okay. You're the one using the word, so you tell me how you're using it. If you want to draw a distinction between race and ethnicity, that's well, fine. Tell I, me how actually, you just. I'm not you, the one who brought up race. See, I brought up ethnicity, and ethnicity I can go into. That's different. Ethnicity is a group of people who have a shared history. They have a shared culture. They have shared, generally shared religion, um, a language. Uh, you know, uh, music, art, all, all of these things, architecture, it all ties in together because it's a, a group of people who are distinct from other uh, other ethnic groups. So can you give me an example of like, yeah, can you give me an example of an ethnic group? There are people who are largely the same race who have gone into separate ethnic groups with distinct identities, right? Yeah. So absolutely, th this this idea that it's it's racial is, is you know, that I haven't said anything like that at all. Now, well, so if, so if you, if you have like you're an, asking about culture, and I've told you already, the most important part of, of uh, or one of the most important parts of culture to me is the shared story, shared history of a people, because a lot of things are downstream from that. The traditions, which like, what do they represent? Something in that story. The holidays would represent something in that story. The heroes, the legends, the 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 archetypes of, of so this what is, it we're means on the monologue again this is the woman, this is the memorized like speech again yeah well you you just asked me to get real specific about one of the i didn't of all i asked you was is. no all i asked you was the difference between race and ethnicity i didn't ask you anything about culture but every time you answer oh, well, a question you've you got to dive into your you said prepared i didn't speech answer again. any questions at all whatsoever mm -hmm. i described the difference between race and ethnicity right there yeah. so now i'm you, trying to ask you a question to figure out if you really believe this so would you say that a black person and a white person that grew up in the same ghetto and came out of it with all the same values and gangster rap and whatever you want to ascribe to them, right? You'd say, oh, that white guy and that black guy, those guys are both ethnically the same. You would say that? Yeah, I don't I don't think there's actually a, a good example of that that takes place by, by virtue of the fact alone that these people have different shared stories. The white guy and the black guy, maybe if you look at just their lives or like what they ate that week or, or you know, what they've done in the past you know, 10 years, maybe you could say it like that. Like these people have a, a lot of things in common. They can talk on the same level. They know what they're talking about, things like that. But when it comes to the, the larger arc of history, these people have completely different stories and their people groups have completely different stories. And yeah. I think that so we're, a part we're of what I'm here to doing do, the to memorized speech again, the issue yeah. of, of mashing all of these people together, mm -hmm. it denies both of those people in that scenario. Yeah. They're, uh, so, they're historic people's identity, which yeah. is important. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good speech. So I'm going to ask you the question again, since Thanks. you seem to be unable to answer it. So if you have a black guy and a white guy, they grow up in the same neighborhood, go to the same schools, listen to the same music and all that shit. Would you say that that black person and that white person are ethnically the same thing i i think i just answered that like exactly do you want me to just repeat myself i'd like you to answer that question without giving me a speech about like well i would say they're culturally similar i'm asking you because i asked you for a definition of ethnicity and you gave me a definition i've never heard before now maybe some people use this definition i'm just curious that's if you really believe that's it used in so international you said ethnicity you're had more a, than likely to look up the that, definition of ethnicity it doesn't surprise me that you don't know it given that you're totally okay with wiping them out all across the planet I've never said anything about wiping anything out. Um, I'm sure, just curious. you're talking about mashing mm -hmm. all sorts of people from different historically ethnic groups together, making them both grow up in the exact same way in everything, in, in some postmodern worldview, some uh, constructivist idea that, that you we're going to just make everybody uh, all come together in this Is new every identity. single person that went to your high school the exact same ethnicity? Do they become that by no, going to the same no, school? No, not at all. Every and, single uh, person in a workplace, the, the exact same ethnicity? The ethnic groups in my high school all identified with each other, actually. It's like uh, all the black kids hung out in the same spot all mm -hmm. together every single day. They were even there during classes. I'm not sure how it worked. Cool. But so they, ask, they hold themselves yeah. distinct. It's not something mm -hmm. I've done. This so, is something people all across the world, all across the planet do. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, I understand. Had a, a we're going that, into another memorized speech. Sure, I understand. Go for yeah. it. Okay, yeah. so no memorized it is speech, another memorized man. speech. Yeah. So I've asked two questions. I haven't gotten an answer on either. So right after bed start, I'll try to do this ethnicity uh -huh. one one more time. It should be a simple yes from you if you truly believe the answer you're giving me. So if you have a black guy and a white guy, grew up in the same neighborhood, same shared experience, the same music, same movies and everything, would you say that these two people are ethnically identical? This black person and this white person are of the same ethnicity. Would you say that? 
Yeah, uh, not at all. And the reason for that is what I've been saying all along this whole time is it's a group of people with a historically with a shared history. That's one of the most important parts of culture. And I've described it uh, a lot. You, I mean, you can call it a monologue all you want, but it's, it's very important because a lot of aspects of culture all come downstream from that. The holidays, the heroes, yep, the traditions. So we're doing the memorized the speech language, again. We're the doing the memorized realism. speech again. We're doing no, the memorized speech again. No, these are all just again. ideas off the top mm -hmm. of my head. I'm not like I can tell uh, they're covered off the top of your head because you didn't prepare for this. Day, like, I don't know why yeah, you would think that memorized. if I talk about this type of shit all day, I don't know why you think you can do this conversation on, on the fly with me. That's kind of surprising. Um, or you just like think I'm an idiot, I guess. Yeah, well, then, yeah. it's it's interesting that you say that, but yeah, when I give you like exactly the answers to your questions, you're completely dumbfounded as to like how you can possibly respond to that because i understand you want the answer you, you want the answer to be like oh no it's uh, it's all about just white people and it's all about race and we should you know ship everybody else off or something like that i, I get that that's the answer you're looking for that's just not the answer that i have for you so instead of just mm -hmm. uh you know keep trying keeping on trying to keep this conversation down on this one point on well you didn't give me the answer i wanted for mm -hmm. ethnicity you gave me the international relations definition of it so Instead if you're of telling that, me maybe you yeah. can try and you know move move yeah. this conversation i'm trying to i'm trying forward. to move wrong so if you're telling me that because a black have important yeah, things to discuss. i understand so if you're telling me that a black person and a white person can never have the same ethnicity then it seems like there's some aspect of skin color that's important there or some genetic aspect that's important there can you at least admit that or well, it's it's funny that you categorize it according to racial lines, according to to skin color, especially because to be clear, you're the one that's done that because you I'm repeatedly tell me that you would never call a white and a black person the same ethnicity. You've done that. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what you saying, mean. Mm -hmm. What you're saying, and it has nothing to do with whether they're black or white. That's the thing. Then why they is a black person and a white person can't be? Why can't they be the same ethnicity? Historical ethnic groups who have different stories. The black guy, his his story is of his people, not just the story of his life. The story of his people is never never going to be that he's the descendant from these colonizers. He's the, the, a descendant from a part of Rome. He's a descendant from one of these Roman pe Roman uh, Roman your dependent or descended civilizations. How do you know so that? So that's never going to be his story. But, but you and, don't know you don't know all of these people. that these people yeah. oppressed his mm -hmm. people. These people So we're back the, on the back America, on the memorized talking points again. They took people onto yeah. the, the slave ships. They put these people in chains. Mm -hmm. They you know they did slavery. Still back on and the memorized talking points. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. memorized about it, man. It's you can you know you can mm -hmm. cope all you want saying I'm like mem I memorized something for this. Like yeah, you're so, not that important. Yeah, so me. usually okay. when I'm having a conversation with somebody, the way that I can usually tell that they're nervous is it's kind of like when you're doing an essay in high school and you don't know the answer to the question, so you just start writing down every single thing you know on the topic and you hope that you put enough that the teacher like, well, marks you out for Well, that's a cute way the... to categorize it. Well, man, I mean that's essentially what we're doing. Deep, I'm just, deep yeah. questions about culture, about history, about ethnicity, and these are not just simple things. If you want, if you want to go with, well, culture is just whether you're white or black that to me that's completely i'm not the one that the said whether culture was just white from, or black you're the one that said different groups. you're the one that told me that a white and a black person can never be the same ethnicity and then in the same breath told me it has nothing to do with skin color when i told you the only difference between these two people is the fact that they're white and black maybe they were both descended a long long yeah, time ago so, from romans you don't uh, know that they're, they're right, not can, every black person in the united skin states color all you like you're the one doing that to be clear test, and it's, it's going to say what ethnicity are you from what's your what's your uh ancestors and it's going to be what for the black guy it's going to be bantu or you know or, Wait, or why would you bring up why, why would you bring up why would for, you bring up 20 the white guy, it's going me. to be spanish portuguese yeah. you know uh, anglo it's, well, well, you know something like yeah. that so why would you bring up 23 and me for ethnicity when you told me ethnicity was shared culture religion language and art what does 23 and yeah, me have to do with that and again well you're missing out again on the most important part i don't know if this is like you're just unable to hear this part but the shared history the shared story of a people and and the people from the Congo or from Nigeria or from uh, Ethiopia, they all have a different a different story going back a thousand years than European descendant peoples, and they always will, no matter what. It doesn't matter if you mash them all together. It doesn't matter if you tell them, okay, well, we're all going to eat apple pie and whistle Dixie together. It doesn't matter because they have uh, maybe in their lives, if if you are only working with people who can't think in terms beyond their lives they can't think about history before they were born that would be something that would yeah. work so but that's again not how to be clear like that's not how the world yeah, works. i just think it's really funny 
it's not funny actually it's really frustrating because i know that you're not giving me what you actually believe maybe because we're on a public platform this is why you hide your face too um when you're talking about like ethnicity and then you tell me very specifically it has nothing to do with like skin color or genes and then you're appealing to a 23 and me test we all know what 23 and me is um so it feels like you're just trying to dodge the question but we'll move past that and i'll try to engage i, I guess with whatever i can like dig out of like this shit hole you've dug yourself into so you're talking about like this idea of like sure. shared culture shared religion shared language so let's say that you have like a person from some culture that they're like grandparents immigrated to another culture so now they've had parents that were born in that country and now they've been born in that country like what culture or ethnicity we should say i guess are they more likely to identify with the country where they've now existed for two generations or whatever history was in the country they came from yeah i can answer that question uh, actually i think pretty well with with an anecdote if you'll grant me that it's so i've i've had a couple friends over the course of my life that i used to you know uh, argue about it, international relations stuff with about all the time. I argued immigration back in my cringe Ben Shapiro days. I argued immigration with a, a Hispanic friend of mine, a couple of them actually. And it's funny, at, at one point I got them, you know, really cornered and they, they had nothing else to say and they knew that I had them. And what they told me, I'll never forget, one of my friends looked me, to, looked me in the eye and he said, well, really I just don't want to keep them from coming in here because they're my people. Those are my people that are coming across the border. And that really struck me at the time. It was you know, maybe one of my first red pills on this because I asked him, I'm like, what do you mean? Aren't Americans your people? You're, you're a citizen here. You were born and raised here. You're a second generation immigrant. You know, you know the story of when, how your parents got here, how grateful they were for the opportunities and everything. And, and yet he still says, yeah, but uh, you know, Americans aren't like my people. That's just like my nationality. That's what I have legal documents for. And the reason is, as I've been saying before, that his history is different from ours. Whether you take him in and you say, okay, you raise him to, to like I said, to, you know, love apple pie and, and baseball, whistling Dixie, okay? He is, We're back in the prepared speech, by the way. Go ahead. He will always, well, well no, not at all. I'm telling a story. The apple he pie, will always the Dixie, see yeah. himself as his story mm -hmm. is that his people, he came from a previously colonized country, okay? And then he came to America, and his people are still back there. That's the way he sees it, no matter what. Now, unless you want to erase all of the history books and tell all of these people, you know, uh, that none of that happened and then raise them all in the same same cultural conditions, all in the same way and say, you know, we were all just born just now. And there's there were no differences between the people historically. That's fine. You know, maybe maybe you could make something like that happen inside of a lab or something like that. But the fact is that no yeah. matter what this guy what what how he's raised what his culture is being raised in america he will always identify with the people from his historical ethnic group that's why i brought up the 20 me 23 and me thing it's, okay so it's a, it shows yeah, it so, shows that these people okay. are from distinct ethnic groups historically they have different stories for for every one anecdote you can provide i can give you like a million anecdotes in the opposite direction so i mean like if you're going to tell me like things that your friend said I, I don't really know how i can ever argue with that um i'll give a really common Asian American experience that one of the most cringe things that Asian people deal with, especially Asian women, is when white guys go up to them and they're like, where are you from? Where are you really from? And they're like, bro, I'm American. I don't speak fucking kind Korean or Japanese you, right? or Chinese or whatever, right? Like they're Americans because they were born here. They speak the language. If you heard them on a microphone or a headphone, you wouldn't know that they were from any other fucking part of the world besides probably the West Coast, like San Francisco or LA. Um, I, I have never in my life and I'm willing to bet that I probably have more friends that are non-white than you. I have never in my life heard a non-white person that is the children of people that were in the United States say, those aren't my people. And now you hang out in very far white, uh, well, white and right circles. So it might be the case that you, you are like talking to a lot of like literal ethnic identitarians, but whatever you are describing is so fucking far off the norm. I can't hardly even engage with that hypothetical. As somebody yeah, that's no, dated actually, Hispanic, as somebody whose family is... Hold on, you went, you gave your whole pretty speech about apple pies, okay? So as somebody that has dated Hispanic people and J Asian people, as somebody that has a half-Cuban family on my mom's side, like I, like I have interacted with... I have never in my life heard somebody say those aren't my people um that is well, that is just so i'm gonna so i'm gonna circle back yeah so i'm gonna circle back so. do, you, do you remember the question that i asked you even before you just rattled off that anecdote that you had ready for this 
You've been asking a lot of good questions tonight, man. Yeah, and I can't get an answer on any of them. So uh -huh. my question was, is that if you had somebody over here in the United States in general, and they're like grandparents and parents lived here, and then they were born here, and they like know the language, they know the culture, so that means they listen to the music, the TV shows, they know our religions, our schools, and all of that. Do you think they're more likely to identify with this American culture or with wherever their grandparents came from? I think that for people like that that have been taken out of their own historical culture and raised up into this new one, it, it can be confusing. You see people choosing, you know, between two identities a lot. And uh, and that's, you know, I, that might not be good for children, by the way. But yeah, when it's, you say it's, raised in new they, culture, they, it's it's the culture. I know you're that in. there what are some mean? people who I who identify as American. They they love the American dream and they love this country. You know, we could pull up videos of people talking about mm -hmm. that, and and I understand that. But the problem is that that's not largely what's happening anymore. Now we're we're and and I think it has something to do with the the change in the demographics of where immigration is coming from. Yep. And now it's now coming we're back from into another memorized talking point about places. where people are immigrating from it has nothing to do with the question at all. Uh, yeah, it does actually mm -hmm. because it's it's about these people are coming from pre uh, or previously colonized places and they they have a different story, man. It's it's I don't know what to tell you. They're they're historical ethnic stories. What's I don't understand when you keep saying Western story. European what is what story yeah. do you think you have? Well, well, my story is that my ancestors arrived in America before the, the Mayflower did. Okay, before the Pilgrims, they were uh, driven out by. Uh, uh, of Europe, well, not driven out. My ancestor's brother-in-law mm -hmm. uh, accused his wife of being a witch. Okay, and it, she wasn't a witch. She she drowned. But you know, he left, left for America, and he he made it to James Jamestown before the Pilgrims. Yeah. So can my you tell me? have been here yeah. ever since. Can you? On the other yeah. side, my ancestors yeah. are descended from uh -huh. the Pilgrims themselves. Okay. They've been here since the foundation of this yeah. country, and so, before that, yeah. they were in England for mm -hmm. thousands of years. That's the story of my people, of my ancestors, and I don't share that in common with my Hispanic friend, and I never will. Can you tell me what aspects of their culture you live out today? that are unique or independent from other white people that might not have the same shared. So I'm half Cuban, um, and I think my ancestors more recently came from like either France or Italy. So can you tell me some aspects of your culture that are independent from mine as two white people just because you have those particular ancestors? Well, it's funny. First of all, I just want to say it's funny that now we're just two white people when it seems like every time I talk to this guy, he brings up that he's like uh, Hispanic or whatever. But, I said I have descent. I said I'm half descended from from Cubans. I don't know if you consider Hispanic or not. I consider myself white. Okay, so unless I'm applying for student aid, Cuban immigrant. But mm -hmm. um, so, what aspects you know, of your ancestors' culture do you inherit today? You still live out today that are unique from normal American culture? Yeah, I, I you know, I, I think that's a good question, and really, it speaks to the fact that, as I said before. Our culture in America is currently in a, a sort of a funk. We're in a lost place where we have many different cultures. Okay, so, okay yeah, gotcha. So you don't have, have an answer a, for that. So let's go all the way well, back then that, to the very first question. I don't question. have an answer You, you don't have that. the answer you're for asking, that, yeah. You're so, asking about a specific <clears throat> Anglo culture descendant thing, mm -hmm. which is like, uh, you know, a, a lot of the European cultures, they had many, many things in common. And they, they might used have, to, yeah. you know, slightly different uh you know, traditions, mm -hmm. cultures, holidays, different heroes from their places, things like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't identify as, as Anglo, right? I don't identify as someone from England. True. I have no, no nationalistic patriotic duty to England itself. Yep. Um, so, however, yeah, so, the, so the correct answer is, so we don't identify with cultures of the past. There might be some traditions that we inherit, but largely our like current culture is generally shaped by the culture that we're grown into. So a third yeah, generation no, immigrant say, born in the United States is not going to... the culture yeah. from the past. I sure. wouldn't say that even a little bit. Sure. So, because we, yeah, sure, I understand. Obviously yeah. descended from mm, okay. Rome. And, Rome. And again, uh, it's like from we, Rome. Yeah. We, may, we may have... You, well, have, you, could um, say, you could say, okay, what aspects of Anglo culture are you living out in your daily life? But we have all of these traditions, man, like Thanksgiving. There's there's something that the Anglos did, right? And But it, but all Americans are now taking part in this. We have many, many such cases of these types Thanksgiving, of things where these cultures Thanksgiving, are mixing Wait, wait, together. wait. Thanksgiving, did that come from Rome? Is that what you're saying? 
Not, not at all. The, what I've said is that these these cultures have developed as descendants from Rome and Greece, and they've they've taken on their own holidays, their own heroes, a different story. Okay, now we're back into the memorized and, speech. Go ahead. Yeah, well, the heroes, so the apple pie, the shared here's history. What I'm getting at, yeah. what, what I'm getting at, is that yeah, America is lost in a way in terms of culture right now, and I think that mm -hmm. we we need to forge a new culture that's based on good principles and values, just as the Romans did. There wasn't a culture before them that they returned to. And somebody might have said, you know, like, well, what specific things, you know, what's a, a precise, uh, you know, thing about music that you want in, in order to... I haven't pushed you on, to, like, to, to super good. ultra precise anything. I'm just, you, you literally, all of this stuff... You were stuff, quizzing me on <laughs> music notes and blues scales so the, the reason other day when I, I asked Mexican you that prior, I asked, you that, I asked you that prior because you told me you were a professional musician. I didn't know that you would have the audacity to completely and totally fabricate your history in front of somebody that's no, actually that's been a not, Now, music, first huh? of all, the definition of professional means finish. you got paid to do it, which I did. Okay, so I was a professional. That's great music. that your mom paid okay. you and your friends to play for like her fucking yeah, friends no, at like a wedding once, okay? I was at like public venues and stuff like that. I played jazz, I played the violin. We don't want to do this. Listen, I you've already taken the chat, biggest right. L a man can ever take on this topic. We don't need to revisit it, okay? Yeah, we don't so, need to rehash the music yeah. thing, but I'll so just the tell you, the, man. Pro the problem I'm running into is that, like, you, you seem, and, and I guess this is, at the end of the day, this is kind of my problem, is that, like, you have all these strong feelings about stuff that is just so amorphous and intangential like you don't know what your old culture well, was you don't know what your like current culture okay hold on you're rambling you've done your prepared speech exist. like 15 times rubio okay slow down all right so <laughs> you have like your your you've got like all of these kind of ideas but you can't like quantify or qualify like a single thing you said and i'm not asking you to like give me the exact oh, no, I have. give me I the exact many, definition many, of blah 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 i'm just asking for like many what, ways i'm just not giving you an the answer that you're looking for i you know it's we obviously have traditions, holidays, heroes, legends, all that are descendant from the civilizations that we came from. And so when you say that obviously we don't inherit culture from the past, it's out, it's, it's absurd on its face. It's ridiculous. You can't tell anyone from any other culture that at all. In America, yeah, we yeah, are currently The problem is that, like, I'm just trying to ask you. Cultures put I'm just together, trying to. I think to, that we should take the best values yeah, that we can so, and forge a new culture can that's I, based yeah, on, yeah, on. We're back in the memorized speech. Becoming Jesus great Christ. and excellent. It, you know, things like that. Yeah, it's, yeah we, we should be embracing this stuff. Okay, so just one more time. Sorry if this is really offensive. Can you give me, like, Go one for. example of, like, a ritual or a tradition or something that you mean when you talk about, like, your family's, like, past or something? Like, like my family specifically, no. But from American history, obviously. No, you yes. didn't say you had I American have... history. You talked about your family specifically, fucking coming from Rome and living in England for thousands of years. So I want to know. Yeah, and what do you think happened after that, man? My my ancestors participated in every single major American American event all throughout our history. My dad still has a cavalry saber mm -hmm. from the the Confederate side in the Civil War. All right. So we, I, yeah, I have all. I do have a lot of a uh, story with America here. It's not just Rome and England, okay? And a lot of these people, there are people whose ancestors didn't fight in the Civil War, who just arrived here, who don't respect the ancient civilizations that we derive from, much less the one which they've come into here. And they yeah. disrespect it mm -hmm. so much that they say that they want to tear down the yeah, institution. Back to the memorized speech, tear down the yeah, statues, well, that's back what's to the memorized man. talking points. Yeah, okay. So... You so just I just think it's very funny that and this it's very rare that I can like demonstrate an argument in real time. So because you are a whatever generation immigrant, you have no idea where you came from. I could show you a twenty three and me that actually is completely contrary to your entire history, and you would actually have no idea because it sounds to me like you haven't inherited anything. So when I talk about like a cultural tra tradition, right? So half of my family is Cuban. So my sister had a quinceanera. Okay, this is like a Spanish celebration when a girl turns fifteen years old. Or something that I went through religiously was my uh, my seven uh, not. Seven Seven. There are like four or five holy sacraments in the Catholic Church. So things like your first communion or things like your confirmation or things, you know, your early baptism. So these are examples of traditions that I was looking for. And I don't even like this shit. And I can give you a few of my own, but it sounds like you have nothing. So we're going to move way past this. And then I'm going to go all the way back to one of the first questions I asked you. I don't know how you can possibly answer this question, though. 
what type of quote unquote white culture do you feel like is lacking in representation when it comes to like the legislature? So in Congress, like what are some aspects of white culture where you're like, fuck, we don't have this represented? Because all the other stuff you named before, like the scientific method, I think all of our academic institutions work off of that. You mentioned like the work ethic. I'm pretty sure Americans are the most overworked people in the world. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like what aspects of American culture aren't represented like in, in your eyes in, in the forefront of like American politics or culture. Yeah, well, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that, like, that's something I said, when it's something that you said, actually, you're the one who said that white people have no representation in government for people who want to preserve their culture. White people have no representation in the media or, or in, in widespread popular belief. They have no representation for their historical cultures on, on social media, anything like that. That was the point that you brought up. And so it's, it's I just agreed with you there. Okay. And, and what I'm saying is that these not just the culture, the institutions, the civilization, its history, they're all under attack and they're under a, a cultural attack from people who think it's all bad and they think it's all wrong. It was wrong from its inception and it's it's evil still today and it all needs to be torn down along with the people who built it. And and that's what I hear what I have such a problem with and that's why I keep going off like this. Yeah. You know, is a So for the so, fifth time I'm going to ask that question again. Um I don't know why you keep <laughs> trying to like reverse uno this on me. So I'm okay. I wrote this down because I write because you ramble a lot. Um although at this point you've repeated yourself five or six times so I remember a lot of it. So you kept, you said oh, right. America is a lost nation when it comes to culture. Question. Right? So you said America is a lost nation when it comes to culture. Now, I inferred from that, and I could be wrong, correct me wrong. I inferred from that that you feel like there is some important aspect of our culture that is either gone or in the process of being removed. So I asked you, what is some aspect of white American culture that you feel like doesn't have good representation anymore? Um, you feel yeah, really sure. strongly about, about this, so I'm just curious. The, yeah. yeah, so, uh, well, that was a good memorized statement but uh you know let's go with the family structure the nuclear family is currently under attack at all sorts of levels it's it's you know you see another media media article about it every single day we don't see government programs that are are trying to benefit people who want to start families in fact we see the opposite and largely from the especially the calls of people on your side are trying to say things like the nuclear family is bad i saw an article the other day i think it was the new york times it said uh, corona has ha, is destroying the nuclear family, and maybe that's a good thing. Okay, we see the LGBT crowd who are railing against the the nuclear family and its history, and they're saying that that's all bad. It's all oppression. It's it's patriarchal. You know things like that. And so that's that's a great example of one that I would say is uh, it's it's better for the people. It's better for the children. Better for the man and wife, and it's better for the civilization at large as each individual. Uh, you know, uh, chooses this. So <clears throat> when you say that, like, the nuclear family is under attack, so I'm just going by stuff that I see. So right now, if you get married in the United States, you're incentivized through tax structures to have, like, a wife or husband because of the married filing jointly status. And you also get paid a decent amount of money right now via the um, uh, both the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit for, like, having a child. Like, in what ways do you, do you feel like we are actively discouraging people from, like, having, like, two parents in the house today? Or, in, like, in what ways is that happening? Yeah, well, I'd say a big part of the nuclear family structure was that a man would provide for the family and the mom would raise the children. Whereas we see now this the state and, and all of the media and everybody on your side pushing for that to be abolished, that to be dissolved and, and not, unattainable for men and women uh, in the, the new vision of yeah. this idea where the state takes care of your kids it raises them in daycares and schools and teaches them the state propaganda you know whatever uh, their version of, of history and current events is at the time so, so i don't know of any like there might be state ran daycares i've never heard of that um there are state schools it's probably good that we send our kids to yeah schools. no what i'm talking about is that the state is is uh at, at the very least not combating this this push against the nuclear family in ways that it, it obviously could you know you could have more like uh, incentives 
to have children. You could uh, you're discouraging women from being in the in the workforce. Propaganda yeah, about so women <laughs> staying home with their children and how that's a good thing rather than a bad thing. Most women are raised in the world today, and and a lot of this does take place in schools, which is teachers paid by the government. Maybe the president isn't ordering it, but this is happening in these places. Women are raised to believe that being a mom is like demeaning. It's like you're not a successful independent career woman or something like that and it's demeaning motherhood and it's making it uh, it lose its value to women in, in their eyes and they see themselves as, as unsuccessful if they were to settle for that mm -hmm. rather than a career and travel so do you think that women should be discouraged from going to college discouraged i i don't know if i would go that far but it, you know i i think that that would bring about a better result for in terms of the nuclear family sure so let me ask again in a different way right without now. you trying to because you're weaseling a lot okay so do you think it would be better for oh, society if women were discouraged from going to college a better for society in in some ways definitely in Stop. terms why of do you keep wait family. wait why do you keep weaseling i'm just asking you like a clear what, what do you what do you mean weaseling? well when there's, you say in some ways so in what ways would it be better and what ways would it be worse every yeah. single point so talk now, me look, through talk me through this, talk me through the positives and negatives like and at the end of it sort of a, no we're not getting into the weeds i get so upset why do you keep saying we're getting the weeds anytime i ask you to defend a single point if you want to just ramble off your prepared speeches you can do that you can do that when i'm not here or you can go do that on your own stream your own youtube channel don't get upset that's under Don't attack. I talked upset. about the nuclear family. Now we're going that's, you on, asked oh, the about prepared the speech. You asked about the, the prepared state speech. And, you know, it's the state. Yeah, remove, yeah a prepared speech about what you uh -huh. talked about. Everything's a prepared speech tonight. It's I a got prepared it, speech because you're running okay. around the question because you're uncomfortable answering. I feel like I can play both sides of this argument better than you can. That's that's where we're at right now. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, how far okay, behind well, you are in this conversation. So I'm just I asking you. I think that you. speaks to a misunderstanding of what I'm saying, man. Because they, I've talked about the nuclear family. I've talked about state incentives in order to make that uh, a more desirable at the very least i've talked about how the you know the government is the one running these schools they could be incentivizing or making teachers talk about the virtues of motherhood and talk about ways in which they you know people can still build a nuclear yeah. family okay, even so with yeah, we're talking around contract. a bunch of random shit so my question was do you think holistically now if you want you can talk about the pros and cons i just want an answer at the end do you think holistically it would be better if we discouraged women from going to college uh, well, given the state of the, the universities today, I'd say so. Just by virtue of the one statistic alone that 90% of divorces involving college-educated women are initiated by the woman. Okay, that's like 20 or 30 percent higher than when they don't go through this this uh, these universities. And you know, I, I'm not sure why that is exactly, but it's you know that's why. I, it's like maybe that's not the best way to combat that, but it it would combat it in some ways. It would benefit the nuclear sure. family. Yep. Okay, and, cool. And I got you. I'm good. Okay. Yeah, America. we got this. Okay. So, 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 so you can ask me these gotcha questions all night about like you hate women or something like that. They're not. But I want okay. to get to the heart can of I, Yeah, yeah. Okay. So here. Can I, I wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm not trying to ask you gotcha questions. Can I tell you how you should have answered this question? And then maybe you can do better on these debates in the future if we ever talk again. Okay. So the answer that Go you should ahead, have given. Man. Yeah. Let me. It's okay. That's fine. Okay. I've debated enough of your type to know how you should answer this if you were educated on the topic. Uh -huh. Okay. So the answer should be yes we probably should discourage women from going to college because when women enter college a lot of bad things happen to the historically understood dichotomy of man versus woman men are now competing against women for earning wages which they shouldn't be because it's an attack on their masculinity and it's an attack on the family structure and it discourages women from starting families until far later in their life to where they might be completely discouraged from doing so and it upsets the natural balance of the household where a man should be in charge of being the alpha the breadwinner the decision maker and the woman the caretaker or somebody that ought to be watching the children and taking care of the household. That was the correct answer that you were supposed Seems to get. Seems like you really understand the issues, man. But yeah. the fact is, but, I but said more than no, more no, no. than you half haven't, of you those haven't, things. You don't, you, no, you haven't. You're, I said you're more talking than half of those you're, things. You're like, I said almost no. definitely yes, first of no. all. And I brought oh up how bad God. it is. You didn't say almost definitely yes. You said it depends. There's the pros and cons and blah blah blah. Yeah, I've talked about how bad uh, it is for, for Jesus. All, in many ways, and so it's like. Yeah, I, I've talked about the divorce rates. I talked about a lot of reasons. Just because I didn't give the exact reasons that you wanted, I think that they're yeah. largely tangential and okay, they're, they're so, all connected. Yeah, okay. So then, so now that we've, I got bare, I've given you the argument for this. So now we move on to the, to the second aspect of this. And this is what I said initially, is that even if you are able to identify some sort of claim, now I ask you, what are you going to do about it? In what world can you exist in where women have had the ability to go to college and work jobs and now you're gonna take that from them? Can you walk me through what type of policy proposal or something that you would start doing that would get women out of college? 
Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not advocating for any specific policy right now at all. I think that if people were made aware of the way that things are, in contrast to the way that things used to be when civilization was thriving rather than decaying, I think people would try and act differently, and that would play out in all sorts of different ways throughout society. Okay, I think so that we could see major yeah. cultural shifts from people understanding these. Okay, and that now case, again, yeah, yeah, so I don't want to get caught up in a, a music uh, discussion prepared, about men and women. Discussion. Women in universities right now seems to be yeah. the new one. What I want to talk about mm -hmm. is the the future of a white minority in America when when all of these things are happening. So we've demonstrated now how we haven't the, demonstrated the anything. Yeah. So oh, the, actually, how the culture is under attack in some ways. Mm -hmm. Why don't you guys? Why don't you explain to people that don't know um, the little who little Timmy is? Because a lot of people are asking that, who little Timmy is. That's what I've been trying to get to. So I'm right. glad I'm, that we can you know abandon the uh, the you know the having women to defend in, any of your prior but, points. Yeah, my bad, dude. All right. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. So I, I have one more prepared speech for you tonight, Destiny, okay? Yeah. Now, this is what, what many are talking about these days. This is, this is the little Timmy question, okay? The TQ, some might say. So little Timmy is a child, hypothetical child, who's living in America in an inner city 40 years from now, okay? And little Timmy is alongside all of his classmates. He's being taught this critical race, this – uh this version of history through the lens of critical race theory where it's white people you know uh they, they colonized everybody and they were they were cruel in so many ways and their civilizations did slavery just like everybody else did and and white people came and you know they they brought slaves to slaves over and they did chattel slavery and they did jim crow and the three-fifths law and and the holocaust and white people did richard nixon and donald trump and you know, white people are, are trying to build the wall, and they're all racist. All their institutions are racist, and, and all their laws are racist. And they all benefit white people in some white supremacist way, and that's why all the institutions, all of the, the culture, everything has to be torn down along with the people who built it. Now, little Timmy is being taught some dumbed-down version of this in his class, let's say in fifth grade, along with all the other kids. And... Because it's a future of white minority, which nobody denies is going to happen now at this point. Um, Joe Biden said it himself. Little Timmy is going to be the only kid in his class, the only white kid in a class of uh, a bunch of, of uh, Hispanics, blacks, non-whites, Asians, Indians. And they're all looking around and they're all looking at him saying this was your people that did this to us. And he feels alienated. And he's not a it's they don't have this shared culture where they're brought up in the exact same conditions, liking the same things like destiny would like you to believe they have this. They have different stories in their heads. Their story is look what little little Timmy's ancestors did to our ancestors. And you know what? He has to answer for that. And I believe that if that's the case, this is not going to play out too well for little Timmy in his classroom. And so I'm curious, the last time that I talked to Destiny, he said on stream, you know, we could clip it if you want. He said, I guess I have no real way to combat this argument. I have no way to argue against this hypothetical. And uh, so, you know, maybe he'll argue that it's not going to happen. Uh, but, but, you know, other than that, Destiny seems to refuse to provide any solutions for this very real issue, which is almost definitely going to yeah, happen. So do you listen to that question. Destiny has no solutions for this real issue that maybe will happen. <laughs> I can't solve a problem that doesn't exist yet. Also, why does it matter that Lil Timmy is white? I thought that you said that ethnicity didn't have to do with skin color. Yeah, and uh, by white, I'm talking, I'm generally using the... Uh, the people who are under attack from critical race theory as the people who built all of this racist stuff. So we can just go with that for now. Um, white is just a, a one word way to describe these people who are all co collectively, even though they're from distinct ethnicities among each other, all under collective attack, given okay. the same name. Gotcha. Um, why do you think there's a higher chance that there will be like a few white people and very strict Hispanic or strict Indian or strict Asian? Wouldn't it be more likely that because interracial marriage just or interracial marriages keep going up and up and up? Isn't there a high, higher likelihood that we're all just kind of like more mixed race in the future rather than all of us like breeding down these hardcore racially segregated lines? You know, you could say that that maybe that may be the case in like a thousand or two thousand years from now. But the fact is, even though you could say that. 
you know, uh, interracial marriages are going up. It's still like 90% of marriages or relationships in America are intraracial. They're within the same race. And so it's like less so than 8.4% of all are, current are marriages. Interracial. Yeah, so 8.4% of current marriages um, are not interracial. 15.1% of new marriages are interracial. So that number seems like it's increasing like pretty quickly, right? If it doubles again, we're at 30, 40%. Like what percentage if do you need to be If it doubles again, so it's, a, you know, we can talk about your hypotheticals and, and go down that path. But when we're talking about, according to all the trends, what's almost definitely going to happen within a couple of decades, uh, yeah, I, I do see is that that is being the case, especially because it seems like all non-white groups seem to identify with their... Uh, their origin ethnicity uh, i just want to yeah i just want to echo this they, they, again they and i understand they say yeah, and I'm I understand. A, they don't say i'm an american sure. they, they say i'm a hispanic american yeah so Asian i just want to echo African this american. i just want to echo this and you know maybe we just come from different backgrounds i have i do not have any asian american friends and i live in la and i'm friends with like the fucking asian streamer house that say oh i am asian american yes that those people don't exist they're like bro like I'm not from Korea. I'm from fucking LA or people that live in San Francisco. Asian Americans, like even first, even second generation immigrants, like don't say this shit, right? Like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm Japanese. I'm Korean. No, they say like, I'm American. Um, yeah, they don't say I'm Japanese. I'm Korean. They say I'm an Asian American. They do identify as such, uh, especially when they're under collective attack. You know, this whole stop Asian hate thing that was going all summer or whatever. It's like that is uh, who do you think that's referring to? It's a specific group of people. It's not all mm -hmm. Americans. Right. It's Asian Americans. So, so do you think that like do you have do you have any real argument or do we really just have to argue over like Lil Timmy in 2040? Like. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can joke around that it's not a real argument all you want. But in 20 years from now, according to all the trends, this is where it's headed. What I'll trends? Wait, facts. what trend? What do you yeah, mean by trends? Facts, OK, the fact one is that even Joe Biden says that whites are going to become a, what my majority minority in America by 2040. OK, fact two is that this critical race theory stuff is getting out of control. I don't care about Vosh's highfalutin academic version of it that somebody's talking about in a university somewhere. I care about what's happening in all the media, in all the institutions. It's happening in the military, in Lockheed Martin, and it is happening in schools, even in grade schools. They're teaching this stuff, some some uh, lighter version of it, and it's, it's not getting across to people like, oh, this is just an academic way to view history and blah, blah, blah. They're seeing it as like, they're saying so all white people we've are had, racist. Yeah. All white people so are I know racist. that I They're know that yeah. So we suffer racist. from recentism biases where we think that like the world is always falling apart because it's the only world we know. Like people have argued over what we ought to teach in schools for a long fucking time. You've got Fahrenheit 451. You've got book burnings. You've got conservatives and liberals alike trying to ban books from certain schools. Like we've had debates over curriculum and how we ought to educate ourselves on the history of this country for a long time. I don't think that one. I don't think that people are talking about doing this like critical race analysis in fucking kindergarten classes um yes, can, I, 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 can you explain to people what critical race theory is um uh, well there's like there's there's two versions of critical race theory so my understanding of critical race theory is that it kind of like uh split off i think from like critical legal theory where it basically it's just um Anytime you look at a particular problem, you are able to uh, like pick up like a certain framework through which to view it. So critical race theory will look at like American problems through um, through a more racial lens to see if there's like some insight that can be gleaned there. Like broadly speaking, and then you can go more in depth on like um, you know like how do they approach studies? You know what are their epistemic values? Which is separate stuff. But then there's like the conservative version of critical race theory is when black people all learn to like hate white people and how white people are evil basically. Um, but but. None of the conversations about critical race theory are usually about critical race theory. It's usually some like insanely drummed up conservative straw man of it where it's just teaching like how evil white people are constantly, basically. Sure. OK, so he gave his uh, preferred definition of critical race theory, what he'd like it to be. And, you know, talked about a right wing boogeyman. I'd like to give you the actual definition of critical race theory. Here it is, according to Britannica. It says critical race theory, intellectual movement and loosely organized framework of legal analysis is based on the premise that race is not a natural, biologically grounded feature of physically distinct sub subgroups of human beings, but race is a socially constructed, culturally invented category that is used to oppress and exploit people of color. That's what race is, they say. Critical race theorists hold that the law and legal institutions in the United States are inherently racist insofar as they function to create and maintain a social, social, 
social, economic, and political inequalities between whites and non-whites, especially African Americans. So that is what the that that is the Britannica definition of critical race theory. Unless you're going to say that Britannica is some right-wing, far-right boogeyman, white supremacy platform, that's the one I'd like to go with. Not, yeah, so not whatever Bosch says it yeah, is, yeah, yeah. So or whatever you like it to be. Yeah, or, and yeah, no, yeah, no conservative okay. drummed up boogeyman. Yep. So okay? two two questions. So one, how did your definition contradict with mine at all? And then two, what part of that definition do you like think is bad or damaging? Yeah. So. You know, as far as how it contradicted yours, well, you talked about how it's just like nice to view some things through the race of lens and conservatives just want to drum it up and make it all like sound way worse than it is. That's why I wanted to give the exact precise definition of what it is. And uh, as for the second question, what, why is that important? So is when I said, said, to be clear, when I said it's nice, I'm just saying that like, it's nice to have like different tools by which we can analyze history. I don't mean nice as in like good. Maybe I should have been more specific there. I think everybody knew what I meant. But the definition that the Britannica gave sounds more or less in line with what I said, just a little bit more precise. Okay. But well, we can talk good, about that definition. Agree, I, yeah, we can agree on that definition. That's fine. So what parts of this definition do you take so much issue with? Yeah, well, it's not, not a an issue I take with the definition itself. It's an issue I take with how this is playing out today no. in the real world. And so how you this need is to tell me when, with when that definition, these you're telling me yeah, you I'm agree with all parts? Yeah, I'm talking on a parts? pragmatist level, man. No, I'm talking no, about no, how no, things no. are playing out in the real world. You're on that, so there are no parts of that definition that you disagree with? You agree that race is a socially constructed category? You agree that there are like systems of oppression that serve to divide white people and black people in the United States? You don't agree with... Oh, no, no, no. I'm not saying... I'm saying I, I don't... I don't uh, disagree, don't disagree that that is the definition of critical race theory. We can agree on what oh, the sure. definition of it is, and then we can debate, you know, the uh, whether it's good or bad or what the issues well, are. Yeah, so like, yeah, so like what and aspects so, of again, that? Again, I'd like yeah. to say that it's it's really it, – it's the way that it's playing out pragmatically in our society, in America today, right now, not just some definitional like of what I disagree with some some idea here mm -hmm. or like a little part of this definition – I, it's it's we're seeing anti-white hatred all over the place all over america yep. okay so There'd let's be... yeah so let's so let's try to do this one thing at a time i know you probably got a whole memorized sure. speech of all the things you hate about safety so like give me like one oh, example of, i like, have a i must have a really good memory huh? well it's just because you probably t rant about the same things every single day right so what is like one or two <laughs> things that happens as a result of crt that is one because of crt and two should be eradicated yeah, what's one of these things that's happening because of CRT? Okay, mm -hmm. well, yeah, well, there's, let's say, a lot, there's a lot of people talking about this Nike commercial, mostly leftists saying they disavow it or whatever. You know, there's... Uh, so you think the Nike the, the commercial happened idea, because of that, CRT? I think that a lot of the things which the BLM mu movement is based on... Whoa, 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 why are you jumping? Well, okay, you're doing this... No, I'm not jumping. Thing again. Okay, so Give let's focus on one... Wait, no, 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 wait. I don't want you to get five seconds to name as many things, things as you can. Off of this I just want to ask history. you... I'm just asking you very simply for just one example that we can talk about. Don't name one, realize it's stupid, and then try to jump immediately to another thing mid-sense. So give me one thing that you're talking about. So you brought up a Nike commercial. That Now I'm realizing... You probably realize that sounds stupid, so you want to move on from that. I haven't BLM? seen the Nike commercial. That's why I said other people bring it up. Okay, but what I, I'd that, like okay, to say so for you, okay, then. so you want yeah. we want to go by the definition. Okay, critical race theorists hold that the law and legal institutions in the United States are inherently racist. Yeah, I have a problem with that because what's the answer to that? With the, what obviously what these other groups that it's they they believe they're being taught it's racist against them. What do they want to do? They want to overhaul it, tear it down. They want to completely change it so that the opposite is taking place. And so it's like, yeah, I, uh, I have a huge problem with that, given that that's not going to turn out well for me or little Timmy. Okay. Um, I, I don't know how, I don't even know what, where we went with this. Um, I'm not talking about little Timmy. I can tell, man. So I'm, I, I can I'm, tell you're confused, just like you were the first time I brought it up. Yeah, and I I'm, know no, that. No, 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 no. Hold on. It's before, not about me no being confused. This argument. That's why you want to deny that it exists. Talk about definitions mm -hmm. all night. You know, you want to. Let wanna, me give you. Get, let me. So down. let me. Let me try talk to talk about yeah, little yeah, examples. Yeah, okay. So this yeah. is irresponsible of me because I'm. I'm unintentionally, I think I'm helping you because maybe you'll take some of this to heart. So let's say that somebody's asking me, okay, Destiny, you say you have so much problems with this particular framework or theory. Can you tell me why, okay? So I might say, I have a problem with the extreme populism 
that exists right now on the right, especially under people like Donald Trump. The reason why I don't like this extreme version of populism is because I think it leads him down roads where he's giving talking points that make it sound like you need to trust him over everything else, including institutions. The reason why I don't like it when people doubt institutions is because they start to believe in crazy things like QAnon. And the reason why I don't like it when people believe in crazy things like QAnon is because they start to doubt descriptive reality like who won the election and it leads them to do things like rioting on January 6th in the Capitol. So that's a very clear dialogue tree from like, I don't like this, it plays out like this because of this and this. So that's the kind of answer that I'm looking for from you, okay? Not like, yeah, well, I don't like CRT because sure. some people say that there are Nike commercials and I haven't, heard, I haven't even seen that commercial, but BLM does some bad things and then, and not that, <laughs> but like in the impression. minorities of the whites in the future are gonna be this thing where little Timmy is in a classroom and he's getting bullied by all of these children and that's not the kind of future that I wanna be raised and I wanna be more like my uncle whose cousin was drowned for being a witch. That's the kind of answer I'm you're giving me, it. right? You're just, you're, you're tying together a whole bunch of like random things. You sound like you're out of breath, like on fucking crack in a car about to crash in the parking lot, okay? So, all right, so, so, record, so, so very clearly, so very clearly, let's just take a deep breath. Okay, so all I'm asking, I'm, this isn't a, I'm not trying to do a gotcha. I genuinely, <laughs> by this point in the debate, I have literally no idea what the fuck you think about anything because you haven't given me any yeah, real I, answer on I anything. I can tell that so this is all So all I'm asking, head, very, very simply, simple. yeah, all I'm asking okay. very simply is like, what is like an aspect of CRT? Because I, at first I wanted to talk about the definition and then you pulled me off. You said, no, man, I want to talk about the pragmatic. Okay, so what is an aspect of CRT that leads to something pragmatically bad? What is that pragmatically bad thing? That's not, I guess, the Nike commercial. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, and uh, that's why I brought up Little Timmy in the first place. So I Little Timmy that that doesn't exist. A good example. Yeah, little Timmy something. doesn't exist. You understand little that, Timmy right? Little Timmy does exist. There's already white kids who are growing up in minority classrooms where mm -hmm. they're being taught this stuff, and you see videos on social media all the time of uh, you know black kids like beating up on the white kid. They call them racist. There's people. You have black people attacking white people in stores and lying and saying they said the N word, and they get a pass because you know it would be a hate crime if you said the N word or something like that so it's like yeah i i see this happening all the time all throughout society and little timmy is real already in this world now i think it's funny that you can't talk on on level of a hypothetical future which is the most likely to happen because you're like well we can't address problems if we're not already currently facing them today right now and i think that that speaks to the, either that you're trying to deny the, this future, which is the most likely future we're going to face, or you you just, I, I don't know, you, you don't get it. You don't understand that this is the position that we're in. Maybe you can't offer people a good solution for this future that we're headed towards. And uh, so you're just going so to So you're saying, so there are no current, yeah, so there are no current, there. yeah. So to be clear, so I just want to circle back. So at the very beginning of this debate, I made two big assertions. One is that you can't identify what problems we're even facing. I think I've demonstrated that because you won't even admit to me or, or talk to me about a specific problem that CRT brings about. And you won't even give me conversations about like, well, what part of culture is missing from our like American legislature? So that was the first part I made. And you the second that claim that right. I made was you can't give me any prescriptions. You can't tell me what we ought to do for any of these problems. Because right now, the only problem you want to solve involves oh, yeah, a hypothetical can, boy named Timmy in the future that like doesn't even exist yet. So I think yeah, that those okay. are the first so two. Well, hold on, let me finish. Hold on, because you're rambling your fucking prepared yeah, sure. Rubio speech over and over again, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, I'll yeah. So in the very beginning, these are the two things that I had set out to kind of like show. I think I've adequately demonstrated that. Like, I don't know why it's so hard for you. Like, I can, I, I don't want to give you any more answers. I'm sorry, I've already given you like a couple of pretty good ones. Um, it should be pretty easy for you to find. I'll give you one more actually. There was a math book that was released that was kind of under some guidance of like some very race related shit that was incredibly fucking cringe, saying that like black people need to learn math by running around outside and it's different than white people. So that was like a good example. And if you read that math book cover to cover, you'd have like a million examples to attack me with. I read it, I said it was cringe and stupid. That doesn't mean I have to hate everything related to CRT everything related to right i can point that out but the fact that you're not familiar with like a single example aside from a nike commercial that you yourself admit that you haven't watched is like kind of cringe bro like i don't know why you're so mad about all these yeah, topics no, if you don't fucking just, know that, anything that about them the first thing that came to mind and that's largely because you, well generally uh, in arguments the first thing that comes to mind yeah, the first thing that comes to so, your mind in an argument is generally the strongest point of argument that uh, you have that's just, usually what no, yeah. it's because somebody just said it like just the other day the, believe me all of your yeah. clones okay well then give me an example then what's something that crt what what's something we've gotten from crt that's really bad then Give me another example. Okay, well, here's something. In, uh, here's the Wall Street Journal opinion article. In California, 2 plus 2 maybe thought, 2 plus 2 equals 4 may be thought to be racist. Math is racist now. 
and uh, so it's like, yeah, they, this is it's affecting society at all of these levels. It's it's not just that's you could get, dive into that one little example, and we can talk about math all night, but it speaks to a larger cultural effect, and and it's like this is it's infiltrating this lens of viewing history, this uh, this corrosive idea is infiltrating the schools at all every level it's it's in so it's not just in sociology so it's you, making its way yeah, into the so, sciences in yeah English class, so in i'm like i'm class. trying to ask so do you think that like crt is headed for a future where we're not going to be teaching two plus two equals four do you have an actual example and not just an op-ed from the wall street journal <laughs> No, it's, uh, right now. Well, again, we're headed towards a future. Here's a question: where, Have you even is... have you even read that article? Have I read that article? No, that's just something I I know is. It's happening something that it's, like I heard I, you Google, right? It's a two minute well, article. I have read this article. That's why I'm asking I, I if you're up familiar two plus with it. Two equals four is racist, uh, and that's the first thing that came up. But the okay. reason why I googled it is because I've heard this so many times now. Mm -hmm. um, it is it, people are saying it. There's there's a lefties who I've talked to who. Yeah. Un believe this they, they believe they that believe that two plus two doesn't equal four yeah what they say is that if two plus two equals five is better for everybody and leads to better outcomes then we should just all agree on that that goes along in hand in hand with the social constructivist paradigm what? i i, I don't, i'm sorry but about. i don't know which leftists you're talking about i will challenge you right now to give me one of them to debate i know that you won't because they don't exist you have not no, talked okay. to a person so that I said don't know their you names, have never no 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 you, you have never talked to a person in your life you just said you talked to these people now you're saying you don't know oh, their no. names oh yeah i could i could get some names for yeah, you right i, I want to debate so Brittany. so the next debate i want to debate two plus two equals five is good with one of these leftist residues i am so curious to hear this i don't think these people exist um yeah there's a what? thing on tiktok actually where or i think it was on twitter where somebody did give me any word and i will find something on tiktok that says it's racist and so people were doing that and they were finding just anything like apple and they found a tiktok clip that was <laughs> accusing it of being racist yeah that but so yeah but we're talking i don't care about tiktok no offense but teens are cringe i don't know why i'm saying no offense <laughs> to you guys but teenagers are fucking cringe teenagers think, think everything is racist or sexist or stupid or whatever but like okay so there's one there's one guy specifically i just i asked a friend who was arguing about it it's a uh -huh. libertarian friend of mine he says that uh one of the guys specifically in the uh, the politically provoked discord, uh, especially, he's argued. I've seen him arguing with this guy for like weeks about it. About two plus two equals four or five. Guy's name is Emo Adept. You can uh, go ahead and look into it all you want. Set up a debate with him, whatever. But he he seriously does argue this position, and I think that there's gonna, there's going to be more like him. So on, okay. and, and and it's not just him either. So gotcha. that's, okay, that's well, just you, the I mean, we've got. A, if there's a guy in so this you're card, like for yeah. clear examples. You're asking for you. You ask for an example on you know, uh, uh huh, like the nuclear family. That's a that's a cultural example. You ask for an example of critical race theory. I've given you several, and and what's more than that is that you seem to be able to. I don't know if you just can't think on the level of a uh -huh. of the future that we're headed towards, but you you seem to be just denying at, at all, denying outright. That the little Timmy question is situation is going to happen. I think there the are little already Timmy... inner cities in America yeah. where whites are a minority, not just majority minority, but mm -hmm. a minority altogether. And this critical race theory stuff, yeah, it is leading to a ton of anti-white rhetoric and hatred that is pervasive in the media, in gotcha. the schools, in the government, the military. Lockheed Martin, that is a prepared yeah, back speech, in the, okay? Yeah, I know. It's the that, same one, Lockheed, is, real important. Yeah, and, is that company owned by a Jew or something, stuff, or why do you bring that one up pretend. so much? I don't know how you can pretend uh -huh. that with all of this happening, that it's not going to get worse and more inflammatory yep. in the future, especially as the <laughs> as whites become a minority altogether in mm -hmm. America and the other ethnic groups can form voting blocks to outnumber them and make things even worse, according to their yep. new worldview, which is now being taught today. OK, so, so what's, your I understand. Issue? what's your solution for little Timmy, man? I, I still have yet to hear an answer on that. You just seem to be. I, I can't give you a solution. Well, OK. What about little Johnny, okay? Little Johnny is a kid that grows up in an ethnically white town that wants to preserve its ethnic superiority. He doesn't have access to any good schools because nobody wants to teach in a racist town. He doesn't have access to any intelligent peers because nobody that's smart wants to live there. He's not able to move or go anywhere else for any sort of opportunities. His particular town has really shitty health care. A lot of people have gonorrhea and chlamydia because it's poor and all they do is fuck all day. Um, half the town has like fucking 27 teeth in the top row because they're all like fucking incest. What are you going to do about little Johnny that's trying to live in his ethnically pure village of 
people that are all inbreeding all day and have no job opportunities, no cultural opportunities, no engagement with the outside world. What are you gonna do about the little Johnny problem? Is little Johnny a minority? Is that what you're saying? He's white. Wait, what? I feel like I didn't follow that very well. Um, what are you gonna do with the little Johnny problem, Mio? Did he DC? No, I don't know what's happening. Mio, are you still there? Are you hearing me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Wiz, so first of all, I think it's interesting that, it's, I don't know if you heard me say this, that you know, he uh, answered a question with another completely different hypothetical in order to distract everybody. Your from question the fact was that he already a hypothetical. A I can't answer a hypothetical because you've already said yeah, the no, preconditions that I don't agree will exist. It's a, it's, it it is a hypothetical because it doesn't exist which are yet. Already happening in schools today, man. Then I'm asking for that, an example of it all, happening in yeah, schools, and you haven't given me giant, any examples. You just talk about like question. apple Here, pie. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you how you give an answer to a hypothetical, <sighs> even one that we're not headed towards. That's not real. That's not already happening in America today, right now. Okay. okay. The little Johnny question. I'll tell you that there's probably all sorts of domestic, economic. Uh, oper like uh, policies which could absolutely benefit that village. It could, they could benefit his people. I bet there are all sorts of things that they could do in order to make their lives better. How? They're not going to make any money. You want the answer to be like mass immigration and globalist trade or something like that. And you know what? Maybe where are they going to get their where are they going to get their medical supplies from? It seems to have done so all throughout society. Now there's an answer you to your you, don't, you, you have no answer like at all. An answer you have no mine. answer at all. My answer is that people aren't going to bully people in the future for being white. It's cringe to even think that. My answer is that if you have problems today, looking at the color of your skin and trying to blame it on that is just as cringe if you're a like black separatist nationalist or if you're like a white identitarian. There are plenty of things that exist today that alienate us from society. I don't think that being white is one of those things. And unfortunately, I think that people have a lot of problems because of things related, especially to like technology and social media. And unfortunately, that means that they're drawn to groups to try to pin all of their problems on one particular thing. There might be some hyper rabid feminist. It might be some super ultra cringe white identitarian that can't give a single example of CRT having a modern day impact that is negative yeah, yeah, aside from there's a guy in the politically provoked discord that argues two plus two equals five. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, again, there's uh, I mean, there's it's not just one guy in the politically provoked discord. This is making it it's a guy on TikTok too. <laughs> mainstream media headlines. OK, it's, it's an yeah, op-ed an op-ed saying, saying they're opposed to like it. That. You know, this is sort of like you saying like three years ago that someone like Vosh would never come out of your community and, and like overtake you or parallel you in terms of viewership, something like that, because you just can't imagine that type of future happening. You Why know, would so I ever I can, make a prediction about future online content? I don't know where the fuck the next online content is going to go. It might be more socialist. It might be libertarian. Who the fuck knows? I would never make like strong predictions like that. Yeah, of course, and you're not going to make any strong predictions about the future of America either, and I think that shows why people shouldn't be listening to you. No, I'm more concerned with what problems do we have right now, and how can we fix those problems right now, rather okay, than yeah, so little Timmy in the future might exist in some like bad state, and we need to take dramatic action now, even though I can't think of a single dramatic or drastic action to take. Like, I, I don't know how I'm oh, supposed no, to Oh, no, 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 we that. haven't gotten to solutions yet, because you've been denying the problem. You still have yet to answer the little Timmy question, even in one little way at all. It's funny, the guy who says, you know, I've been asking you the same question all night over and over again, and you can't give me a good answer, is the guy who's like a dodging left and right, trying to squirm out of the little Timmy question as hard as he possibly can. It's, so, I can't yeah, answer it's, I about like a future an hypothetical. Once, I'm sorry, it, but like it's a situation no, 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 it's that doesn't exist yet. It's not just a future yet. hypothetical. It illustrates things that are happening in classrooms right but now. But you can't point to those things. That's why you need the future hypothetical. Yeah, you absolutely can point to those things. There's videos all over the internet of white kids getting beat up for being so-called oh racist. Oh my god, videos on the internet of people being beat up? Uh, yeah, there's and then videos oh on the god. internet, it turns out, are taken of, yeah. of things that happen in real life. So there are people oh my that god. this is happening to Is this in new? This White people getting yeah, beat up? See, Has that never see, happened this before? Is, this oh is no. This attitude for anybody who's a white person who realizes that you are under attack right now, that people are against you, mm -hmm. that you have this this scary rhetoric that's that's approaching you, mm -hmm. and that as you become a minority in this country, it's only going to get worse. And these other ethnic outgroups, which yeah. don't appreciate you, they don't like you, they mm -hmm. hate your, your culture, your institutions, and your people themselves. Wow. Destiny's answer for this is mocking. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's wild, dog. So did white people just start getting beat up was this like in like the late 2000s or like it was after CRT or BLM or? 
Oh, well, I mean, it's, you know, we can only go so back, so far back in history before we get to segregation itself, uh -huh. right? Do you want to know? Yeah, I'm going gonna, gonna to black tell you on this. In, you know what, in, you know uh, what BLM actually schools. stands for? The, the reason why I don't want to address the little Timmy thing is because BLM is actually a covert a covert organization. And they were actually planning on revealing in 2040 when little Timmy in school, BLM actually stands for beat up light skin minorities, but they have to wait until white people become the minority to start attacking them publicly and to actually reveal that's their actual name. So I'm totally on board with you there. What do we have for like yeah, Q and A? I, uh, unironically believe you just, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, I think that it's, you know, anybody here can see that again, oh, it's, well, I, okay. You will, you just gave a great prepared statement, but I'd like to ask you my question for the 17th time. Okay. So what are you going to do about little Timmy, man? What, what, what's your answer for it at all? Besides this little Timmy happening. is going to go I'm to school. Denial, I mean, There's probably going to be lots of kids that are different skin colors there. And little Timmy's not going to be a cringe white identitarian. So he's probably going to be fine. He's going to make friends across ethnic groups. Like we do today for anybody that lives in any major city and has gone to school with different races of kids. And he's probably going to grow up and be just fine yeah okay well i think that uh you know it's i i could completely disagree with the idea that white people as long as they're not racist none of this is going to happen to them okay because the fact is that almost every white person that i grew up with i can't think of a single one actually all of them weren't racist okay but this uh they've seen this happening over and over again mm -hmm. it's, you know uh, here's a here's a here's a little prepared speech for you my mom okay she grew up teaching me you know, I don't see color at all. She doesn't She doesn't know which characters are black in the TV shows because she doesn't notice because it's so unimportant to her. Over the past two years, my mom has heard so much anti-white rhetoric from the minorities that, that used to be her friends, people around her, her best friend from when she was in high school, blocked her on Facebook because she's white. And that's and white people are, are racist and they're the enemy and it's bad. And white America is the problem. And, and so it's like, or, or you supported Trump, and you know what? I think Trump's a racist, and so um, okay. you're a racist. Now we're getting a little him, bit closer right? to the truth. So it probably like wasn't it's, because she was white. Sounds to me like your mom was probably posting some crazy shit on Facebook. I'm going to say that's probably more likely what happened okay. rather than they now, blocked her for all, being white, but that's pretty funny. Um, I don't now, know why the fact that I you have like some inability to make friends in high school, why that has to be turned into like, our, like everybody else's said, problem, my dude. You're saying as long as little Timmy isn't racist, right, that it's, it's going to be okay and turn out okay for him. Well, what I'd present to you is that people are calling white people racist basically mm -hmm. all the time over anything. Tell me right now, you can't, that you've never been called racist before. Yeah, it happens a this lot on social an, media. This is almost a universal but the question experience is, what is the Yeah, but the question point. is, what is the solution, right? We change the dialogue. We have conversations about this. Right now, the pendulum probably swung too far in the other direction. I think that's the case. I see a lot of cringe shit on social media today. The only difference is, is I'm not crying and screaming to go back 80 years ago and pretending I've got some relationship with ancestors that I don't fucking know anything about. That's the difference, right? One of us yeah, is engaged well, with the real world and wants to offer real solutions that. to these real problems, and the other one has some fantastical delusion that they're going to create some white identity state in the future that's never going to fucking happen yeah okay well it's interesting to notice that the uh you know half cuban guy or whatever doesn't know anything about the, the history of western civilization or respect it but yeah the the fact is that there were great civilizations before us that it would behoove us to emulate in certain ways why they're and, gone and it's uh, yeah, the, no empire has ever lasted longer than the Roman yeah, so Empire. We, like, okay? it turns I think out that the United lasts States, forever, the United okay? States is arguably like the greatest civilization to have ever existed. Why the fuck would I look back to what Rome did or some other country did? Yeah, the United States became the greatest country that ever existed. Like before all of the uh, mass immigration and all all the cultural mixing from all across the world. So it's not exactly an argument for your worldview. But how um, is it not? The, uh, the United States is still going strong, my dude. The United States was built off of specifically, uh, like even even named as as a, a civilization which is based off of Greek and Roman philosophies and documents. You know the idea of the Senate. The, it's it's written all into the Constitution. And so yeah, the our founding fathers who wait, you, there are but, parts of of Rome like written into the Constitution. Uh, yeah, yeah, Can like, you be more specific? Yeah, like the idea of the Senate, which Rome had, things like that. They are, um, they base the, their idea for if they're like, what's our country going to be like? What is, how is it going to be set up? What system of government is going to be better than the, than King George? Wasn't and, our constitution and they largely based on like civilizations what? of the past in order to figure this out? 
what worked for different ones and what didn't work for them. And But they respected them enough. That's why we have statues of Athena in our courthouses. That's why we have Greek Roman imagery and symbolism and, and architecture based off of it in all of historical America. So, yeah, it's, it's, it is. We, we do inherit a lot of things from these civilizations, and it's good to because they were better than most civilizations in the history of the world. Do you know anything about the Roman Senate that you're deciding right now? Just curious. Any, anything about the Roman Senate? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm not like uh, the, the Roman political procedure. I'm not an expert on, but sure, I, I think I'd, I'd know enough. Can you tell me, what's, like, the structure your... of the Roman Senate or anything? I'm curious. Do you think it functions the same way as the U.S. Senate? I don't know. I don't think it functions in the same way. But it's it's obvious that the America being a republic was in part the, the founding fathers of it who wrote these documents were looking toward the greatest republic that ever existed in the history of mankind when they were trying to build theirs. And the fact that you're going to, like, try and do the, the music thing about this I'm not is doing the absurd. music thing. You're the one that's bringing this up. Yeah, no, you're doing everything that you possibly can in order to avoid the Timmy question. Like, it's be, not about it's the like, Timmy oh, question. Tell me about the policies of the Roman Senate. Actually, you're the one it's that like, brings, yeah, I see okay. how far we've gotten from the point. All man. you're you have doing, no answer all for, you're you have doing, no answer yeah, for little so Timmy. all you're doing over and over again is proving my point. I think. Oh you, yeah. I think you're based. You sound to me like you're an American. You don't know dick all about Roman culture or old English culture or even modern day English culture. You sound to me like an American. We probably are pretty similar in that we are both American and we don't know fuck all about anything that happened to people that lived before the year 1900. That's exactly yeah, well, the that's case that I've been making this true. entire time. I've read, you can I've give read lip Thucydides. service. I've you read can give... Herodotus. I've read Marcus Aurelius, okay? I, I do have some level of understanding and appreciation, which is worth more for the people who were the great civilizations. I don't believe for a before. microsecond that you've read like literally any of these things. Like, okay, well, I mean, that's, that's your prerogative. I've read a lot more than that, honestly, too. You know, I've read, I've read Plato. I've, I've studied the, the Iliad. I've, I've been like these, these cultures are actually, um, I, I hold a, a almost a reverence for them in many okay, ways. Okay, for the reverence the for the U.S. Constitution. What do you think the U.S. Wait, what do you think the U.S. Constitution? What do you think the U.S. Constitution? Sure. So you talk about like Athena and and Rome. What do you think the U.S. Constitution is primarily based on? I think the the U.S. Constitution is is probably primarily based on Roman and the Roman and Greek systems of government more than you don't anything think, else. Have you ever heard of like the Magna it. Carta? Or wait, what do you mean? Like, do you think that the founding it's, fathers it's were writing based about off like of the kingdoms which they came from? Right? It's okay. not based off of the other civilizations or the empires or or the dictatorships that are exist all across the world. Which system do you think that it's most like? Okay. I don't think you know anything obvious, about, it's an about literally. The question. Yeah, I, I yeah. know why you don't want to you, say you it. Know that lady, lady Justice, the answer. You know that Lady Justice that you just said, that's not Athena either. <laughs> it's a different Greek goddess. Uh, like, right, you don't well, know any of I've these seen, things. No, You're I've the one that brings them up. A, you're sorry, the one I've that brings statues. these things up. No, 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 no. You no, have yeah, no have idea what you're talking about. You have no idea what you're talking about. They're all up in the courthouse. Anybody can look at this. Anybody who's been to a courthouse knows. You don't know anything about what you're talking about. The architecture, the statues, the it's it's all there, man. It's like you can just like pretend that it's not real, but that really exists. It's we obviously do have, and it's to show that we have this respect for these ancient cultures or that we did once upon a time at the founding of this country. And, and you can't, you can see it all over the place. It's, you know, you, yeah. if okay. anybody what, goes okay, outside, the, you go for next, a walk around yeah, yeah, okay. downtown we don't need the, anywhere, yeah, yeah, we don't need the, the prepared speech. imagery yeah, 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 from Greece and Rome. We don't need the prepared speech. What, is there like a yeah, yeah, What we need or is an answer for little Timmy, man. We need to know what's your solution, what's going to happen. Because this, this is... The, little Timmy is the, the reason why I bring it up as a hypothetical. Well, no, no, no. The reason why you bring it up as a hypothetical is you're not grounded in the real that's... world. You have no, you have no yeah, thing no, that you can engage with in like our modern day happen- like existence. It's already happening in America. Then why right do you have now? to give a why do you have to give a hypothetical little hypothetical, Timmy in 2040? That's why can't you talk about what Timmy? I'm going for. The reason I bring it up as a hypothetical is because it, this is going to be a standard 
white American experience in the future as the white minorities, which we see in many of the inner cities, become the norm all across America, given that European descended peoples are the vast minority of the world population. So, sure. so then We're what obviously is your, headed towards that so, from your globalist worldview. Yeah, so what is your... What, what can I look at right now? So let's say I was skeptical of your point of view, and I want evidence that all of this horrible stuff is happening to white people right now. Can you point me to something besides YouTube videos that shows that this is a real problem? Uh, yeah, I could I could point you to all sorts of things. Okay, I could like point one you to, thing. Okay, well, I mean, they're, all the institutions, like the media Which government, institution? Are out, I am, I'm, I'm getting there. They're coming out with ideas like, here are institutions of uh, that that are reinforced no, 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 no. Stop, whiteness. Stop! Stop! No, I'm going to get to a all... specific example. No, no, don't, don't get worry. to I'm one. Get Just start with one. Just one thing. Give me an example of damage that's happening to one of our institutions. Go ahead. Damage that's happening to one of our institutions. Okay, yeah. well, how about the military? Our military is now like more focused on diversity than excellence. Okay, they they are. They're focused on on bringing in women into the military, even if it means they can't meet the physical standards. Okay, it, it's like they they are that is the military is the nation's defense is very important. Okay. Obviously, so women have so, been in the military, dog, day. since 1948. Okay, so that's They're one. What? So women have been in the military for, since 1948. Okay, Truman signed. Okay, that, okay? and so, I think that now, that's now, a bad so. Thing. Hold on. So that's wait, wait, wait. Okay. So this is back the during the golden age of the normal. nuclear family. So this is so fuck this. Now you're talking about racial integration. Do you think there's problems with like black and white people being in the same military, or that this is wrong, or what do you mean by? Yeah, no, I, I didn't say anything like that at all. I was just talking about the values of the military. What as values? History, what? Here's no, why. Oh my God, here comes another vague the... answer, another prepared speech. Well, here's <laughs> not... why. They oh, all eat apple no. pie, blah, 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 blah. Can, oh, you, just, can, you, stick on, can you stick on one point without dancing oh, around? No. Holy shit. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. getting to it. I'm, yeah, so I'm tell me like very the, concretely, you know, what is something that has changed? What is something that has changed recently in the military? Uh, yeah, their priorities. That's what I just said. Like what? Like diversity. Can you give me an example of how diversity has become a new priority of the military? What, what does that yeah, mean? Yeah, there's there's uh, articles about it. You can read the the military. So you don't know anything saying, about this. No, oh my God. no. I, okay, so I don't have a statement from the military prepared right now. No, you don't have anything. You don't know anything about say, what you're talking about. There's always been diversity yeah, well, in the military, I've been giving my dude. You consistent examples for all of this. You haven't stuff, given me a single example on anything. You all you're doing is speaking in vague generalities. The Timmy question, a, because the Timmy question saying, is like everything else you're saying, non-existent. I think everybody sees that what's happening here tonight is is destiny is essentially just keeps saying, "Oh, that's a prepared speech. Oh, well, I don't like that point, or or that's that's not specific enough for me, or that's that's another prepared speech. You just memorize that all night long." Can you give me an I'm example? Okay, so I'll ask again. Examples. Can you give me an example of how about... diversity right now is being focused on in a different way in the military and how it's hurting the military? Go ahead. Yeah, no, the, the military openly says that like this is their top one of their top priorities now. They didn't used to say that, so that represents a change. So okay, can you a change in priority? So can you tell me how is this damaging the military right now? I think that as as it overtakes other priorities, which used to be historically important to the military, that that's going to represent all sorts of changes that uh So that again, this is a huge hypothetical problem. You can't point to anything right now. Okay. Um, well, yeah, we uh, should just do like Q&A. This mean, is like you, literally you a waste of time. Like, we have nothing. Like, There's like, yeah, thinking about the future and where the trends are headed is important for mm -hmm. people who are thinking about the future of this country. Gotcha. I don't know why any what anybody would listen to somebody who can't uh -huh. think about the future, draw lines along trends, see the trajectory of where we're headed, mm -hmm. and try to cut it off when it's headed in the wrong way and or course correct and steer back in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So. So yeah, a trend, that, I think it's interesting. A trend so, is so do you have an answer for yeah. Timmy yet? Or is it, you yeah, know, for yeah, the 18th yeah. time tonight, Mr. Prepared Speeches and Answers, okay. uh, I'd like to hear what your solution is for these, these white minorities. I can't minorities give you a solution to, to hypothetical problems you haven't even shown me Alongside exist. non -whites. So here's like an example. What? Can I ask a question? Because um, some of the like concerns I've had. When was the last time we had uh, any kind of comprehensive immigration bills? That comprehensive that immigration is really hard. I don't know if we're ever going to get one. Like, was there a specific time that immigration kind of started skyrocketing? Um, I, the one that white identitarians like to focus on is the Hart-Seller Act, but that started skyrocketing for reasons that people didn't even know at the time. 
So one of the big provisions of that Immigration Act was people wanted to open up the ability for families to immigrate to the United States. And originally when people opened that up, they were like, oh, maybe a whole bunch more Europeans are going to come to the U.S. now. But one of the byproducts of that was we started to see a lot more immigration from the South as a result of that. I think conservatives in the 2000s refer to this as daisy chain immigration, where you'd have somebody come over, they'd get a um, citizenship, and then they bring more and more family over or whatever. But um, comprehensive immigration is really hard to do because you need to get like bipartisan support in the Senate for stuff like this. And our political division in the Senate has reached like record highs. Like I was looking at the population increases. And when you look up United States, you see like this huge, huge uh, um, hill. Of Throw it up on screen. Yeah, whereas like the UK, it's been like uh, um, stagnant for I think 60 years or something. And um, I'm just curious, is, okay, is that because of our immigration or is that because of our... Uh, uh... Um, population growth in the United States, my guess in the US is it's probably largely going to come from immigration because as um, generally as countries move towards industrialization, your rate of birth goes down as women gain greater access to reproductive rights and education. And as people no longer need to have a fuck ton of children because they're all dying in childbirth. Yeah, and I looked up like I think Brazil said that they, you know, they have a, lo a longer lifespan and uh, they're having a lot more babies or something. But like you can see, like with the United K Kingdom, they have just been pretty much stagnant, whereas we have just been going on this huge, huge increase of. Um, and it's, a, I mean, okay, I mean, I'm just, I'm just asking questions because you know, like this is something I have s somewhat been red pilled on a bit, but uh, so. I also, I don't know why people would want to, like, I'm not sure why you would want to move to the United Kingdom, though. Like, if you wanted to be, especially now, if you wanted to be part of the European <laughs> Union, or even in the past, if you wanted to be part of the European Union, like, in terms of being in part of, like, the Schengen, like, free movement zone, like, technically the UK had exclusions from that. So, I, I and I could be wrong, but, like, I would, my guess would be if you're moving for, like, economic opportunity, I don't know why you would want to go to, like, the UK over a place like France, Italy, Portugal, Sweden, like, any of those Oh, tell that to all the people that are going there. <clears throat> are the people that are going to the UK seem to be more um, from, you know... Uh, Muslim countries. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, that's what seems to be going on over there. But, uh, you know, we're not dealing with that. We, <laughs> But, like, we're bringing in a lot of low-skilled labor that is going to be automated in, like, 10 to 20 years or something. And so how do we end up dealing with that once they don't have any jobs either? Um, I mean, you... I mean, you have to educate your base, right? Like investments in education. Is, mean? I mean, we have to make more investments in education like every other country in the world does. Like we have our ability right now to get people through school without like a fuck ton of debt or without having like these huge barriers to entry that relate to economic conditions or being able to take care of your family. These are like huge issues that we have in the United States that every European country seems to have solved that we can't, ha we haven't solved for some reason yet in the United States. So I think that like, getting people like more educated is probably important but also like a fuck ton of people that come to the united states via immigration are also educated like they boost our education rates whether it's wealthy chinese people that come over or 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 any immigrant. i'm pretty sure like half the immigrants that come to this country like have college degrees like it's part of the immigration process to get here yeah it's uh it's it's funny not you really know, it's, it's not you but... say that it's difficult for it's difficult to get people educated in the United States. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I'd, I'd put forth that there it's more difficult to get some people educated in the United States than others. And you can see that in that SAT scores, the way that they play out, even when you you control for economic status. So there's there's that. First of all, there's the Wait, what is the, the implication of that, that? Or what are you what are you saying from that? What do you mean? Yeah, the well, let's just say the average IQ of the people going over the border mm -hmm. is what 87 coming coming over uh, from South America, and the average IQ of Americans at large, all Americans, is 100. And so, bringing in a whole group of, of people who are like almost an entire standard deviation lower IQ on average than than Americans, and then saying, well, the way that we're going to to stop their jobs being replaced, and we'll pay for them to have UBI or whatever, we'll pay for their uh, their health care and everything um you're saying the way to to uh, okay to real, yeah so real quick so real quick is to educate yeah, them yeah. more so they who have do you lower think, iqs who, on who average than americans let's who, educate yeah. the people already here who do you who do you think um for, so first of all the ones that need to be educated the most here don't want to go to school um who who do you think we spend the most money on in society um <laughs> People receiving social security. I don't know what. what yeah, it's what yeah, it's, it's, it's people? people. It's it's old people, right? Like that's where most of the money goes towards. So like having a young immigration population coming in to like work jobs so that we can bolster like our social security system is actually yeah. Like, the jobs important. are going to be automated. That was her point, man. Yeah. So 
Mark said that jobs were going to be automated and there wouldn't be any more work left for anybody. Okay. Oh, like, people right. have been yeah. saying for hundreds of years that like the threat of more yeah, efficient capital more and everything. Yeah, we've got more than half the experts mm -hmm. saying that a third of American jobs will be automated by 2030. Yes. But those uh, are, but those are, Mark said those that are, and it was silly, right? Those are, so that's not yeah. going to happen. So There's those, no such yeah. thing as automation. Yeah. So those are current jobs, but it seems to be the case that we continue to find more jobs for people to do as our economy becomes a service economy, as other more educated positions open up, like that seems to be the way, the trend forward. People have been saying for, I don't know how old you are, I'm 32, people have been saying since I was a kid that, oh my God, all the jobs are gonna be automated, there's gonna be no jobs left. But guess what? There are jobs that exist today that didn't even exist when I was in high school or even college. Yeah, and that's true, but <clears throat> it's not at a one-to-one -one ratio. And you know, as a, as a good friend said to me, it's it's sort of like saying, you know, if you had 10 guys out spear, spear fishing to get enough you know, food for for their people, and then mm -hmm. somebody invents a net, and it only takes one guy to work the net. There aren't just already oh jobs for all the other nine guys who used to be spear fishermen, right? It's like yeah, that's there's going to be a period. You are where yeah, it's that is yeah yeah. So that is to probably reach, right? which yeah. doesn't work according yeah, yeah, yeah. to the studies. Just to be clear, you gave what is probably one of the most counterintuitive examples that could have ever been given because human sure. history is literally defined by our ability to no longer having to hunt for food. Like human civilization didn't start okay. until we what began agriculture. So yeah, in fact, point. it is in fact the case that 10 people needing to find food, one person figuring out how to provide food for 10 people did actually lead to exactly the thing that you said wouldn't happen, which was everybody in society being able to specialize and work in different things. Things. That is literally the foundation of yeah, all of human civilization. Yeah, it doesn't just work out like that exactly, because this guy isn't just giving the food to the other nine guys. They need to find a job in order to survive and be able to buy food from this guy who now has a, a, a larger supply. Yeah, but the right? guy so, with the larger supply, maybe now that they're not all out naked spearfishing, maybe as part of the remains of this fish, maybe he wants some clothes made, but he doesn't have time to do it because he's doing it. Maybe the people that are making clothes, um, you know, maybe they need somebody to make some so cool benches for them, right? so what you're essentially saying is we need to retrain them. Truckers need to learn how to code, and that's just that. Well, it turns I don't out think, it doesn't who said, work, okay? I never argued in favor of retraining. I don't think retraining works. You just have to educate well, the younger population. Well, that's what you're saying that these other nine spear fishermen should do, right? Is they should retrain into other jobs, like making clothing I don't clothing think we something. have people Women's right now work, in society right? whose only ability is to fucking spear fish. If you're 50 or 60 and you've been working in a certain industry your whole life, you probably just get paid out until you die then, because you're not going to be retrained to, to be a fucking computer programmer. Of course. I'm not here to make that argument. I've never made that argument, so I don't know why you're pretending that I have. All I'm saying is that you can't escape the looming future, which is having a more sophisticated and higher educated population is going to help you be more competitive in the world economy. There is no way to escape that. The only way that you can counter that is to educate your younger population, which is why the U.S. needs to make bigger investments sure. in education. And so this is why I would put to you that I, I completely agree. We need uh, to step up our education in the United States, especially given that our population, a, a huge portion of it, is likely at least likely to be uh, to have their jobs automated out and, and by robots which work you know 24 7 with no workers comp or sleep right so so yeah there's there's that but what you haven't what you haven't addressed yet still is that these were you're advocating for that but also bringing in a, a huge amount of immigrants from other places who are lower iq on average and telling i'm not them, talking just about it's all the same i'm not talking about all of them, i'm right? not talking about bringing in anybody okay i'm not in favor of driving a allowing bus it whatever it. however you want if to put people okay? want to move here because there are jobs available which there yeah, are but there won't be when they're automated i don't then know the, why and you're then not you know what up. then in that case then they'll leave or their children will get educated no, you think they're just gonna they're just gonna to leave that's all like okay yeah there's man, no there's, opportunity the in here they already hypothetical you're making and you're up, just saying when everyone's yeah, job so gets automated away they'll leave let's talk about reality okay you're telling me you're worried about a future where jobs are going to run out before the coronavirus the unemployment rate in the united states was like three and a quarter percent it was one and three quarters percent below what the natural rate of unemployment is okay so whatever hypothetical future you're talking about where we run out of jobs we're really far away from it it's not there yet now maybe there is some future where we actually don't have those jobs but hey until then we invest in education we make sure that our population is educated that's all all we can do about it just like keeping the keeping this restriction on like we can't let people of a certain iq come here i guess if you were in favor of that sure can we deport all the low iq white people to then are you in favor of that or like i, yeah, I don't know like i don't know funny. what this solution it's, is it is it's not grounded in reality at all like we're not gonna start iq funny. testing every people time, and then every them out time of the you country. talk about restricting immigration from other countries people like destiny always talk about kicking people out of your country and i don't know why these two things are connected in their head it's just <laughs> 
Like, because he, if he you're seems going to, like, to tell me, not be able to consider because one without if you're the other. going to tell me that my future and the future of my children have to suffer because you want to keep certain people out of this country that you deem bad for being here, then fine. But I want to kick out anybody in this country then that meets that qualification. If you think that fucking low IQ people that don't belong here, that's fine. But then I want all the low IQ, white, black, as man, whatever other people kicked out too. You can't just pick and choose at the border because there's some random identitarian obsession you have. Yeah, sure, we absolutely can because it turns out that the people who are already here are American citizens and the people who are not we have no obligation to whatsoever and you're treating them all like they're all the same i'm not it's talking like, oh, about well, an you obligation want to stop somebody from coming here from from ecuador like well okay well then let's start kicking black people out of i'm America. not talking about an obligation i'm just saying that we ought to do what like prepares us better for like the future world and you know what it's uh you know it could be in the the, the most pragmatist way where you don't care about anyone at all that it's like if we if we just completely got rid of all the low iq people in society that things would be better off look i'm not arguing for so uh, think- iq nationalism either i'm not saying that like there's you know we can only bring in you know at, like one 110 iq immigrants from india and china or something like that i'm not I'm not saying that's the case it's just simply that you're not addressing that these people whose jobs will be automated away uh, they're they're not able to be educated to a higher level to do jobs better than the menial robots it is like the iq if you have a low iq Mm -hmm. maybe you you can be trained to do a job if it's not so difficult and it won't affect how well you're doing the job okay but if there's a job that is more complicated Uh like the ones that will be left off after automation then your iq determines how well you you will whether you can learn the job at all as well as your ability to do it well and so it's like yeah having having people who are their iqs which is like their capacity to learn and know things is too low in order to to rise above what the robots are and why are you in favor of of, why are you in favor and then saying we need to pay for them i'm for healthcare and ubi or whatever as Uh, well uh, and they contribute nothing i don't know why you're saying that so, yeah, so are you in so favor of like, the answer? So, so do you want to only let in high IQ people then or not? Because you said you didn't care about it, but then you're making it sound like you really care about it. Uh, yeah, I'd rather if we stopped all the low IQ immigrants for sure. Okay, so you want us to favor like Nigerians and Ashkenazi Jews? That's what you're in favor of. You want those people immigrating in mass to the United States? Yeah. Can I just um, hear you say so that? I just very I funny to say, me. I would say that <laughs> high IQ. High IQ Nigerians. Uh-huh. Yeah, Nigerians. It turns out do like they do better than like most ethnic groups in this country and Nigerian immigrants. But uh-huh. so yeah, if you want to say that are there non Nigerian immigrants? Wait, what what did that mean? <laughs> what no, I meant like it rather than just Nigerians who like grew up here or whatever. I know that that applies to Nigerian immigrants specifically. So wait, if you grew up way, here, aren't you American? <laughs> what's that? If you grew up here you're not really Nigerian, right? True. Okay. Well, well, yeah. Okay. Nigerian. I was just making the distinction: Nigerian immigrants versus Nigerian Americans. Okay. But sort of like they say, African Americans. It's like, are you going to laugh at black guys for saying that? Okay. So. Well, where does the term? Why do you know why they have the term African American? Right. It's question, not because they came if you from want Africa. To restrict but... immigration strictly uh-huh. to high IQ countries like Nigeria mm-hmm. or or China, or, or even Israel, it's like that would be more acceptable to me right now than what we're doing, specifically because of what Brittany said, which is that the jobs that they are cap- the low IQ people are capable of doing mm-hmm. are going to be automated. And then yeah, what so are can you, you show me today? Yeah, people? so can you show me today, like, downsides to immigration that exist today? Can you show me this? Or is this what, just what another, little, is this another little, I just said okay, so all. it's another little Timmy problem. <clears throat> no, not at all. It, well, yeah, it is actually, and here's why: <laughs> all the experts, yeah. all the experts all agree the experts. that this is where the trend is headed. Uh-huh. Okay, we have. I, I mean, you can look at it. Uh, the McKinsey uh, Institute for Research has done m- multiple studies on what automation is going to look like. Specifically, what percent of each job is going to be automated in each industry? I highly encourage anybody to, to look into it, especially if you're considering which career to go into. But they're talking about these things. They've done the studies. They're saying that it's about a third of American jobs are likely to be automated. Most experts agree by 2030, okay? Now, that's a pretty big deal. Now, you can ignore that the experts are saying that. You can stick your head in the sand or whatever because you, your, your real worldview is just that we should have mass immigration no matter what, okay? And that's why I know what this really comes down to for you. But yeah, so just to quote, yeah, so just let me let me state yeah. this last bit. Yeah, on, this is what we need to be speech. this is what we need to be talking about, okay? Mm-hmm. This this point drives it home. 
these people, the jobs they're capable of will be automated. And then people like you and Brittany are going to be pushing, and I wouldn't be opposed, we'll be pushing for health care for people, okay? It's just like like uh, state health care, one, one uh, payer, single payer, wh whatever the solution you end up with is, people are going to be advocating for more health care for Americans who are already here. There are people who, with uh, these technological um, innovations, with, with AI and automation and stuff, they're talking about bringing in UBI and, and taxing the tech companies or something as a solution, taxing the robots. I don't know. This is, these people are, we're going to have to pay for them, okay? They're not going to be able to contribute to society, and we're still going to have to pay for them. And and we can choose to just not them not bring them in right now and avoid that whole problem. That's my solution. So what's your solution to that, man? I can't provide solutions for hypothetical yeah, problems in the future. So one problem oh, that we have right now in the United States, but you, don't care. you can't I give me it. a single expert that says this is happening. So stop saying all the experts, okay? So the but problem yeah, okay. I have is that yeah, right now in the United States, we have a I'll massively right declining labor force, okay? We have a massively declining labor force. And right now we were using immigration to bolster a lot of those low-income jobs. We don't have that at the moment, and a lot of places are suffering as a result of that. Um, so I, I can't, I'm not gonna try to solve for a, a, some hypothetical little problem that exists in the future when we have like a massive problem that exists right now okay well yeah i just sent a, an article about it the study is in there mckinsey research institute that's what they're saying most experts agree with that with those numbers which i just gave um i'm i'm studying computer science i've written a lot of papers about ai and automation and the you know the arms race for ai in the future things like that there are relations with china which tech who's developing technology faster silicon valley i've I, i've researched a lot on this and uh you i mean you can stick your head in the sand and say well i don't care that the experts are saying this is happening or you can nitpick one little thing about it but everyone's i think everyone can see tonight that what what you said is fundamentally true you don't have any solutions you're not really thinking about the future you don't care about the the hypothetical which is most likely to take place within your own lifetime OK, and that's the same thing for the Timmy question as it is for for this immigration question with with automation. And you, you have no answers. Yeah. So like you even have... reading like the thing that you linked me, like I'm just like scrolling through this. It is important to note, however, that even when some tasks are automated, employment in those occupations may not decline, but rather workers may perform new tasks. Some of them, um, yeah. The potential impact of automation on employment varies by occupation and sector. Taking these factors into account, our new research estimates that between almost zero and 30 percent of hours worked globally could be automated by 2030, depending on the speed of automation. Like even this thing doesn't give like any type of doomsday scenario that you're talking about. Like. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. I mean, you can say that, like, well, it automates parts of jobs, or maybe there will be new jobs that are made. But like, okay, let's take truckers for example. When when there's no 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 um, or what I haven't this read this article about. in like three years, Okay, man. then why would you link this to me? Because I'm familiar with the McKinsey yeah, Institute's stance on automation, I, I, and their I'm stance on automation, and I can link you prior articles place. that they've written, is basically saying that like, yeah, there's going to be like a lot of changes in the future. However, there's probably still going to be enough jobs to go around. So for yeah, instance, no, they, this is a they, headline from another McKinsey Institute article, here you go, um, that I am familiar with. Whoops, boom, boom, and you can read this right off the top. Automation and artificial intelligence are transforming businesses and will contribute to economic growth via contributions to productivity. They will also help address moonshot societal changes in areas from health to climate change. At the same time, those tech these technologies will transform the nature of work and the workplace itself. Machines will be able to carry out more of the tasks done by humans, complement the work that humans do, and even perform some tasks that go beyond what humans can do. As a result, some occupations will decline, Others will grow and many more will change. While we believe that there will be enough work to go around, barring extreme scenarios, society will need to grapple with significant workplace transitions and dislocation. Workers will need to acquire new skills and adapt to the increasingly capable machines alongside them in the workplace. So even this study, even this institute that you're citing does not believe that we're going to suddenly run out of work. 
Uh, yeah, no. That just, again, it's I, I understand the point that you're making, and I agree. There are some. There are even no, no, some. This, uh, you can't even, agree with well, me because you just provided you just a whole counter all, to this. You just gave an actual prepared statement. So I know I didn't get. I, it's your prepared so, statement. I just read your link. <laughs> that's you read your own link, okay? But but either way, regardless of which link you went, read, you okay. talked for a minute. It's my turn, okay? Yeah. Go now, ahead. Do your ramble. Talk. Make sure you bring yeah, up there, Apple there Pie are, again. There are many jobs uh -huh. which only some parts of the job will be automated, uh -huh. and it might not it might not completely make every single worker obsolete it'll just take few fewer of them or something like that mm -hmm. there are some jobs which it's a it is a one to one ratio where it will free up people for other things mm -hmm. stuff like that when it comes to speci some specific examples like truckers though when you when you bring in self driving automated trucks okay mm -hmm. there's not just like oh well here's the new job that's created for all the truckers to go to right uh, right? Yeah, for truckers, probably not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So truckers, which make up what, like thirty percent of the workforce in America, something ridiculous like that. It's a huge amount of people. You just have no good answer for. I can't. So you. You're are, just going to deny that yeah, this so is happening. So you are clearly them, right? uneducated. That right. So everybody can see. Trucker, everybody. Everybody can see that you are uneducated. Okay. So if you oh, want right. to point me to another source that says that truckers losing their jobs is going to be like some insurmountable problem in the future, then yeah, I'd be happy to contend with that. But you giving me like little Timmy, the kid that was bullied in school and now can't become a trucker, like I can't deal with your hypothetical scenarios that don't even exist yet. I don't know how far off we are from automated driving. I don't know if every single type of trucking activity yeah, no, will be automated. And I don't know all. if there are going to be new parallel jobs that open up in exchange for these like automated trucking drivers. So maybe software engineers or other things like, is there going to be oh, a lot yeah, of people? Are, are there going to be, can I finish a point without you screaming? I know you're so excited. Game. I know you're so excited to hammer home like your little groper talking they've points. Like, hashtag learn to code. Hashtag learn to code. Yeah, we, it doesn't work. I know that. I, I, yes. Hey, if you want, yeah, if you want, yeah, if you want, if you want, there are early destiny streams. You can go back and watch older streams where I talk about retraining especially provisions that existed under NAFTA. And you know what I said about that? All the money that we spent on retraining would have been better just send us cash payments to these people and then they just don't work anymore. Like, retraining doesn't work. I know that. I know you're really excited to, to hammer home yeah, on that I, straw I man talking point, that, but, but uh, I've never I made that Destiny argument. I've ne it's clear because if you did, you'd know how to argue your points a little bit better, right? I've never made uh -huh. the argument that retraining is going to work. That's why I've said over and over and over and over again, and I welcome you to link me something that challenges this, that, that I've said something yeah. different. I've said that uh, we need yeah. to invest in education. It's not truckers we need to re-educate it's their children that's what i've said over and over and over again yeah well it's funny because you i mean you like like you just said if you scroll back the clock you know two minutes or whatever however long your rant was what you said is that well when the truckers jobs are automated my solution for them is that it'll open up new jobs like software engineers okay that's that is what they meant when they said learn to code Okay, they were talking to I'm coal not miners and Why do you keep way? ascribing to me the learned? I've never defended that position. Have you yeah, well, run out of the ability to engage with my talking about, points? I said, what about truckers? You said software engineers. Now, again, I don't no, want to get tied up in the weeds here. No, I told you that trucking jobs will be lost, which, by the way, are 6% of the workforce, not 30%. I said that trucking jobs will be lost, but other parallel jobs will open up. So things like software engineers. I didn't say that truckers can become coders. I don't think that can happen. But all so what are you going to do for the truckers, man? Pay them out. Pay them out. Okay, now that there we are, we're we're paying people out as to, in order to alleviate the automation issues that are taking place. We're having this. What's this, the problem? We have with to that? deal with Americas or with with Americans. Yeah. The problem with that is that you want to keep bringing in mass immigration of low IQ immigrants who are not able to become software engineers. Just by Why? virtue of the fact okay. that they don't have the let's, brain capacity. Let's talk, let's talk, and you still want to pay those people, back, too. That's back, your solution, back to the prepared right? prepared speech. Jesus. Okay. You want, let's talk through this. Prepared speech about something I didn't simple. know we were going to talk about Let's tonight. talk through Everything's this. Everything's a prepared yeah, speech. I get it. There it goes. Man. Right down the talking points. Okay. So very, very, very simple question, okay? Right? Why do you think somebody would immigrate to this country if there wasn't a job here for them? What do you mean? Do you think that people in Africa are like, oh, I heard a job opening, a bird flew by, it told me there's a job opening in America, so I'm going to go find it. No, they know what America's like. They, they have this idea in their head of, you know, that they, they can find opportunity there. And you know what? In a lot of cases, they do. They, they find a much better opportunity than they ever would have had in their home countries. And it's not like, oh, well, here's a job opening, so I guess it's, it's I'm going to go pack up everything and immigrate now. It's not how it works.
These okay. people. Let they me don't, ask. They let me ask. Let me ask another. So automation comes through, and you just want to give give the states. This let me. Okay, I, you're going down the people. down the down the prepared talking points. Yeah, well, give okay. me an answer for it, man. Okay. Well, I'm asking you a question. So it seems to me that generally, when you're telling me that there are poor people in Africa that immigrate to the United States that don't have any jobs here. No, I'm telling you that as automation takes place and the lower IQ oh requiring menial jobs are automated, that they won't. How do you not see that? It's like this dude has no concept for the future. Because this, be because the, uh, the people, because you. people keep saying over and over and over again that this is going to happen and it hasn't yet. People have been saying for the past 20, 30, 40 years that computers are going to replace all secretaries, that automated car factories are going to replace all manufacturing, that nobody's going to be able to find jobs or any of this shit. And it hasn't happened, my dude. That's why uh, I yeah, brought up uh, that I even watched. since Marx was saying that the sewing loom was going to replace like all of fucking labor, it hasn't happened yet. We've still found plenty of jobs, even for low IQ people like yourself. We found plenty of work in this country for people to do from, from birth till death. There's all there's plenty it's of work funny, to go uh, around. Some of his, in some of Destiny's debates, he argues that automation is happening he brings up articles about mcdonald's is replacing everybody in all the cash registers and they're going to do it in five years yeah i saw that but now that you're stuck in this position it's because your overriding concern is the defending mass immigration at all costs no matter what i don't you deny i that don't automation yeah is even so happening first of all i thought you said you didn't watch me it sounds like you do that's cute uh secondly i'm not defending uh, I, I mass for somebody I'm, not, else, I'm not defending but, uh, you ma i'm not there. defending mass immigration i don't talk about mass immigration because i don't even know what the fuck that means okay uh, like mass there's some arbitrary lot, by that, the that, way. yeah thanks a lot okay yeah, yeah. so i don't do, i don't i don't defend uh mass and immigration. it is a lot okay? you know it's like 30 percent of I, the, I, yeah, the yeah, population that's great. yes thank you i know you have you love okay, that 30 percent cool. number that's probably the second time you've thrown out it incorrectly okay pretty big number. what i've said in the past is that if you both boost minimum wage to a certain point you are going to see automation happen which i still defend that of course i never said in the past that we are going to run out of jobs if mcdonald's start automating their workforce i haven't said that but i've also said that we need to bolster our investment in education because that's typically how you combat low-wage jobs being automated uh, yeah, and, and again, you have no answer for the fact that the people who are coming over here have lower IQs and they're not capable of being Why software are you engineers so working fixated? on robots. First of all, half the people that immigrate to this country have college degrees, so they're plenty capable of becoming some type of worker in our service economy. Uh, yeah, something tells me the colleges in their home countries aren't the same as the colleges in our countries. <laughs> Do you have a source for that? I don't know how no, to engage no with that, my dude. That. I yeah, just I think know. that uh, okay. uh, America is the only country in the world. In, America in is the Zimbabwe. only country in the world that yeah. has fucking college, I guess. Yeah, I well, think, you uh, dominated me on that one. Community college at yeah. Zimbabwe is uh -huh. probably not as good as the local community college near me. Yeah, I think I could probably safely say that. Mm -hmm. Um, you, would you disagree with that? You think that they're all it's all the same, the level of education, no matter which college you go to, no matter which country it's in, it doesn't matter. There you get the same level of education, your degree is worth the same and represents the same amount of knowledge. Um, I mean, there are forms of like accreditation between schools across the world. I think that there's probably some standard thing that you would expect to learn, and I'm sure there's like some competency competency test that you can give as well. So Okay, well, like you realize so there are like international you're students. My, you're right? not answering like, my question. You gave me a prepared statement instead of a yes or no. I don't know what the exact qualifications are to graduate with a degree in any country. I'm sure they differ from country to country. But if you've graduated from college in some country, I doubt that these I doubt that in Zimbabwe, they're like, let's make a bunch of fake colleges so that people can go like, wait. First of all, even the idea of having college is like a huge drain on your early year workforce. You're taking people that arguably could be working from 18 to 22 and you're sticking them in some type of school for four fucking years. That's a pretty big cost to your economy. I would be very shocked if there were countries that engaged in that without having those kids come out as being more educated and able to work higher paying jobs at the end of it. Hey, maybe Maybe it's possible if you want to demonstrate that go for it but you just alluding to some black country and saying their schools suck when you sound like you yourself have never even been inside of a fucking college class isn't going to cut it chief yeah so funny you you admitted that there's different levels of qualifications from different colleges i'd simply like to ask do you think that the, the colleges in zimbabwe have higher qualifications than colleges in america yes or no i, ha I have no idea i don't higher know. or lower if you had to guess if you had to bet money on it if you're a gambling man which one would you bet has higher qualifications america or zimbabwe he hates these I, questions. I, I i i truly don't know 
If I had to guess, you I'd probably know. say America, but I, I'm not, I really don't know. Because yeah, I know well, that a lot, guess, come, a lot of the African immigrants that come, a lot of the African immigrants, a lot of the African immigrants that come to this country are among the highest earning ethnic groups in the entire country. So I don't know if that's because African institutions are better or if those people tend to come from those countries um, and they just earn more or what. I don't know. I really, I truly don't know the answer to that question. Right. Okay, so, and it's funny that you, you're like, well, a black country like that is Zimbabwe, when, you know, it's, that kind of ties into my whole point, is that uh, it is a black country called Zimbabwe now, but it used to be a different country. It used to be called Rhodesia, right? And it used to, uh, used to have what a lot more whites What does this have to do with it. anything? Oh, well, we'll get there, trust me. No, 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 I don't want to get there. Oh, God, what is the, um, what, what, <laughs> are, we, do we, are we doing like a Q&A at the end of this? Yeah, we are going to do a Q&A, um... He wants so badly not to talk about Rhodesia and South Africa. And no, I, I just, I just don't want to get off into like some other like white nationalist talking tree when you haven't like yeah. like engaged with any of the conversation so far. Yeah, I feel like I've engaged actually a lot. And uh, I'm you, sure you, really, you do. Uh, again, so so to sum this up, you uh, you have no answer for the Timmy question. You want to deny that it's real or happening, even though there is historical precedent in South Africa and Rhodesia. You want to you don't care about the future of automation because it's not in front of your face right now. You haven't heard the right people complaining about it or something. You want to you, deny that I'm it's going curious. to be a problem. You want to deny yeah. that you're going to have low IQ immigrants. Yeah, so my question is, what do you think a trend? A what do you think financial problem yeah, for this? So country. what do you think a trend is? A trend, the way that things are headed in a... Talk to me about it. Like, what is a trend? What is a trend to you? Why are, why are we doing this? Are we doing music you, quizzes again? No, you <laughs> just like, I, like, yeah, like you just have, you're, it's like, this is such a painful conversation. Yeah, so, so many see, I talk, I t that's exactly uh, my point right here. I talk about Little Timmy. I talk about yeah, the future of Little Timmy is about. I'm trying to think Little Timmy is places, autobiographical at this point. I talk point. about places where yeah. in history where whites uh -huh. have, have been, uh, had the authority of the state Mm -hmm. removed from them by non-white ethnic groups which hold racial grievances <laughs> against them yeah. which is exactly what we're shaping up to have in america yeah, yeah, yeah. and how that turns another out another talking point talk about the apple pie again spoiler alert it's genocide yeah. by genocide. the way i talk about mm -hmm. automation and and mm -hmm. health care and how immigration is going to present a problem to that yep. and your only answer is is to eat apple pie is to get everybody around the table pie. eating apple pie how do you define what trends are? That's your only answer to this. Yeah, well, the reason, well, so that what a trend is, no good yeah, so a trend, we're in this country a trend is when, we can, a trend is when we can like plot a whole bunch of data points and then we can like fit a curve to it and then we can like point in the future that like, well, this stuff happened in the past based on this data. So it's probably going to happen in the future based on this data. That's a trend. You seem to think that a trend Thanks, is, I didn't know you, what a trend you, is. you don't know what anything is. You seem to think that a trend is, well, I saw 12 YouTube videos of white guys getting beat up and in the future, little Timmy is going to be harassed because he's not brown enough because people don't like his turban that's what you're saying yeah. that's what a little no, that's what a trend is to you okay so, so yeah so, i don't know what to, i don't know what, what to what say I mean what I mean when I call it a trend is that people didn't used to talk in these terms. They didn't used to say things like this. I grew up in a country where people were proud to be an American, and it was as simple as that. Sure, there's, but the problem is, is that you can't even answer. Like at least, like at the very least, at the very least, when I talked to Big Papa Fat, she could give me more concrete answers around these okay. topics. But you literally are like so evasive around everything. Like at the very least, when I talk to that guy, he can give me like, Sorry, oh, like I here's my answer for this, you, here's my answer for that. But you talk in circles, like you're exhausting. You about Holy Timmy shit. I'm evasive well, about the only point that you really want to hammer home is a hypothetical child that doesn't exist yet. Like, just listen uh, to yourself. No, it's embarrassing. I've said it a lot. It's, it's embarrassing. The child does exist right now uh, here in America. There are children in this situation exactly. The okay. reason I brought up a hypothetical instead of All a real right. world example yep. is because this is going to be the standard white <laughs> American experience uh -huh. in 20 to 40 I'm years. I'm sure it will be. We'll see. We'll touch base we'll then, okay? We're going to move on to the Q&A, okay? Um, all right, so from John Locke, I'll pull up the ones that I can. Uh, from John Locke's, can Mio buy himself a better mic? It's too blown out and sounds loud as shit, especially if he's going to be this channel's top creator. And maybe we'll use your super chat to get him that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, no no worries. I have a better mic. It's in a box somewhere. I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see. We got from... Hunter Thompson, a question for Mio. Are college graduates from Nigeria or college graduates from the U.S. better educated? 
Uh, that's uh, that's a good question, honestly, because I know that Nigerian Americans specifically, they tend to do pretty well. It could be that that's a country that does have really good education institutions, and it's uh, better than that they they could be. I don't know, but it could be that they're better than a lot of the education institutions in America today. I think it's not hard to beat the public education system in grade school, especially. So it could be that Nigeria specifically is a country where I would be much less likely. To, uh, to be opposed to immigration from. It also has a lot smaller population than all the places we're taking them from currently. You can you must have a high IQ. I see you can learn well because you just basically copied my prior answer. So congratulations, you're evolving. Uh, yeah, or maybe we just had the same position on it since Yeah, a lot of your positions seem to become mine after I give you the answer for them. Ah, uh, right, of course. Mm -hmm. Just like how I said, like, you, you said like half, like everything Careful, I you're said tripping over yourself. response to the question <laughs> that you gave me. And then, uh, but I already said half of them, and you're like, oh, well, I'm giving you the answer because you don't know what to say. Like, sorry, I didn't give you every single talking point that you've ever heard before, but mm -hmm. these are all legitimate reasons. And it seems like you understand the issue. Well, I understand the issue very right. well. That's why this conversation yeah, has been so boring, right. is because I can have both sides of this conversation on my own better than I can with you. You're so ill equipped for the conversation. That's the uh, most disappointing right. part. Of course. You should go listen to of Daddy course. Fuentes more. Like, he has these con I don't understand how you can listen to him for so long and not know the answer to any of these questions. Like, even in my limited engagement with him, yeah, I get Sorry, tell you how you uh, can answer I a lot of these gave questions. you answers, they just weren't the ones you're looking for. Sorry, I'm not going to say, like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, round everyone who's non white up and ship them off. Or, sorry, I'm not going to say something crazy like that, which is the answer you're obviously getting at with your pointed questions about not at all. taking it women out of universities or something. I, like that. I'm trying to be yeah. charitable with you because I'm because I, I could walk you to a million horrible places because your answers are all so vague and like intangible, but that's okay. Uh -huh. What's the next question? <laughs> From Justin uh, KG, the average IQ in Zimbabwe is 82, and you talk about the best of them leaving and coming to America, then can't say which country is better. It's not about which country is better. I, it's hard to answer the question of what has better colleges. So, like, here is a hypothetical. I don't know if this is the case, but it could be the case. Here's a hypothetical. Maybe colleges in poor countries actually produce the smartest people because maybe in those countries college is seen as like some ultra elite institution and the only people that go to school are like people that are children of like big business owners or like government officials so like it wouldn't surprise me if for instance if you take a place like cuba or something um or they probably educate a lot of people if you take like a really poor country it wouldn't surprise me if like the average person that graduates from a college there is far more intelligent than the average person that graduates from like a european university or an american college because in these countries everybody can go to school generally speaking or everybody has access to it that's why i don't know like what colleges have the higher qualifications i'm just not sure yeah i think yeah it's, it's probably he's probably totally right that the the countries who have an average iq of 82 probably have a, a roughly equivalent institutions to america that that makes perfect sense of course right um real quick Brittany, i, I don't know if you you said this already i was maybe tuned out uh are you are you done taking new questions now at this point and all new questions have to be super chats did you already say that yeah yeah, okay, they, so they for, I just want to let everyone in the audience know, if you super chat, Brittany has to read it, like, basically no matter what. No slurs, okay, but uh, here's your chance to say anything you want to Destiny through Brittany's voice. <laughs> okay. Oh, my internet's messing up. All right, so from the Justice 35, next time Destiny should debate himself, um, Mitosa is clearly too dumb to have this debate. Tag in BPF to save me out. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So from Bash the Fash, for some North and South Koreans are the same ethnicity. Do you think their culture have anything in common? Do, you, do they share common history in any meaningful way at, in, at all anymore? Do you want to go first? You want me to go first? Um, okay. So, yeah, you... I, yeah, I think that they do have a. I I think they have a shared story on some levels, and that they came from the uh, what the Koreans had an emperor back in the day, right? And they a lot of their culture has uh, vestiges left over from that. However, they now have different stories. In so far as you know, the South South Korea has been largely ca uh, characterized by democracy and by Eastern or Western influence. Um, but the, the North Korea has a complete lack of it. The people have become, you know, uh, very different in many ways. And you also have to count for the fact that what the, uh, the Kim family has obviously done away with parts of culture that it doesn't like. You know, like, uh, what, what was there an article the other day saying that uh, Kim Jong-un made, made K-pop like, you know, you get 10 years in a work camp or get executed for it because it's degenerate. So... 
you know, you don't see that in South Korea. And I think that they have largely distinct and different cultures at this. Wait, so are they ethnically the same? They're both descendant from a mother civilization for them to uh, to come together and reforge an identity at some point in the future. I don't know. It's a good question. I just I like the fact that in this debate he has said that a white person and a black person could theoretically be the same ethnicity. I think that's my favorite thing so far. Yeah, I, I didn't say that though. I, I said that uh, the people people from different groups all across the planet with with different long arc of history of their uh -huh. civilizations they will never be the same ethnicity. Okay. Um, all right. So from Tenro. Uh, black guy here. Most blacks in this country don't consider themselves American and go on only their ethnicity all the time. Blacks are literally taught to hate whites and other cultures in every facet on their consumption. Okay, so just as a quick educational course for you people, okay? <laughs> so whoever wrote that, okay? is the literal whitest possible donor that could ever exist in all of mankind. Yeah, Bl actually not so true. I black was, uh, people don't go by their this black people black to black people don't Sorry. go black people don't go by their quote unquote ethnicity because a lot of black people that came over here don't know what their ethnic roots are. That's why the term African American was invented. It's because they don't actually know which countries they originate from. When they were uh, brought yeah, over as slaves, just, all of them were basically mixed up. And so they don't have like the trip to Ellis Island to read the books. It's, oh, this is where my great grandfather came over. Or like, oh, my great, great, great grandpa came on the, the fucking Mayflower. Great, 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 great grandpa came on the fucking Mayflower. They don't know that. So the idea that like black people are like, oh no, I'm not actually American. I'm from fucking Kenya or some shit. That's just, if you're a of a slave you don't know shit like that sorry yeah so i, I think it's funny how, how destiny says and i know i say that too much it is funny but destiny's a funny guy uh it's it's funny how he <clears throat> they say that laughter is a good sign of nervousness he, he says so that it's not surprising to me that <laughs> you find a lot of what laugh, i say pretty humorous what? laughter is a sign of nervousness so you saying that everything oh, i say is no, funny is pretty interesting laughter laughter is a sign of just vibing man it's uh -huh. like a, yeah we're vibing something right more. now yeah so it's it's interesting that destiny he he had fully admits that it was it was bad for american blacks african americans that their cultures were wiped out and and stripped from them and that uh they're largely you know confused in many ways he says they don't even have an ethnicity anymore and and you know he's, he would probably deny them a, a unique ethnic culture to themselves african americans uh, even though I think most of them would disagree with him. And and yet he says that if we just destroy and wipe out all of the ethnic history of the historic American people, that that would be totally fine and we can forget all the ancient stories and you don't inherit any culture from the, the, the even the ancient civilizations, much less the ones which we came from a couple hundred years ago. Is and also another I don't Tenryo know if my is I don't a know real my... black guy and uh yo he's totally based. Oh sevens in chat to Tenrio. Yeah. He's in chat. This is a this is a real guy. <sighs> I don't real know if there's like a right glitch there. in the in the what is this? StreamYard? And I can't see the other destiny you're talking to, but I don't know where you come up with all these completely fabricated positions of mine. I've never said that we should forcibly wipe out anybody's culture. The reason why slavery was bad wasn't because people lost their culture. It's because we forcibly took people from one area and then intentionally attempted to genocide their, their culture. And then intentionally... No. Gen no, I don't think that losing culture is always bad because culture is always changing and always evolving throughout all of human history. That's why you can't point to me a single static culture that has ever existed because it never will because culture always changes. There's nothing bad uh, about yeah, losing because you don't really your culture lose adapting with the times and yeah. having it wiped out by another ethnic group completely. Yeah, so can you give me an example of one aspect of white culture being wiped out by another ethnic group? Man, it's uh, I, Exactly. I, so, let's go, well, no, so let's go on to the next I question. So let's go on to the next question. I told you the nuclear yep. family is a big let's one. Let's go man. on to the next the nuclear family. Who do you think is more likely to be in a nuclear family organization? A Hispanic couple, a black couple, or a white couple? Like who, who do you think is more likely to champion for this like family organization? Do you think it's going to be white people or do you think it's going to be people of color? Yeah, I think right now, as I said throughout this, and that's why I've said it, that America is kind of in a cultural. So you don't have right an answer now. for that. Now you have to talk around it because no, now, because you, the actual answer to my question is say, white people. Said, white people aren't the ones <laughs> defending the concept of the traditional family. That's going to uh, yeah, come white more from Hispanic the people. Ones defending that's going to come from. White that's going to come from Hispanic people, black people, and Asian people. Those are going to be the people. Those are going to be the people that defend it. So yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So oh, base, right. based, uh, based it, black culture, funny, Asian culture, and Hispanic culture, that. base culture, it's those trad con cultures. That, but <laughs> here I'd like to, I'd like to present an, uh, an infograph.
from the African American History Museum at the uh-huh. Smithsonian, where they they talk about examples of white culture in the United States, which are actually it's it's racist to say that this applies to all people and that these expectations can be applied to all people when they're really just examples of white culture. And on here is uh, the family structure, the nuclear family, mother, father, two to three children is the ideal social unit. A husband is the breadwinner and head of the household. Wife is the homemaker, subordinate to the husband, mm-hmm. and that children should have their own rooms and be independent. All of those ideas, according to the African American History Museum at the Smithsonian, are examples of white culture. Wow! So if we were to go so into any college, if we were to go, to if we were to go into any uh, college classroom, who are we going to see more of for women? Are we going to see more white women, or are we going to see like well, women of color? What white, do you think is more likely? Are the majority in the United States still? Of course, we'll see more white women than okay, any so other group. So this this concept of like the traditional family structure, I know the his, the um, that that sign you're talking about, and it's cringe as fuck. I agree with it. Um, it's not like. But, but I don't think it's indicative of the average belief. Like, this is something that, I mean, it's not even worth talking about this with you, but sure, this is something sure, that, like, so the no, Democratic Party has had to contend with this over the prior elections, culture. that the average black Democrat is far more conservative socially than the average white Democrat. It's something that, like, the Democratic Party itself has had to contend with. So the idea that you're sitting here arguing that, like, black people are in favor of the destruction of the nuclear family or whatever is just, it's, it's just not true. But it's funny that you bring it up. Yeah, sure. So you did. So Destiny disagrees with African Americans on African American and white culture and the differences. Got it. Um. Um. All right. So from Low End Theory, thanks for the super chat. Brittany, say this. May I lost. Okay. Um. <laughs> let's see here. Uh. From uh, Gecko. I told them they could do it. Yeah, of course. Um, why is Mia worried about maintaining white culture when America is trending to more interracial dating and different cultures blending every year? Why? Why am I worried? Why am I like opposing all of the things which you're saying are happening? Like, I, I don't understand how how the question is a, a rejection of. I, I'm focused on opposing. Uh, the the cultural change and blending which you're talking about exactly i'm i'm advocating for a different value set and and, and specifically uh, a huge amount of the the values which are under attack and the institutions which are under attack in this country being labeled racist so, i mean again according to the britannica definition critical race theory says all of the laws and institutions in america are racist i don't think that's the case and actually i think we built a pretty good system for doing things here and i think it's worth protecting we're not you know as uh, as someone said it's we're not just born into this like oh here's a nice thing that i found it's like we we have an, an inheritance of, of this civilization, which it's now our turn to carry the torch, keep the flame alive and protect for future generations, which obviously Destiny doesn't care about because they're all hypothetical. Yeah, so I totally care about future generations. This is why I talk about how it's important that we embrace the more upcoming kind of global culture we have as we do more trade with other countries, as we engage with more like actors and musicians and other people moving from country to country to country. Like there's just the reality is, is that we're more connected to other countries today than we ever have been and ever will be. And that's probably just going to continue to increase as technologies increase, as travel increases, it becomes more affordable. Like you can travel the world today in an airplane for, you know, less than 500 bucks. Like, you know, prior to like 200 years ago or 300 years ago, there, there were like rulers that would never travel as far as you can on like half of a paycheck. Um, the, the idea that we can just turn our eyes away from everything and be like, oh, we need to protect our ancient culture, our ancient history. Like none of these guys that talk about ancient history culture, they don't know anything about the culture they defend. They don't know what the fuck the Roman Senate is. They don't know anything about like classical music. They don't know anything about like what the cultural norms were of the fucking puritanical people that came over on the fucking Mayflower. Like nobody knows the answer to any of these questions. They just like vaguely allude to some ancient culture or history history that they want to protect because they're embarrassed about what they have now. Oftentimes, the same type of people that are making these vague calls to the past are only doing so because they haven't accomplished anything in the present, and they're embarrassed and ashamed about their lack of accomplishments. Instead of actually building something that they can be proud of in their current life, they have to look to the people that came before them to try to latch on to some sort of identity because they have yet to create one for themselves now. Yeah, okay. Well, to just just to respond to Are you going to respond uh, to my response to you? Yeah, we can go back and forth all night. Uh, no, go ahead. You're right. You're right. It's, now let's go to the next question. I'll let you have the last word on all that. 
All right, so from Dustin KG. Destiny, wouldn't you say America is heading to the same place as South Africa? Blacks are killing whites and taking their land. Can you see the link? I, I don't. I think that South Africa has had a pretty unique history in terms of, of, of all the crazy shit that's going on there. The United States has had a very unique history in terms of all the crazy shit that's gone here. Uh, I'm very hesitant to like look at one country and say this one event happened here, this other event happened there. Uh, I, I, I don't draw those types of comparisons. I don't think that they generally hold true. People are trying to say things like this for, for since the dawn of time. You hear, you know, Republicans talk about it all the time um, with like, a, or not Republicans actually, it's people on the internet, right? Like, oh, Rome fell because of interracial dating and immigration and blah 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 like i no i I'm, i don't buy into that okay I, well i have a quick question for you do you think that fascism is inherently tied or leads to genocide because of uh what happened when fascists arose within the, the 20th century um it yeah, i guess it could yeah they're certainly related okay so you can look at another country and say look what happened here when these things started happening this is down the road if we allow this this type of rhetoric to continue you say exactly that about fascism but when we talk about critical race theory in south africa you say well we can't look at different countries and say what's going to happen here right i don't think that right now the conditions exist such that black people are going to rise up and kill white people in the united states if you want to point to those conditions go for it but screaming about some lauren uh, southern yeah, we, documentary we about south africa that's not going to cut it my dude. down cities all across america all the funny thing is that if you actually watch any of those protests groups, right? most of the people burning shit down were fucking white antifa kids but go uh, off yeah king. anybody who saw king. the footage uh -huh. and watched it all happen knows mm -hmm. go so. off king yeah from Jimmy Sanchez, uh, I work at a trash company. A lot of the truck drivers are immigrants, Latin America, Africa, but we have a labor shortage. Why so? Why do we have a labor shortage right now in the U.S.? Thanks for the trash company. Uh, I, 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 mean, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think anybody knows the answer to that right now. That's like the big question that everybody is kind of asking. But that seems like another job that's going to be displaced by AI, right? I mean, it could be. People have been saying I mean, that AI is going. Going to be the first ones to go. What? Is it, aren't truck drivers going to be like the first ones to go? Maybe. I, uh, people going to be. It's going to be one of them. This self-driving cars thing is tricky because it's like there's a lot of legal liability issues right. that the, they have. The programmers have to work out before they can really allow these things on the streets. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, you know we already have self-driving cars to a huge extent. It seems like there's five levels of it and a fully automated self-driving vehicle is level five. We're on like level three or four right now, I think. P I mean, like there have been headlines since like since fucking 2010 about how we're like a year away from in five years there's going to be 10 million self-driving cars on the road by 2020 or you know in in, in 2022 we're gonna have 50 million fucking self-driving cars or blah, blah blah like we've been hearing about this for decades it hasn't happened yet right like we're, we just haven't figured I'll it have. out yet like how many last startups have come and gone that are claiming like we've solved like this is the true ai we've got the general ai blah 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 like it hasn't happened yet not to say that maybe it maybe it will in the future but it hasn't yet do you not think that okay. it, that it's going to happen? I don't know. Like, there's um, there's an interesting paper on on the concept of I think it's called the AI winter. It's called why AI is harder than we think. If you're ever bored, you can read it. Uh, but like this this idea that um, we have like made this linear progression through AI and we're like on the cusp of just breaking into like general AI and we're gonna be there and everything. Like, eh, probably, I mean like maybe, but it doesn't seem to be the case, right? Like I said, like over the past 15 years, we've heard every single year, like next year Uber's gonna have a total fleet of self-driving cars. Google is so close to solving the, the self-driving thing problem. No more uh, truckers, it's all gonna be automated. And it's still not, we're not I mean, there yet. We are seeing self-driving cars that are literally on the roads right now uh, like in very small numbers and in very limited deployment yeah but like it's how already on the roads right now what is it going to be like in 10 to 20 years we don't know that's the thing like so for yeah, instance we don't know we can't guess because anything would be oh my god yeah no right. it's not about we're not talking or, a little timmy can you hold on chill the grown-ups are right? talking okay hold on chill so there's a lot of questions that have to be asked when it comes to like getting self-driving cars so here's like a really big one okay in my opinion it's a really big one are we going to ban all manual driving to make self-driving work because that seems to be like a big question that at some point you're going to have to grapple with like if we start to allow like a cre increasingly more and more automated cars on the road are we going to allow people to manually drive um there's also some like niche questions 
questions about like how do we figure out you know like which moral decisions can cars make while driving um, and then there's still like the cost and the affordability and the reliability of these systems too you have to keep in mind there's a lot of political pressure on these things if two people die because of like an automated accident even though it's way less than the normal amount of accidents that puts a massive amount of pressure on these companies never to make mistakes right every single time somebody dies in like some automated car accident or it used to be we would hear about it so much um, so like I, I don't know it might be the case in five or ten years maybe we start to automate large swaths of our trucking section but maybe not it might still be like 10 years out perpetually over and over and over and over again like it seems to have been you know well, like don't you think that okay so say that you have a job that has 10 people it's going to be one person and i those seem to be more of the low skilled jobs that are happening that this is going to happen to I mean, it, it's, like, it's yeah it's hard to say machines that can do like brain surgery right now it's it's right hard for, they don't that have no, like no, a they absolutely statement, they right? absolutely they have somebody that is going to control it yeah but yeah, they have yes. machines that can do this yeah so there are machines that exist to help with things for sure but i'm not trying to trigger you okay i was trying to trigger my i'm not trying to trigger you okay but like remember okay remember bpf his job is literally like Stop putting together doing that. i know <laughs> chill okay get, get moderately triggered but that guy's job is literally like putting together robots right and he said that he only has a high school education right so it's not like you need to go and get like the four-year degree the master's degree the phd in order to work on anything related to these new technologically uh, inclined jobs that exist you might be somebody that services robots and there might, might be some training you can do that allows you to service these things that you don't have to go to college to get a degree to do it might be the case it might not be but it's really hard to say all i'm saying and, and you can go and look at any economist that talks about this you don't have to appeal to whatever random shit this guy's talking about this has been something for the past 20 years i remember hearing this when i was in college that hey guys in five years ai is going to replace all the jobs it hasn't happened it's not we're even not close to happening it happen, though. we're we not seeing it happen look, at, look in china like they have these uh, machines that are taking all kinds of jobs but even in <laughs> even in the in the u.s before the coronavirus hit our unemployment was at three and a quarter percent it was so it was lower than it should have been like the yet, idea that like yet, so many people were struggling so what before before the coronavirus not with employment yes, people were still struggling like economically even with our low um our low numbers i i mean like if it happens then we'll see but like it just it just hasn't happened yet the idea seems to be um that like we're still able to find more jobs um there's always like more positions that open up we specialize more like yeah like I, okay, they, it's so called if you're ever quick. curious there's something called it's called the lump of labor fallacy basically the idea is that there's some fixed amount of work available in an economy and that once you like solve some work there's not going to be new work that opens up but there's always new jobs and new work that opens up that just seems to be the case Okay, well, if I if I may, it's, uh, I have another completely fake, made-up story about you because I have no history or life experience. I have a couple friends who build the robots, okay? And what they do is they go into car factories and they put wor robots in that completely replace all of the assembly line workers. And they just press the buttons. They're not like programmers. They press the buttons and make it go left, right, up, down. But it, it, it takes a certain uh, level of training, expertise. It's very dangerous, you know, stuff like that. So what they're doing is they have this one robot which can do like 10 guys jobs and all way faster with no workers comp, no, no sleep, rest, anything like that. All it takes is maintaining them. And when these robots break down, you could have the whole factory of robots break down and they'll send two guys in order to service them and fix it. Where do all the, the factory workers go? Are you going to train them to be computer science? Like, Why do you uh, keep using engineers? that same straw man over and over again? I've never said that. I've never claimed we you can said, retrain. You said software engineers. I never said we were retraining those old guys into new jobs. I don't know why. Well, I know why you bring it up. It's because you can't engage with any of my actual Okay, ideas. so the other answer mm -hmm. is you're just going to pay all of those people to live and focus on education for their children. And still, I present to you that so there's no reason for us to bring in mass, low skill, low IQ immigration when that's all going to take place. Okay, let me help but, you like out here, Chief. You know, let me help you out here, Chief. Okay. That, so right now, there are some software companies in the United States that want to bring in foreign workers in order to work some software engineering jobs. These are called H-1B visas, right? They bring them over here so that they can work jobs here, and they're educated in other countries. Now, let's say that we're worried that this H-1B visa is having some sort of uh, negative impact, perhaps on local jobs. You're supposed to show a good faith effort to hire an American before you hire foreign work, but let's say it does, right? Well, all, what you can start to do, if you're worried that companies are, are outsourcing too much to this H-1B process, you can say, okay, if you want to apply for an H-1B visa for a worker, that's fine. You need to pay 5000 a year to do it. So now you have some payment that's going to the government. If people really want those H-1Bs, you can pay for it. And then that money that's paid to the government, that could serve as a cash transfer to another American that may or may not have lost a job. Or in 
our education system. So if you're starting to make all these robots that are replacing workers, maybe there's some temporary like five to 10 year fee. Hey, if you want to automate a job and you want to bring in like this automated cash register at McDonald's, or you want to bring in this automated robot worker at a factory, if you want to do that, that's fine. But for every job you eliminate, there's some like $5,000, $10,000 fee that you have to pay. And then that money is just dumped into the education system. Bill Gates proposed something where you tax the machines that are going to take people's jobs. You can't tax machines. That doesn't, that, how, that's how, just. Why wouldn't you be able to? Because it doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. Like how, how, how could you even begin to imagine what it's like to tax a machine? So like, for instance, so I, well, like, let's say for instance, I've got a room full of filing cabinets and I've got like five secretaries and they are in charge of like fetching information okay, or documents. Think, from me. No, no, but you're being silly now. Like you no, 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 wait, wait, wait. the difference between uh, actual machines that are literally taking people's jobs right now. And uh, somebody said something like, oh, is my dishwasher a machine? Like that's taking jobs. Like, no, come on. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that like, I can replace an entire room full of like workers with a single computer. Computer, right so is that one computer going to be taxed as like five workers is that going to be taxed as five workers forever depends on how many workers are being let off i think yeah but that's the problem then so are you like going to infinitely follow this chain down where one robot is being taxed as doing the labor of like 500 workers or what if you create a new robot that replaces two workers but then let's say later on there's some new tool invented that would allow one worker to do three times the work is that tool going to be taxed like it just doesn't i think, I think you can work with it I think well, some and, people and it's something like a, a va value added tax on products something like that I'm not entirely familiar, um, but what what I want to push back on is this this idea of you you switched everything to to when I talked about the immigrants the problem that they're going to be here and not be able to have jobs and we're going to have to pay for them for their health care for their living as you said when their jobs are replaced uh, your answer to that is like well temporary worker visas where people are building the robots and you can do you know you can pay for it in that way or something but it's like what about those other people can we just stop taking them now. If you want in the future, we can do another debate on automation. If you want to like prepare materials in comp, but like you're just so yeah, ill equipped yeah, to no, have the I, conversation I that like I don't know, one. like yeah. because like I think you need to like engage a little bit more with like what other economists are saying, like are the worries about this because you just you don't really seem to have any idea where the current conversation is at. That might be an interesting conversation for real. I've been uh, you know trying to talk about these issues more of course as like you go to school for computer science and professional music and study ancient roman history and everything like you seem like you have a really hey, busy look, schedule professional music was on uh -huh. the side okay oh of and, course. Uh, professional <laughs> professional <laughs> doesn't mean <laughs> that, that you're an athlete you're you're uh -huh. you know an expert okay it means you got paid i got paid mm -hmm. play the trumpet and that's fact uh -huh. okay so you know and uh -huh. yeah i am triggered <laughs> don't worry we can tell right, he's point. denying my identity okay <laughs> You denied right. your own identity by not being able to answer a single question about your culture, my dude. Mr. Play. Um, can Neo Nate Oh, here we go with the music, too. All right, so can... All these fucking assholes. Okay, can you... Can you name three Beethoven compositions? Uh, bonus, name Destiny may be white, but he's one of the good ones. Nice. All right, we're going to move on. Um intellectual midget i must say mio did pretty well against destiny tonight i can tell by how he resorted to mental gymnastics tactic tactics which is an indication of losing okay um let's see what else we can pull oh fucking a. i just lost all these questions and damn it i hate this stupid program this is a family friendly show by the way everyone <laughs> all right i'm gonna have to go to the, i'm gonna have to open up the other i'll just go to the ones i have written down and i'll get to the other ones after all right so um Again, from Bash the Fash, I'd claim the Cold War has pretty much erased any historical bond that would be necessary for a cohesive common culture to exist between the North and the South, despite shared ethnicity. Well, that's an interesting take. Okay. Could well, be. But... Well, we can move on. Um, let me see. We got this one that I can pull up. A lot of them I just got lost. I have to go to the actual super chat thing all right from tyler durden i worked for a semi-truck manufacturer that is making a fully automated truck that is currently being tested on the road wow cool they've been testing fully automated like trucks and cars for like a decade but thank you okay. um, yeah well, i had i had something to say on that uh before uh, give me just a second on this so it's yeah you're you're denying the, I, i'm i'm don't want to rehash the entire thing about, you know, denying automation or these jobs, but it's like, you know, it, it seems like in the uh, early 1900s when the Wright brothers are building the first plane, 
Destiny would be one of these guys saying, people have been saying that people can figure out how to fly for centuries. People have said my whole life that someone's going to figure out how to fly someday. And that's not going to happen. And I'm telling the guy, you know, who's like uh, running a, a horse and buggy or, you know, transportation company, a shipping line or something, to, you know. For, for passengers overseas and I'm saying look there's going to be this new form of transportation that's that's going to change everything and you know you might want to like change your future and your actions and I'm trying to educate people about it and Destiny says no everybody's always said people could fly or well, figure one, out how to fly one thing that uh, myself and Mio disagree on that I think also could be affecting uh, migration would be climate change, which is going to have a huge mass influx of immigration. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of things that are going to be coming in the future. Should we not be planning for climate change either? We can plan for everything. Like in my ideal world, if people want to immigrate for economic opportunities, that's good. If people want to immigrate to collect rents from the state, that's bad. So like there should probably be systems in place to ensure that like I, I would have to like argue or look at this more because I'm not 100 percent sure. But it seems to me that we should probably discourage like new immigrants from immediately being put on like tons of welfare or something because you don't want people choosing to immigrate to the United States to capture some sort of like economic welfare or, or not economic welfare. I'm sorry. Some like government welfare. You want people moving because they think they can work in a given area so as long as people are making those choices i think that's fine and he says that but yet still it's uh when when people are immigrating here that we know their jobs are going to be automated within our lifetimes um that they can just like you know derive the the same economic benefit of, of ubi or whatever his plan is for truckers as all of the native born americans he doesn't have a problem with that right uh, there's there's just no answer you're, like you're not even wrong like that's how off you are in this conversation all right. Right. Um, okay. Got it. All right. So from Ryan B, the percentage of married couple households that are interracial grew across the United States from 7.4 to 10.2 from 2000 to 2012 to 2016. It's getting bad. The what was the first stat? The percentage of married of married couples. Uh, of married couple households that are interracial grew across the United States from 7.4% to 10.2%. Oh, that's based. Hell yeah. Interracial relationships. How awesome. Now we don't have to worry about a horrible future for little Timmy because it'll just be <laughs> little Timmy, the mixed race student, and everybody will be mixed race and no one will really care. Yeah, as long as white people just, uh, you know, they don't look as white, maybe they won't be under attack by all these other people if they just, you know, completely. You think you might be projecting your like up. little racial hatred there a little bit, my dude? Oh, you, you think so, man? You think it has nothing to do with like what my black friend is telling me about, you know, Tenryo, about how blacks feel about whites in the United States right now, which echoes all of the institutions, all the media, the government, the critical race theory stuff I've been talking about. Well, You're the one. All in down the prepared man. speech again. Nice. Good job, Rubio. Keep going. I've got so many of those. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing. I'm a, I'm when I get together with my black and Hispanic friends, all we do is we just sit around eating uh, apple pie, talking about our magical soil, actually. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. right, so Yo, Tenryo, you ever want to get around, eat apple pie, talk about magical soil? <laughs> okay. Down king. So from the Justice 35, seriously, Mio is not equipped to have this conversation. Brittany had a better five-minute combo. Destiny versus Brittany needs to happen. All right, so on totally agree, honestly. Mm -hmm. Destiny versus Britney was better. Mm -hmm. So from Andre Espinazzo, Mio, if they start kicking low IQ people out of the USA, what will be your <laughs> what will be your last words to your family when they ship you out in the first batch? Okay, that's not. Oh good. man, <laughs> oh that's horrible. Who's getting yeah, shipped out? Me or IQ Mio? Post. I'm not gonna IQ post oh. right now, but I'm uh, I'm not worried about it. Okay. All right. So from Chimpo. Wait, I'm actually so curious. What do you? I'm. What would you guesstimate your own IQ to be? I'm just. I don't have to guesstimate. I was actually tested as a kid in a psychology office. Uh -huh. Went to a gifted school, and my IQ is uh, above 145. I'll put it that way. Fascinating. Okay. Um, and I'd also like to uh, point out to the people that have been. Uh, liking to throw bpf bpf got crushed by destiny you guys so settle the fuck down Mio got crushed worse though to be fair B uh -huh, Mio's been doing this right. for like two months <laughs> like, uh, yeah sure that so that maybe that's why he got crushed worse i'm just saying he got crushed worse okay anyways so um all right so from ryan b oh wait no we already did that one all right so from artisan 
How does Mio rationalize that Zimbabwe has eight to ten top UNIs in Africa? Okay, I mean the the well, <laughs> actually, actually, it's funny because uh, you know it actually makes perfect sense. Wait, for what, me what that, was the question? Uh, Rhodesia's. Well, what's left over of Rhodesia is still one of the best countries in all of Africa, as it was. And uh, it's not even as good as it used to be. But now that it's it's uh, all the white people were driven out, that they changed the name and everything, that they still, still have the best education system in, in all of Africa. So not surprising that it wasn't a, a never colonized country like Wakanda or whatever that has the best education systems in all of Africa. Um, from Hunter from Hunter Thompson. Oh wait, no, wait, wait. from Chimpo. Question for Mia: What's your take on single-use styrofoam cups? Single-use styrofoam cups. Uh, I'd have to go with cringe because the uh, what styrofoam is plastic, right? All the all the plastics got to go, man. It's a problem. I don't think so. Is styrofoam plastic? I don't think it's plastic. I think it's a form of plastic. You look on the bottom. There's a little plastic triangle, right? I don't know if I'm remembering correct. Right. No. Destiny, do you know? Polystyrene. Yeah, it's expanded polystyrene what, foam. What is polystyrene? What does that mean? It's a plastic. Okay. Um, Nailed all right. it. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> all right, so from Hunter Thompson. Mio, just wondering if you know Plato as well as you do the trumpet. According to Plato, what are the three parts of the soul? Oh, man, I used to know this one, too. I used to know where he disagreed with Aristotle on it, what each of them thought. Of. I think Aristotle thought there were actually four. Um, then let's see. There's And there's the three different ways to temper them. There's appetite, right? There's um, – hold on. Are we doing this again? <laughs> yeah, okay. I, yeah, I don't remember all three of them, okay? I lose the Plato quiz, too. But, yeah, I did learn this. I used to know it. Uh, I've read not the whole Republic, but parts of it. I've um, been yeah. trying to get it. Honestly, <laughs> it's, it's it's. I really do like. I think Plato's work is his philosophy, especially metaphysically, is uh like, it's it's one of the best ever put forth. <laughs> Just curious, mind. what what is metaphysics? It's the study of what's real. Really. Yes. What uh? From... Wait, can you tell me about like Plato's forms? I'm just so I just I don't get to talk to people over 145 IQ sometimes. Are you doing uh, the yeah? Music so and destiny. Well, I'm just it's Look, th so like the the meta conversation here. I'm just sorry. It's like, so this guy is like forms, he's actually man. a compulsive liar, and he cites so much work that he has no familiarity with, right? So like he yeah, references I, things I, like I the Roman Senate, Plato's even though he doesn't know anything. Forms. He talks about how the U.S. Constitution okay, is based oh, on all these he things. Doesn't he doesn't know, know what the Magna Carta is, which was like one of the biggest foundations for like multiple state constitutions and the U.S. Constitution. He tried to lie about having like a background in music when he doesn't know anything about that. He's talking about like Plato and Aristotle. He doesn't even really he can't. You know, how long ago was the music thing in? No, no, no. It's not. Ju it's not just the music. It's that he's literally, he's ago, literally okay. like a compulsive liar. That's why it's just it's so interesting oh, yeah, to me that like, he's... but he'll he'll like dance from like one thing to another hey, thing. There's like... the title for your video, man. He's literally a compulsive liar. <laughs> I know. I think that's really interesting. And then and now you're saying that like you went to gifted school. Like, what did you even go to school for? Uh, yeah, I went to like one of the huh, one of the top five uh, public schools in the country one of the top five okay what's the difference between like an integral and a derivative an integral and a derivative man i forgot all of that stuff i'm not like okay like what's one area that you know what's an like integral is the opposite of a derivative that's how it works right okay what what is like one yes, area yes one no one measures the instantaneous rate of change the other measures the area under the curve okay what is like one okay, but area you can use them to reverse and get stop, the results stop. for each yeah, other you, yeah yeah sure yeah. you're kind of right okay, okay. so what what yeah, is it's... so what I'm, i want to know what is like one area that you think you know a lot of information about you're in computer science so i asked a math question can you get like what's one area that you think you know something about because you said you're 145 plus iq super educated I know, I know a lot about a lot of things i don't know like um, one area do you know any coding can i ask you a programming question like what is a function uh, yeah, I know what functions are. Can I? I okay, I, what about this? Like, if I said, know, what is it? Can, you, can C, you tell me? Like, I, I, I can, know you, can C, you tell me? I know Python. I know a JavaScript to some extent. Java a little bit less. Okay, know, here, so uh, here's like a broad question. What does it mean when a language, when a computer language is considered Turing complete? When it's I don't remember. You're in comp sci. You don't know this. 
Like, dude, to, no, no, you are you are a compulsive liar. Happen. No, no, you don't understand. You are literally these All are right, man, these are basic foundational you questions. You are actually a compulsive liar. <laughs> your entire background is fabricated. In fact, it's I'm pretty funny, sure man. that you don't even have your GED. I don't think you've even graduated from you know high what? school, I my dude. Mio is not like, even white. I I, no, no, I, I'm actually white. I'm super serious. Like you don't you don't have you don't know, and it's it's funny because you literally say that you were 145 plus IQ, and you can't answer any of these incredibly like. I'm pretty sure that kids well, learn what Turing completeness is when they want to go into CSM high school. And blues scales no, and you don't know anything. And like Turing literally. complete languages. I, I, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I did learn that. I took a test on it once. Okay, I let's like, remember, well, no, no. Man. Okay, so let's you know, what about, okay, here's life, a question. Bro. What do you think, what does like assembly mean? Assembly, like assembly code? Yeah, what does that like mean? Like the zeros and ones? <laughs> That's binary. You don't have any idea what any of this is. You said you're in comp sci? I'm done. Go to the next question. Um, like, you're a fraud. Oh. You actually have no idea. You're a compulsive liar, yeah, and go, you're a fraud. Go ahead, man. Go Jesus. ahead. I don't write in 145 assembly, IQ. But, you don't uh, write in anything. Record, you don't have any idea record. about any of this shit. All right, man. It's really funny. This is an epic rant of yours. But the fact is that this is my history. This is my past. Yeah, I'm a programmer. Yeah, I could pull up code You're not a programmer, my dude. Yeah, you're, I why am, you actually. Uh, right now, actually, it's uh, one of my side projects uh -huh. is I'm writing a trading AI in uh, MQL4 to work with MetaTrader <laughs> in order in, in no. order to uh, Dude, build a trade. Everybody account. here yeah. that knows anything about comp sire programming knows that you're lying. How could you be working uh, no, on advanced actually, concepts that's, like that's, this and not know what Turing and not know what Turing completeness is? You are absolutely a fucking fraud. Oh, you probably man, you have a git. The terminology. You probably it's you not a terminology, the terminology. It's concepts, Jesse, my dude. So These are basic, out. fundamental, oh, man, foundational concepts in comp sci. You know what you're talking about. You're blue scale, so you can't talk. Talk about Plato, which, by the way, yeah, I, I did study. I know about the world of forms, man. Okay. I did take philosophy gotcha. 101, okay? Wait, like, you know yes, about the world? Can you talk, talk, talk to me about Plato's forms? Explain Plato's forms. What does that mean? So the, the Plato's forms, essentially, like, the idea that there is a, a another, a realer world than this one, where the, the ideas uh, in their true essence exist. And he's he talked about, like, Okay, here's an example. Like every horse in the world, like if if you see a horse with three legs instead of four, is that a horse? Yeah, well, yeah, but you would say generally that, you know, the ideal horse has four legs, right? So, you know, maybe you see another horse and it has a chip on its shoulder and it's like, is that a, a characteristic of a horse? Well, no. So maybe the realest, most perfect horse wouldn't have that. And it's the idea that every horse that exists in the world today is like a, a shadow imitation of the real horse horseness or whatever which exists in the world of forms mm -hmm. and he he talked about the world of form. one one way he described it was his allegory of the cave that's how you couldn't know that it's real with using all of your logic and empiricism and evidence and all of the, everything around you your surroundings you still want to be able to understand it you have to use a uh, rationality in order to get there over empiricism and that's that's what the the world of forms and, and Plato's nice. cave is about. Good job. Do you um uh, cool. you you said you're working on a project right now? Working on a project right you now. Have, uh, do you, do, like you, do you work in uh yeah? Do you work in Git? I'm gonna move on. To no, I don't actually, man. I so I used GitHub for like a, a while, and in uh -huh. Git I never used perversion control at all. But uh, like I know it's useful. I know I should be. I have bad coding practice when it comes to like saving and stuff like that, and it does okay. cause me trouble. So. All right, just okay, right, keep going. On. All right, so from I did use GitHub. I have a GitHub, okay? I have like No, you're you know, you're I, a I compulsive liar, my dude. It's just you've been exposed at 4K. Like oh, it's yeah, fucking right. hilarious. Like comp sci uh -huh. guy doesn't know what assembly yeah, is, doesn't know what a Turing complete entire, language is, like doesn't know what fucking binary oh, he doesn't is. Know the term. Like, he doesn't, doesn't know this term, this specific term, so he must be lying about everything that he completely like to trounce you on tonight. You still didn't give me an answer for any of my questions, dude, and I'm not quizzing you on terms. It's not about My a questions are more important and you avoided them way more often. It has Give nothing me an to do with anything I asked you tonight. It man. has nothing to do with quizzing you on like words. It's just concepts. Oh uh, yeah, it does actually. You know what does Turing complete mean? Like, yeah, right, man. I can write a I can write a function. I can write fucking I'm writing bots for fucking the Brunescape right now, okay? Like I'm the, I I'm have, pretty sure uh, if you were doing if you image recognition, I could by be the way. I could so, be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that any comp sci person in the world world 
could, I, I, and I've never taken comp sci, so I might not even know this. I get my shit for programming humor, so maybe I don't know shit. But my guess is that every comp sci person, <laughs> probably on That's day fun. one, learns like That's what is fun. a what is a Turing complete language. Programmer like it's probably is like, don't know what they're talking programming, about. Programming? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Programming and comp sci are not the same thing. Okay, I'm not talking about programming. I'm talking about comp sci. You said you were doing computer science. Yeah, no, I am doing computer science, and I have already, I took, like, two years ago, I, I took a quiz in, like, introductory programming on what, what a, a, a Turing complete language is. I remember that that was on a test, and uh, I don't even know if I got that answer right or wrong because I didn't really study, okay? But I'm still making my way through all the classes, and making my way through everything, and I, it turns out that you don't need to ever have to answer the, the question, what is a Turing complete language in your day-to-day -day use of computers when you're programming even? That's not necessary information, and my brain has discarded it. The idea, it, it's hilarious that you're like, you know, you, uh, you forgot something, some of the terminology from school, which I never went to school for, but I think it's super important, even though I don't know what I'm talking about. It's not so about, it's not about, yeah, so just to be clear, I'm right. talking more to the audience than to you, because I know you're a compulsive liar. I figured you out, right? Uh -huh. So the, the, the reason why I'm asking this question yeah, is because you presented yourself, liar. you're presenting yourself as an exceptional person. 145 IQ plus. How many standard deviations off the norm is that? Do you know how many standard uh, yeah, deviations? Yeah, no, it's... It's pretty wild, man. It's, so it's crazy. Somebody it's, that has honestly, this level me, of intelligence, it's, it's funny when I think this about level all of the intelligence, stuff that I've done, and you haven't life, done, you, like, you can't yeah, point to like a single concept that you remember. Too. You can't point to anything that's related to this industry that you can talk about. You don't know what the fuck like anything. Is. So it's just uh, no, it's crazy I, to me I that you can have such a yeah, high IQ, but I you don't know like any of this shit. Yeah, yeah, I do know. I told you listed off programming languages that I know. I. Like I can do web development to some extent, not the front end stuff because it's like, you know, that's what stuff looks like. But I was always better with the back end stuff. I, I've worked with servers. What I know do you mean like back end stuff? stuff? Like, can I've you explain to me, can you explain to me like what is an array? An array is a list of things. Okay, good job. All right. I got one. Everybody, you, got, you hit one of the questions. Good job. You got one of them. Vindicated. Neo is a compulsive liar and a fraud about everything except arrays. Somehow he just knew that one. <laughs> okay. All right. Does it make so, you feel dumb that everything that you just said on your epic destiny rant was totally false now? I think that anybody that's listed to this conversation knows that you probably haven't done anything. I, I don't even think you play video games. You can't even claim at least that you're like a mythic raider in WoW or some shit. Like... Oh, man, I'm really missing out on that achievement in video games. Well, no, I'm just because yeah. you have nothing else. Like, you don't program. Apparently, you don't work. Um, you probably yeah, so haven't I, graduated I, school. I, I don't do know if you're program, going to college and yet. And I've like, worked in the, work out, in the workforce for like 10 years, okay? I've worked in a factory. I've uh -huh. worked at ski resorts. I've worked at... Like, Why would you, you work know, in a in, factory for 10 years if you're 145 no, IQ plus? No, I worked in a factory plus. for like a year and a half. Okay? Why are you doing all these menial jobs at 145 plus IQ? Yeah, so f funny story. You went to a gifted uh, school mom, and everything. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's that's uh, it's funny story. So first of all, I didn't know that my IQ was that high until uh, just like three years ago or something. But like you said that. you you said my you went to get. Me, wait, wait. You said you tested yes, early yes, as a kid and went to get to school. My mom told me that my IQ was just like right above the limit in order to get into the gifted school, which was one thirty-two, and it's roughly around my brother's IQ. And she told me that she knew that if I if she told me what it really was. That I would rub it in my brother's face the even, whole time, and I totally whoa, whoa, whoa. did. Even 132 <laughs> IQ know. is still really high, my dude. Yeah, it is really high. So Thanks. what do you mean you it wasn't that high? Have you gotten your IQ tested, What? Have you gotten your IQ tested? Fuck no. That, the only people that do that are people that, one, have never gotten it tested, and then two, want a dick wave online. If you have an IQ, you know it because you probably yeah, no, have accomplishments to show for it. People, you don't get high IQ and then go on their shows IQ and brag in order about. to get into a gifted school in sixth grade, right? I, I, I was in all gifted programs throughout my entire school career. I've never uh, heard. Yeah, now, no, I'm talking about I could be school, wrong, but, but I've never IQ I've never heard of them giving into. IQ. They might do it in some places, but for we, we had to like test in classes and shit. Like if we wanted to be in the AP classes or the honors classes or whatever, we usually had to like take tests to get there. Like to know that yeah, you knew the people material. People couldn't get into my school if their IQ wasn't above 132. That's just a fact. Okay. How okay? old are you again? And so like, so like, it's okay. Wait, I thought I'm, you I'm said you were like, 30. I thought you said you were like 19 or 20. How old are you? No, I'm almost 30, man. Okay, so you've been working odd jobs for 10 years. Or even though maybe you got, I'm compulsively lying about even that you too. Got, even though you got 145 plus IQ. So you said this public school was a gifted school that needed an IQ test to get in? Yes. Okay, I, you, you just, you're a compulsive liar, but all right.
Okay, well, those exist in the United States. I'm not mm -hmm. going to dox my, my middle school, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's right, that's just what it is. Let me move on. From the John, for both, has automation had a net positive or negative impact on average GDP and CPI historically given the end of the Malthusian, did I say that right, stagnation? I don't know what that is. How many? What? Say that again. Can you <laughs> just read it? Oh, wait. Has automation had a net positive and net negative on average GDP and CPI historically, given the end of the Malthusian stagnation? I don't know what the fuck Malthusian no, no, no. stagnation is. I don't know what the no, fuck that no, means. No. So you're going to say worldwide stagnation and income per capita during the... This guy's from 1798, during the pre-industrial epoch. I, I have no idea. I don't know how to answer that question. I mean, I, my guess is that, like, automation is always going to tend higher for GDP because it helps us produce more goods and services. Um, I don't know how automation is going to affect, like, the consumer pricing index, but... I, I don't know. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, I would probably I would give a similar answer. I don't. I, it's probably good for the GB, GDP. It's probably good for the consumer price index. But like you know, Mal Malthusian stagnation. I'm I'm not familiar with. I'm a total fraud. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh yeah. shit! I just people are pulling this up over and over again. I thought it was very funny. Um, when I asked him about the thing about forms, he was reading the the Wikipedia entry for it. I didn't even know. What? No, to, no, was that was, I was word. going off the top of my head. You can play it back. You can read whatever the Wikipedia says about it. You know, they probably give a decent explanation too. I can give you my philosophy book. Uh, but okay, you know, it's just funny whatever. that like of all the things and like Comptender, you can't remember any of that, but you remember this one it's thing like, about like the theory that's form. That's like, funny to me. Summarize this uh -huh. complex topic and then pulls up a summary of the topic and mm -hmm. says you said something similar well it's just funny that you couldn't like summarize literally any other fucking thing in the world but that's okay go ahead sorry what was the next question um well zonia thanks for the um big super chat mio i'll challenge you to a computer science debate okay um yeah we can do that from Sylv, Mio, you can shut Destiny up entirely by using Git and pushing something obviously not copied up to it. Do that. Um, some of these are going to be so out of order now that like some of them aren't being pulled up. But okay, from Admiral, ask Mio what class abstraction is, class inheritance. Um, how about ask him the difference between a method or a function. I mean, what is this like quiz? I'm alive. Shit? My internet cut out. Sorry. What are these quiz questions, you guys? Like, Well, the problem is he's, if he's citing himself as an expert, and it's obviously he's a liar. The, like the entertainment I'm part right now. I uh, anything. Dog, it, you said fun. you were 145 like, oh, really IQ. Smart. Name every country ever. Name. Oh, you know about Roman culture? Talk, let's talk about their legal documents, or else you can't talk about Romans at all. Oh, oh you're, you're a computer science major? Well, like hear me let me quiz you on these terms oh you were a jazz band in high school what's a partial and how do you, what's a c7 yeah, like minor kind of blues okay. scale like, bro you don't understand bro you are that you are not i don't the problem is because you're like because discussion. you're making this shit up you just don't realize what you're saying 145 iq <laughs> so 15 iq was one standard deviation at 145 plus iq you were in like a fraction you're like 0.5 uh, yeah, percent or like less 0.2 percent of the population yeah. i've looked at the stats so i don't incredible. understand it, it amazes me. I don't understand how to be so a huge smart. Black bill to me that like most of the people in the world are so like re must be really yeah. really stupid. Maybe the because online Mensa myself, test you like, took. Albert maybe Einstein maybe the online Mensa like test you took wasn't the best indication of your actual IQ then, my dude. Einstein. But well, I mean, it was in a doctor's office. It cost hundreds of dollars. It took hours. To I'm do sure that your mom took you to a doctor's office and spent hundreds of dollars to get you looked at yeah, for something. Yeah, she found out <laughs> I'm a retard and told me that I'm special instead. And then uh, she paid off the private. There the. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you went to a very very special school too. They maybe they told you it was for gifted children. That's cute. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. From gifted. Nor from Normie account, can we get Destiny vs. Culture Thug debate? Sure. Um, from Prout, 1994, 140 plus IQ, and is now arguing pro-race realism while representing themselves with a cartoon girl while thinking marching music is big band jazz. Listen, he just didn't remember it all, guys. You can't expect to quiz somebody that was a professional musician, worked at a ski resort, um, publishes his Bro, own I, uh, AI program, goes yeah, to school right, for man. comp sci, went to a specially gifted like institution for fucking X-Men. You can't expect him to remember all this shit, but he will read you yeah, the Wikipedia yeah, definition of, of Plato's forums that also has the same example of a horse. <laughs> okay. 
That, I'm telling you that the example is in the philosophy books. It's the most uh -huh. commonly used one. It's either a horse uh -huh. or a cup is what most people use. Gotcha. That's just how I learned it. That's how mm -hmm. that's how they're teaching it in schools. It's a no reason. Oh, you went to it's school no for wonder. philosophy too? Is that <laughs> how many different majors did you have? No, man. You have to take humanities. Did you not go to school? I only went to school for three years. Huh? Okay, yeah, you have to take humanities and core classes, and mm -hmm. uh, I just I took philosophy, I took ancient uh, Greek and Roman history, wow. I took ethics, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, I can I can speak on it a little. It doesn't make me an expert, and I think I'm pretty smart. I don't think I'm the smartest guy in the world at all. Not well, even you close. do think that you're and top. Think you think I, you're I top point two percent smartest in the world. You do think you're a fraction of a percent. Well, it's not it's not about what I think. That's just what the mm -hmm. chart says, I guess. Okay. So. <laughs> Um, so from Vintage Red, this is why Mew doesn't have his cam up. He is Googling everything and pretending to know something. Bruh, I, I, I honestly, I don't have the, uh, like, attention capacity to do that. People can tell, like, when I'm reading things that I, like, you know, it's, I can't multitask that well. I'm actually, the, the benefit that I get from not being on camera is that I am, like, most of all of the debates that I've done, just sort of like pacing back and forth instead of sitting down. I don't know how Destiny does that. Maybe it's the coffee in me right now, but. Okay. Um, let's see here. From Artesian. Uh, did I do this one from Art? No, yeah, we did this one. God, these are all over the place. Sorry, guys. Um, okay, let me just go to the ones that I've jotted down because these are all over the place. All right, so from Jason K. As a Christian, please refer me to where Jesus ever discriminated against demographics, and how can you reconcile your racism with Christianity? Okay, well, Jesus actually did di discriminate between demographics. Um, he recognized all the independent nations as they existed and didn't tell everybody all go mix together and there should be no borders, first of all. Second of all, he did say go to the Hebrews first and then go to the Greeks only after they completely didn't they didn't listen and they rejected him. So there was that. And then there's – but what my true answer is that, yeah, we are all considered uh, the same in the eyes of God in that we all have a soul. We all have a chance to make it. You know, it, it does absolutely. Uh, I have a Christian worldview in that sense. When you're talking about people's souls and their worth in, in uh, the spiritual sense. But uh, people are not all the same and interchangeable in, in here where we are. It's just a fact. Wait, does Jesus talk about that again? I'm sorry, that people aren't all the same and interchangeable? Did Jesus say that people aren't all the same and interchangeable? Actually, yes, he did. He talked about how uh, people who there's a... Uh, Specifically, there's the parable of the, what are they called? Talents. Talents was a, a certain amount of money, and that the he, there's a, a slave master who gave three of his slaves a different amounts of of money or talents when he went away, and they did different things with him, and he gave them different results in the end uh, according to how they acted and yeah, what they did. He did he say that those servants were like of different ethnicities? Well, no, but what that, that proves that people are not interchangeable and they're not all the same. Um, it, it is – they are equal in the eyes of God. They're equal in their chance to make it into the kingdom of heaven. But he also says – Jesus says, you know, a hand shouldn't try and be a foot, and a foot shouldn't try and be a heart, and that everyone has their role to play in, in the church and in the world. So yeah, that that to me. I don't says know what this has to do different. with like a hand, ethnic. A hand and a foot are not interchangeable. But saying he's using saying those that as different for people. saying that different individuals are different is not the same as saying different ethnic groups of people are different. I don't know if you understand that or not, but. Oh yeah, it's an, it's just an, an extrapolation, an abstraction of the principle itself. Okay, well these two people are different. Okay, well these groups of people are different. That's not, that's not that. It's funny because one of the few things they test on IQ tests are abstractions, and that is not a valid yeah, abstraction. But okay, my dude. No, no, it absolutely is. It absolutely is not. Okay, that is ahead. absolutely not a valid abstraction. That just because two different people are different, therefore groups of people are different. We could do this like in a prop logic form. That like a set of A containing this versus a set of B containing this must mean that these like it, that doesn't work at all. No, this not, doesn't work in formal logic. It doesn't work like allegorically. It doesn't work like metaphorically. It doesn't work in any. There, there's no it's way. These people, this, these two people are different. Therefore, all groups are going to be different. It's just that these two people are different, and these two groups are different. And it's just the same. It's it's the same principle in in that they they are not made the same. 
Okay, yeah, uh, you're you're not here yeah, for this conversation. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I'm well, sorry. Well, well, I guess, you're just uh, I not here for this conversation, but that's okay. You're a fraud. You gave a prepared statement. You're you're just you know memorizing uh -huh. things and reading from Wikipedia. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, man, like you you didn't argue the points at all tonight. You uh -huh. you had no answer for the. Uh, questions I presented to you. No, uh, none at all. And uh, you're right. Just I got terms. owned on the little thing. I could not help. The future I this, could not country. help that little boy that doesn't exist yet that lives in 2040. I'm sorry. Yeah, does exist. I'll in try many to get there. Okay? In the world today, I'll as I've said there. half a dozen times. Uh -huh. But I imagine a you know low IQ, you know half uh, uh -huh. half Cuban immigrant guy. You know uh -huh. it's uh, obviously you know having trouble understanding these. Well, things. I wish Using I could keep up with thinking about the the mighty IQ from from you who's. Accomplished so much in the 30 years of his 145 IQ life. What a gift. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, more than you, I think. You really think so? Would you put money on that? So, all right, so from so, I pay very good money to watch them both take IQ tests live on stream side by side. Also, give me your address. I'll send you a camera. Hey, doc, sir. Um, okay. Might be fun. <laughs> Um, all right, a left Roth or whatever. Uh, does Mio acknowledge that Alden? Come on. Uh, yeah, okay. First of all, I heard somebody explain this Alden thing. Second of all, it's like, no, I, I say I don't know about shit all the time when I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm not going to pretend I know shit that I don't. You can you catch me with some other term. Make something else up and try and catch me. I'm not going to talk on shit that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right, let me go back to some of these other ones that we have. All right, so from Ryan B, two-thirds of legal immigrants are on the same kind of welfare equals they aren't coming for jobs. They are coming for free money and free housing. And Destiny wants to give them more. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I literally said earlier in this debate, I know you love screaming at straw men. Um, yeah, I literally said earlier in this debate okay. that we probably shouldn't incentivize people to come here to collect rent from the state. So we shouldn't have people coming here just to collect welfare. I don't think that's a good idea. I literally said that verbatim. You can s you go through earlier in the debate. Maybe you were disconnected. Yeah, on the and yet he would point. say that we should pay people whose jobs are being automated and we should take in more people <laughs> whose jobs will be automated. So yeah, you do think we should pay immigrants who aren't here yet more money than they would even receive right now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, but nice yeah. try. Go ahead. So from Tyler, uh, should the U.S. adopt an immigration model similar to that of the other Western countries where we take in immigrants based on demand of traits and, that are needed in our society? Is that for me or? It didn't say who it was for. Uh, I, I like economic immigration. I think it's good. Are you for open borders, Destiny? I don't know what open borders means. I don't think anybody is for open borders in the way the conservative says. I, like, I want, I think people, as many people that want to move should be able to, that want to sort themselves out for economic purposes. Like, that's what I think. Uh, all right, we can move on. From 256 to the guy sweating in his gaming chair, you can't talk about little Timmy, but fear monger about climate change that won't happen for 100 years. Aren't we already having, like, record floods, fires, like, heat waves across the entire fucking northwest of the country like everybody yeah, in washington and up in bc like too, are we are, but... are like what like these are real problems that we're watching the news not like i saw two youtube videos like oh yeah the whole black lives matter thing was all white people too it's like you a can, lot of it right, was yeah, white people, people my dude and 96 percent of those protests but... were peaceful like the vast majority yeah, of them the fact people. is that we are already right now having to deal mm -hmm. with the little timmy question in inner cities yeah. and uh, you're trying to paint it as still just like a made-up story I mean, the ultimate defeater for this is that the little Timmy thing was happening right now. You wouldn't have brought up a hypothetical child in the future. You would have started with right now. The only reason you're starting with right now is because I pointed out to you how absurd it is that you're asking me to solve for a problem that doesn't exist yet. So you had to back it up to now. But Well, we actually had a uh, cut sleeve was on here and we talked about that. He said he was in a pretty much all black high school and there was like one white person or something in there. And I asked him how he was treated. Not good. So, I mean. <laughs> I don't know if it's a... So there's a real little Timmy for you, Destiny, and Destiny still won't care. Wow, like that? I'm sorry. That just sounds tragic. All right, so from Alex Novison. Missing, miss, he doesn't care about what happens to white people in this country, mm -hmm. and that's the point, you know? All right. Um, find you win, Brittany. Question, what is Mio's 23andMe score? What's um, What was 145% on his test? Really okay, uh, so I haven't done the 23 in me, but I think that uh, the both sides, like my both of my <laughs> you parents, don't even have, know what you're. <laughs> no, but no, but my parents have graced my lineage and ancestors, like through the, the names 
back to England like thousand, <laughs> like a thousand years ago, like hundreds of years. Uh-huh. Um, so I know when both of my both sides on both sides of my family, I know when they arrived in America. Mm-hmm. It was the um, the ancient planter society on one side and the Mayflower society on the other. And before that, they were both in England for a really long time. On one side, actually, uh-huh. they went to Ireland for a while because of some conflict, and then returned to England before leaving. So you're I not worried that if your if your parents lied to you about your IQ, minutes. what if they lied to you about your heritage as well? <laughs> okay. You, you Wait, hold on. I'm super curious. When I'm you're really, ever I'm really when a you're black guy, do you ever feel like when you're watching streams, YouTube videos, do you ever feel like the people are talking directly to you, even if it's like not a live stream or something? Yeah, it's like it's it's they're talking directly to me, man. What kind of question is this? I'm just what curious. are you talking about? Or do you ever hear like voices or whatever when you're at home and you think you're alone or anything like that? Oh yeah, it's uh Oh shit, he's talking to one Corey, of them right now. Most Sorry, of, it turns out a lot of people don't have that uh that inner monologue that they they, they just don't have it at all. There is no voice in their head and they mm-hmm. think that uh People, people who talk about it are crazy. They can't visualize things in their mind at all. And, uh, you know, it's, but their folk counts just as much as yours and mine, I guess. So there's a voice in my head, at least. Okay. You know, I mean, we could keep going with the, the personal attacks. Like, you know, that, that you, what, you, you let your girlfriend sleep with other guys and, like, you're, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to get too personal with it. But you like, can get as personal as you want. I don't care. We can talk about not, our relationship or dating history if you want. Not, That's fine. You know, I'm to- not exactly yeah, yeah, listen, a if you want to, if you want to, I, n- I never, I never said I was perfect. Like, it's just the only thing I'm attacking you on are qualifications that you've presented that you seem wholly unable to defend. I never brought up and uh, said yeah, like that so I'm, I'm a I'm paragon of like, like relationship health or that I'm like the best person. I never said that. Hey, to be clear, the only personal attacks I'm making against you are qualifications that you yourself have brought up that I don't think you can stand on. That's the only thing I'm. Oh, you right. Over, okay? right, yeah, mm-hmm. specific terminology questions about different topics. But you say specific terminology. When you're confronted, when you're confronted with the actual issue we're here to debate, which which is directly tied in with little Timmy, and then Brittany gives you an example of I'm not real asking little Timmy you, no. who lives today you, you, in the real yeah, world. Keep, you keep still have nothing train. to say keep about it. It's not train. just hypothetical. You just don't care. Say it. I'm just asking you really broad conceptual questions. Like I'm just kidding. and it's just funny that you cleaned up yeah, so much and, uh, knowledge and so much IQ and then you can't, at all. You have, I, I can't talk about it. A little Timmy that doesn't exist yet. Yeah, the little. How about the little Timmy that does exist, which Brittany just described to you? What do you have to say about it, man? I nothing. I, I, nothing. I ask me in 2040, yeah, I guess. Nothing. Like that's right. Some people get bullied in school. Do you think that's a new thing? Like yeah, it happens. Yeah, it sucks, so, and so we shouldn't allow that to happen. Here. But like I your like idea to, that like, like oh my god, I know this one guy and he got bullied it. in school, so we're gonna make it so that every fucking truck driver that's white in the United yeah. States never loses his job to automation, and we're gonna close the yeah, fucking that's, borders, that's, and we're gonna really maintain our fucking culture, and we're gonna ban black people from immigrating to the country. Like you yourself even said in the course of oh, and you want to stop women from going to school. Like you have no solutions to any of these problems. All you have are pie in the sky things. You yeah, want to get mad and scream about so you can rile up a whole bunch of other like, people oh, that don't have I anything positive it. for them going in life, and then you're going to sit here and get mad about it, and you're going to try to grow fan base of it. But That's the it. That's fine. That on the Plenty issue that we're actually here to debate, when you're confronted with a real world example, when you're confronted with why it's happening, how there's historical precedent in other countries, and there are parallels all over the place, and this is real, it's already happening right now, and if you're given an example, you don't care, and you have nothing to say on it. And instead, you just like to quiz me about musical terms or like computer science terms or some something like you want to talk about my my background or whatever. When in reality, you have brought nothing of value to this discussion at all whatsoever. We're, you're except not just denying yeah. that the problem, which everyone who's listening mm-hmm. to this conversation knows is real, mm-hmm. exists at all. You're, you're not equipped to have any part of this conversation. That's the problem. There, like I oh, said well, earlier, there answer. are interesting Once conversations again, to have to here. Okay. Attack, ask some weird question as, you know, uh, trivia uh-huh. contest. That's all you're going to do for the yeah. rest of this I'm conversation. I'm ad homming at the end now you because you've no demonstrated answer. that you weren't able to engage at any point with the earlier conversation. Every uh, time yeah, I ask you a question, you start rattling off about like fucking apple pie and shit, my dude. I'm sorry. Like your mental is destroyed right now. You need to recover. Take a deep breath. Go take a puff off your vape. Says, go ask your mom he, to throw some th- some chicken nuggies in the in the, the fucking oven. Go like whatever you need to do. Go jerk it out. Whatever you have to do yeah. to get control of yourself because you're losing control yeah, right now. Man. Of course. Yeah. No. It's a, it is incredibly frustrating mm-hmm. that you don't care about these people who I'm here to represent the best interests of. Right. Oh yeah. Dude. Yeah. That's Real, frustrating. You're super Absolutely. representing them right now, my dude. Definitely. One. You're representing well, 145 I'm representing, IQ I'm, special kids everywhere. Keep it up. Yes. Yeah, so, 
Well, no, no, I'm, I'm speaking. It could be a black guy here representing the future. America and their best interests. It depends on which point you're arguing. And I'm arguing that things are going to be bad for them. And there are ways in which we could change things in order to make it better for them in the future. And I think that that's a very fair thing to advocate for, given how very real and how bad the racial tensions in America are today. And you don't care. You don't oh, okay. care at all. So but what's, what's one thing? Okay, people, cool. Yeah. So cares? what's it's one not thing? Real. Even cool. if it was real, who cares about so it? So what's right? one thing right now that you're arguing that we should do? One thing, because one of the questions that I asked you at the start of this debate that you couldn't answer a single time is, is what part of our culture isn't uh, represented in the legislature? So like, what's what's like one policy thing? What's one thing you think the U.S. should do going forward or whatever that you think would help everybody in this country? Yeah, that's realistic. It's funny how it, it really does speak to your worldview that you think the only thing that could solve things like this are policies. That it's all top down. We need to make the government do something rather than just inform people and let the, the people that let things start playing out differently gotcha. in the world in the workplace in in mm -hmm. the school and education systems oh, when the okay. teachers stop teaching this there stuff if people were so made we, aware we have, so we have then nothing. maybe All things right. wouldn't be so bad yeah, okay. not now. Oh, yeah, you've got nothing. But it's like, okay, man, you can say that all you want, but I'm giving you real solutions. Informing people is a big solution. It's a big part yeah. of it. What okay. do you guys say about what gay, gay and trans people? You're like, we just need to educate more people. We need to change the culture. But when I no, say that's not what I say about gay and trans people. What? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't project your lack of knowledge or prescription to me. I've got plenty of things to say about the stuff I talk about. When we talk about gay or trans people, we can talk about extending access to uh, medical procedures for these types of people. We can talk about rolling back some of the on-the-books discrimination that exists against some of these people. We can talk about rolling trans into protected classes like sexuality is. Um, we can talk about expanding the uh, the federal definition of marriage to include like uh, gay people on tax forms and stuff like that. Oh, I think that's mostly okay, happening. Good. Like, I'm there's glad plenty that you of have stuff. so many legal policy proposals yeah, I get, for yeah, gay but and that's, trans that's because I... That's because However, I care about these things, to, and that's because if I want to change to some of these things, I'll give you actual ideas about for these it. Things and informing people mm -hmm. who are misinformed mm -hmm. is a huge part of the solution, right? Okay. No, right? It's, it's no. When you don't have any, yeah, when no, you don't have any answers, it's not, probably best that you shut the fuck up and let other people. At yeah. the very least, let Fuentes lead the charge because at least he's got shit that he says about how he would want to change the country. Oh, but yeah, okay. Well, you know what? I'll let I'll let Nick Fuentes lead the charge on in politics and all of those things. And, uh, you know, it still doesn't mean nobody's allowed to talk about cultural issues, mm -hmm. right? But you don't even know what the fuck. Yeah, you don't know what you're, you're right, talking you're about, right. though. You don't know anything about what the cultural issues are. You don't know. On, on policy issues, uh -huh. way, big, way better than me on how government works. Mm -hmm. I didn't, okay. I didn't uh, go into to college for, for politics or international relations mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just took a class, okay? Mm -hmm. So yeah, when it comes to policy proposals, I'm not your guy, but I'll tell you what, there are guys out there, and it's not just Nick Fuentes, okay? Vince James is a great example of a guy who knows all the facts, all the statistics, mm -hmm. and he does understand how the government works and in which, which ways we could manipulate the system in order to alleviate these problems more. I am simply here to let people know that these issues are taking place. This stuff is happening, and it's going to be bad, and more people should start listening to Nick Fuentes and, and, and Vince James, um, and not not with me as a representative for them, but just because, you're, as you said, they are way better than me on these issues. It doesn't mean the things that I'm talking about do not exist. Okay. All right, so from the Django Geek. Uh, Destiny, do you think uh, historical context has any impact on the tensions between how different groups of people interact with each other? Uh, yeah, it just depends like what dimension we're talking about. Um, so like, for instance, if we're talking about like economic realities, then historical, like because there's so much intergenerational wealth and because those types of things can be passed down from person to person. So like if you've got a college degree, your kid is more likely to have a college degree. If you've got two parents in the household, your kid is more likely to grow up and, uh, you know, not be a criminal and shit like that. Um, I, I think that historically we can look at a lot of policies that lead people to like be in families that are the way they are, of course. From the dolphin, should we send little Timmy and all the other immigrant Europeans back to Europe so that Native Americans can preserve their culture? Oh, well, that's cute. Yeah, uh, because there was totally an America before the Europeans got here, right? Not just people like skinning each other alive or whatever. Um, I'm pretty sure, with the, to be clear, the culture that existed here wasn't just skinning people alive. And also, the people that came over here fucking, like, burned witches at the stake, okay? Everybody had their problems. I think that there was a level of technological sophistication that existed on the European side, of course. But to summarize all of, like, native history, um, especially when you go further south, um, past just, like, North America, there was a lot of civilization and culture down there. Um, the idea that you can just hand wave all those people skinning people is pretty fucking stupid, but... 
All right, so from little, um, what is little? It's little Timmy, not little Tommy IQ. All right, so from- Little Timmy's IQ is 100. It's 15 points higher than uh, blacks on average and what, 13 points higher than Hispanics on average. And, uh, you know, they're still going to hold that against him. And they'll probably say he's a total fraud because, you know, these, these Cuban immigrants and their descendants, they're, they're not real kind to people like Timmy. You know, they, they, they hate the idea that he's so smart. And so they, they'll just, you know, yell as much as they can about it. Okay. Um, all right. So from Neon Noir, Destiny, when the multicultural coalition of Iran, Russia, and China burn your godless nation to the ground, will you move back to Cuba? Uh, no, I'll go live in uh, Sweden with my girlfriend. Fuck that. <laughs> and I don't think, okay, so I'm going to read all the super chats. I don't know if I'll be able to get to um, the other questions because we did get uh, quite a few. This has gone on pretty long. Um, all right, so from Tyler, from you, how is the nuclear family structure part of white culture? How is it a part of white culture? Um, well, you, you could ask the African American History Museum that at the Smithsonian, I guess. Um, they, they could probably give you a much more researched and detailed definition, but I'd, I'd say I think that the new nuclear family structure is descendant from the intergenerational home, which is uh, – that it was a huge part of all, like basically every European culture. Um, so I think it probably is derivative of that. Um, so um, Tyler Durden, uh, he ended up buying a couple people's questions for a super chat when we did close off the questions. So uh, Tyler Durden bought one from for Z. Question for Destiny. If you believe that the gap in income between blacks and whites is because of environment, what policies would actually achieve economic equality? Um, the problem is that like economics is just, that's like a thing that happens at the very end of so many other systems. So for instance, having like a functional household is a really important part of having like a successful child and being able to earn money because like a functional household means that you have, um, at least two parents in the household that are able to like watch and guide the kid. It means that that kid's probably going to do better in school because you've got a family that's invested in his success. Um, Another part of that, though, also goes into things like um, like drug policy. So, for instance, if you get arrested one time, you're probably going to be in and out of the jail system for like five or ten years because that's just how the U.S. prison system works. So, like if you're if you're more likely to lock somebody up, for instance, if they catch like a marijuana charge, then you're hurting like that that family cohesion, that that family structure that's going to fuck that kid's life up. Um, making good investments in education is important. Um, oftentimes, poor people have nothing more to do but like fuck and do crime because when you're poor, there's like not much else to do. But if you've got like healthy schools and have access to like a lot of like, like um, educational programs or a lot of, um, you know, like after school programs and shit. It gives children more to do, more ways to be plugged into their schools and communities. So like that helps. Um, uh, I mean, you can talk about like funding for like different things in neighborhoods, like having parks and like public pools and shit. About, like all this, it's like, it's a huge thing that like you have to come at from a lot of angles when you're talking about like a person's like economic destiny, because like your ability to work and earn money at a certain job is going to be downstream from so many other issues that have to be fixed. But it's not always as simple as like, oh, we just need to throw more money at the schools or just stop arresting people at it, right? Like all of it kind of like plays together. Okay. From Hydra. What place would anyone like to immigrate to that is predominantly black? How about it, Destiny? I, I don't really want to immigrate anywhere. I haven't looked around to shop for places, so I don't know. Uh-huh. That's a good non-answer. He said anybody. I, I, I don't know. I'm not looking What's to leave my country. What's a desirable country to move to if that's uh, pre predominantly black? I don't know any desirable country that I would want to move to. I don't know anything about. I haven't looked at the other countries around uh, the world. I don't know their tax policies. Yeah, there's another non, another non-answer. No, you got that. me, my dude. Thank you so much, Mister. He didn't know a single thing about any of the white I, culture I he claims to, to, to care so country. much about. I wouldn't want to move to any country at all. Yeah. Okay, man. Okay. Um, from Vintage Red for Destiny and Mio. Why is it such a problem for whites to become a minority? Why does it matter? Yeah, uh, it matters specifically um, in, the, in the context of this conversation because as white people become a minority to other ethnic groups, which are especially being taught like racial revenge theories against them, that uh, we're going to turn out just like South Africa and Rhodesia did. And I think that's a bad thing for white people especially. And it's a bad thing for the world at large because – the people who built this civilization, if we kept it strong, 
we would be more equipped and able to help out the rest of the world. And, uh, you know, but, you know, we can never really get to compassionate things like that because Destiny wants you to think I'm like some genocidal, crazy, white supremacist neo-Nazi or something. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's that I'm just looking for what's the best way to preserve this nation, to preserve the, the um, civilization which we've inherited. And, and it's like that's, that is the best way. What I'm saying is the best way, and it's, uh, it would make the rest of the world better, too. But, you know, Destiny doesn't care. He doesn't want to talk about any of it. If Little Timmy's hypothetical, doesn't want to talk about it. If it's real and you give a real example, he doesn't care. He'll just, you know, mockingly dismiss it because he has no good answers for what we all know is going to happen now. Notice that he didn't say it's not going to happen. He has no way in order to, to put forth that, that argument. But uh, he just argues that he doesn't care. Maybe it won't happen. Maybe it's not going to happen as much in the future, even though it's already happening today. He has no answer whatsoever besides you're retarded and you're a fraud. Um, yeah, to be clear, that pr what he wants to preserve, he doesn't even know what the answer to that is. He doesn't know what he wants to preserve because he has no idea of it. Okay, keep going. Okay, so from Bash the Fash, why is Mio so invested in painting white people as such huge victims? Uh, no, actually, I don't think that white people are victims, generally speaking, especially in the long arc of history. I think that historically speaking, white people were conquerors, colonizers, settlers, and pioneers. And that uh, white people, I think that uh, there is an ethos underlying all of that, which had nothing to do with self-victimhood. And so, yeah, I think that uh, I don't like the idea of, of describing me or my people as victims. I'm just simply... Uh, if you see a car in front of you and you want to swerve away from it to keep yourself safe, you're not saying, oh, I'm a victim because this car is coming. You're, you're steering things for a better future for yourself and whoever's in the car with you. So from Vexner, oh, my God, people on the Internet, remember B who remember B who beat up white intellectually challenged kid and Don Lemon defending it on national TV saying kids did a bad thing going on for years. Yeah, he also said it's not a hate crime. And yeah. Destiny doesn't care. I, I don't know this particular thing. If people beat up somebody, that's usually always bad. If they beat him up because he's white, it sounds like a hate crime. Yeah, that's there's bad this too. autistic white kid is mm -hmm. like a mental handicap, and there's like three or four black kids took him into an apartment and started and just like beat the hell out of him, mm -hmm. and, you know, put his face in a toilet or whatever for I like remember hours. That. And uh, yeah, the next day, Don Lemon on the news is saying it's you know some kids did a bad thing, and. Um, yeah, I don't think it's a hate crime at all, even though they specifically were, were, you know, making racial comments towards him the entire time on the video, which they put out. But, uh, you know, you could say that kid's little Timmy, but Destiny wouldn't care about it. I mean, it sounded like, a, I mean, it sounds bad. If they said that, it's probably a hate crime. But I mean, like, you're talking about one thing that happened like five years ago? Like, okay. I mean, it's bad, but I don't know what you want me to say about that. Alright, so from the Jane Jango Geek. Destiny, what should you do as an individual if you feel alienated in society due to the historical context of your material conditions? Stop caring? Uh, is that like a Marxist joke? I, I mean, like, I think that everybody, I think that, like, finding more real life friends is probably the most important thing you can do to break away from, like, the crazy, horrible, toxic shit that exists online. Um, whether you're talking about, like, groiper groups or even if you're in, like, super far left communities, uh, make friends in the real world. I don't know. Buy a dog, get a hobby, go walking, meet people at dog parks, um, you go to a gym, make some friends there. Um, find, I don't know, find anything you can do in real life, like do things with your coworkers to like get more real life engagement is probably going to be healthier for you than the like toxic sludge that is online communities. Okay. From Tenyo, most blacks and minorities don't think they're American. That's the problem. That's the big difference. But I'd be cool to see a source on that or whatever, but I, I don't even know like how that, like, I don't understand what that means, but okay. Do you have a study, Tenryo? Um, from Justin, Destiny, what is happening to white people in Africa? Nelson Mandela, LMAFO, um, you are Stevie Wonder, bro. Thanks. Okay. From the John, can Mio provide any concrete peer-reviewed peer evidence that CRT increases anti-white sentiment? Peer review is an integral, integral part of scientific method. Oh, okay, yeah, but the, the peer review process is biased now these days, and now is exposed, especially in, in uh, 
what do they call race studies, gender studies, a lot of these social sciences. That's what J- what made Jim James Lindsay so uh, you know blow up is that he and a group of his colleagues they wrote a bunch of fa- like fake papers using critical race theory in order to do it, insane things like rewriting Mein Kampf just through the lens of intersectional feminism to see if it would get passed. And one of the things they did is they they put through a paper that's like. Uh, they said that white kids should be taught in chains in classrooms, and you know if they don't like that, if they have a problem with it, you know you as long as you frame it that their problem with that is their white fragility that they wouldn't want that to happen to them. Um, that's they, they're putting these these things in papers. A bunch of them got passed, and it's, it just goes to show that like uh, the peer review process itself is becoming corrupted because all the people who are peer reviewing already subscribe fully to these ideas which destiny is like denying exists because like uh i haven't seen the nike commercial or whatever you're the one that brought the nike commercial up not me all right so from um dark shadow realm hispanics and asians have strong nuclear family though that's not exclusive to whites and again i'm not going to be i'm not going to get to all the other questions i'm just going to read the super chat sorry guys but we just got way too many we went way too over um all right so from from dick goblin question from you (laughs) sorry god (laughs) Okay. All right. So for um, for Mio, if you're worried about a white minority, why do you not have any policy prescriptions that you won't openly advocate for? Why do I not have any policy prescriptions that I would openly advocate for? Um, well, it's you know there there are some policy prescriptions. Um, you know, at the very least, I think raising the birth rates of natural born American citizens, generally speaking, would be a good thing, given that white people are not meeting their replacement rates. And so I think that like child tax credits and, and you know, there are multiple ways to incentivize that, um, that without even directly making it about that. The things that would boost it. Um, it so, so I think that's one solution. I think that stopping immigration is exactly that's the like. The whole reason I gave for wanting to stop immigration, which is a policy proposal, is it not? So, yeah, I I, I do have policy proposals. But largely speaking, um, as I said before, I'm not the policy government guy, okay? I'm the guy who's telling you that these problems are real. I'm demonstrating that they exist and that they are taking place. And I'm I'm showing that it's going to get worse. And, uh, you know, it's like we didn't get to solutions at all because, you know, Destiny – First of all, doesn't want to admit that it's real, and second of all, wouldn't care even if it was. All right, another um, super chat that Tyler bought for somebody else was for from Steve Bannon's cat for Mio. Why do you think that if white if that why do you think that if what people face antagonism in the future, they wouldn't fire back considering the most powerful nation on earth are majority white? Oh, yeah, no, that's that's sure interesting. I, I guess you're talking about a, a sort of like a collective white identity and a reaction to all of this forging, which would which would combat it. And that if white people did forge an identity collectively and stand up against all this, they, they, you know, the other groups probably wouldn't be able to stop them. It's it's sure an interesting idea, I guess. Do you think there's like some group that's preventing that from happening? Maybe. That's a that's a very good question. Hmm. Must be so those maybe high IQ should look people into again, it, huh? Huh? Yeah, Maybe it. must be those especially high IQ people, huh? So we have um we have two that are written down, and then just whatever else comes through. Uh, from Bash the Fash, Mio, many leftists would call Israel an ethno nationalist ap- apartheid. 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 Did I say that wrong? State. Um, if true, do you think the U.S. should follow their lead in regaining cultural homogeneity? Yeah, so it's a, sort of a trick question because when you're talking about regaining cultural homogeneity, that would that would involve like reducing the the populations of other ethnic American groups, which is like, you know, there's there's no moral way to argue that basically. So yeah, I, I don't know if I would phrase it that way, but you know, in a perfect world, if if I if I could just you know from the what it what it. Uh, John Rawls call it the the veil of ignorance from behind that if I could choose to live in a culturally homogenous society rather than one that's just completely everybody all mashed together and fighting for dominance then then yeah I'd probably rather live in a culturally homogenous one 
But wait, um, what is the veil know, of like, ignorance? Have, what is that again? What does that mean? Rawls, John Rawls, the veil mm -hmm. of ignorance. All right, here's another philosophy test. Veil of ignorance is basically, and go ahead and look up the the Wikipedia page because this is all off the dome. But it's basically the idea that if you could go back to before you were born, okay, mm -hmm. and yeah. and you don't know where you're going to be born on the planet or anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of you know your race, whether you'll be a man or woman or you know whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you could just roll the dice and you know hope for the lottery of being born into a good life, uh, would the world would you choose to do that? We want to, and the way he brings this up is to illustrate that we want to. It's it's a good system to think about morality because we want to bring about an order or a, a system where you would want to say yes to that where even if you were going to be one of these one of the marginalized in society one of the most if you were born disabled if you were born with no legs you know if you were born a woman god forbid it's you know things wouldn't be as bad for you um so it's He's saying if it, you know, yeah, we should okay, yeah, that's good. You got it. I understand it. what it is. I'm just, I'm curious. Why would you invoke that when talking about like making like an ethnically homogenous society or something? Yeah, I was just saying that like if I could go back to the veil of ignorance and choose to like be born uh, into a homogenous society, that I would probably have chosen that. But given that where we are in America, <laughs> there's no pragmatic way to make that to restore um, uh, homogeneity to America would would include reducing. The, the other ethnic group's populations would it not i, I, just, I don't know what the fuck that even means <laughs> see, see this is the difference he literally just can't understand what <laughs> I'm i don't understand about. why you would invoke the veil of ignorance i want to go back to before the, the veil and then go live in an all joke. white oh, oh yeah God. okay it's just irony bro I'm like if i could go back to before i was born and it's mm -hmm. like could you live in a in a homogenous or not homogenous society, I would pick that one. That's what I meant to say. Okay, oh, okay. I'm not I, like I poking all of like, the philosophy. That level of abstraction know. hurts me. I'm only 105 IQ. I'm barely higher than average. Yeah, so I, 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 I can't, can't get those like fourth deviation away. Uh, that that yeah, Cuban blood is uh, yeah. it's holding you back. That Cuban blood. Yeah. That's a joke, by the way. I'm just I know. Don't worry. It's all irony. Hello. Okay. From little bro, um, what if little Tony never gets bullied? Um, all right, and then. Um, from Tyler, Brittany, did Destiny unread pill you? Uh, not really. And if you guys want me to change my title to centrist host so I can get stop getting some shit for this, I will happily do it. Um, but yeah, my position on immigration still hasn't really budged. So you're saying that Destiny didn't make a single convincing argument this entire time? Is that... Is that where we're at? We didn't for? even we didn't even get to argue over anything. Like, I don't even know yeah, where you're. Yeah, well, yeah, because somebody tied us up in like little uh, term I, term terminology quizzes. Yeah, the whole I do time think that, that there's a lot of being tied up on things that don't matter. That uh -huh. is not going to unread pill me. Mm -hmm. But um, from Rowdy or anybody. From Rowdy, does Mio know that he may have more genetic similarities to a black person than a white person? Also. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I believe that. Him. For race, human race only. And last one, and then we're gonna go um, from Matthew Burr. I grew up in Toronto, and it's multiracial. The race war never happened. Why doesn't Mio use Toronto as a study and realize this doesn't happen? Uh, yeah, sure. Just tell me about South Africa, man. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, um, this went a lot longer than normal. Um, <laughs> thank you guys both for coming on. We are going to be back tomorrow night. We're going to be doing our pop on drink and chat. And um, so if you guys are interested in coming on, you can let me know and we will just have a rotating panel we'll go all night. If I, can, if I can make it all night because I'm a little tired from this. But um, and then Sunday we have Sean Last and Stardust. They're going to be debating um, systemic racism. So that is the rest of our week. Oh, we did have one more. Okay. Um, from Bash the Bash, last question, Mio. Can I pay you fourteen eighty eight to recite the 14 words on Cameo? Come on. Um, I want to make a special gift to my uncle Thanksgiving. All right. That's cool. Oh, yeah. I definitely don't Shut know the down. words. I... <laughs> yeah, we're going. We're out of here. I don't down. know which words he's talking about. All right. Good All right, night. everybody. Smash the like button. Hit subscribe. <laughs> ring the bell. We didn't even get to talk about anything. What a horrible conversation. Not gonna lie, I feel like you did bully that guy a little too hard for most of the Nazi audiences. Like, asking my dire CS friends about completeness that he was not expect. Most CS people don't know. CS is a very broad discipline. It's not as fundamental such space. So I guess like my understanding is just that like the guy said that this guy said that he's 145 IQ. Like I don't think you guys understand. Like 
He's a, that is incredibly intelligent. This is like the point, I think it's like 0.2% of the population. 140, and he said 145 plus. So like, it, it just seems like somebody that's that smart. Like if I was talking to somebody that was of that level of intelligence, my expectation would be that if I were to ask him a question about any of these random things, that he could start to talk in levels that like, I just, I'm sorry, I can't hang with you. I don't know what you're talking about. Like I'm not, I, I like, I just can't keep up. I'm sorry. Like this isn't my field. Like that, that's like, that would be my assumption that like you're, you, you've got to be like very intelligent. If you've worked in all this shit and if you're, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm studying computer science. I've written a lot of papers about AI and automation. Saying that assembly is binary, I mean, it eventually translates to binary, I guess. But like, I, it feels like the answer there is like conceptually weak. Like, if you know the concept, you should be able to speak a little bit about it. You wouldn't have to guess. Like, assembly, isn't that kind of like a binary? Like, you would have a better answer, right? That would be like my, that would be my assumption. Going back to like the music thing, I felt very strong about too. Like, he made up everything about music. I know 100%. So, yeah, I don't know. Didn't he say he was 30-ish? Yeah, he said he was in his 30s. Do you think he's making up all the music shit or is just hardcore stretching the truth? I mean, he didn't know he didn't know a single thing about music at all, which just sounds so hard for me to believe. If he's like, if he's actually like plugged in like professionally to music scenes to not know like anything, I, I don't know. When you're saying shit to me like John Philip Sousa's big band music and you say you play jazz and you get paid to do it, I, I'm sorry, I just... Just, what is traditional American music? Traditional American music, it would probably be like uh, folk music or um, we have, uh, we have what, big band music. We had uh, jazz was American music. It's, it, we have. Um, so this is all African American music, right? Jazz and big band. That's like African American well, hey, Big stuff, band right? music is not African American music. Okay. Of course Dude. it was. Come on. No, it wasn't. Big band big music band is stuff. literally like John blues Phillip and jazz Sousa, and everything. John Philip like. Uh, hold on, hold on. This is African American no, 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 no. culture. Is that what you're John saying? John Philip Sousa wrote marches. That's not a big band. Hold on. Just I just want to be really clear so you don't embarrass yourself with this. Okay. Big band does not mean you have a big band playing of the songs. Big band refers to a, a type of like jazz or swing that you'd go and listen to and like dance and stuff. It's definitely African American, I promise you. I'm asking you. Uh, right? You're talking to somebody who's a musician and uh, you know actually did play jazz and uh, all okay. sorts of. Okay, I, I promise you that you were not a musician. Of, I promise I you that you theory. never play jazz. You did not play jazz, and you don't know you, theory. Okay, you don't Stop. get to say that about I me. Absolutely, my, my life and my history. Timber. Oh yeah, the timber of an instrument. Each instrument, from a trumpet to a violin, produces its own unique quality of sound called timbre, which the music ear uses it's to identify timber, it's sounding timber. like a trumpet Wait, you're, or a violin. You actually have timbre, no background whatever. in music. No, you're actually it says lying timber, to me. okay? Oh, that too, I guess. He's saying he's in his 30s, but he's in school right now for comp sci, and he's 145 IQ. Like, I, I don't know. And again, to be clear, I never gatekeep people or test people on this. The only reason I'm doing this is because he was literally, he opened that conversation saying like, I'm well studied in this. I know I studied music theory in college and everything, blah, 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 blah. Like, I, like yeah, I don't know. Or he didn't know the name for embouchure. That's gotta be something. That's like the most important thing. That is literally the single most important thing as a musician is your embouchure. If you're playing a horn instrument, right? Like, I don't know what a partial is and I don't remember this is it's actually embarrassing i don't remember what it's called when you're uh your embouchure <laughs> embouchure <laughs> yeah. you're tightening your lips yeah so yeah i it's don't okay. remember well, those i'm not things. trying to like but that doesn't mean gate. you want to talk about theory you want to talk about scales you want to talk about music history sure. how many like sharps are how many sharps are in an e major scale oh, man i don't remember yeah, my you don't, okay yeah stop anymore. okay so you don't know you anything know about music are, Okay, fine. Tell me, what are the you bragged about knowing your blue scales? What are the notes in a C blue scale? Maybe, maybe I could count it out. In what like are the notes C in a C scale blue right scale? B, B flat. What are the notes in a C blue scale? What are they? Do you know? Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah. I don't know why you would choose music of all the things. Blues? Gambit is linking me <laughs> fucking IQ questions. I almost linked him one because I was curious if he could talk his way through solving one, but uh, what does an IQ of one hundred and forty-five mean? It means you're isolated. Many people seem to be missing something and the rest disagree with you. Basically, you're smart enough to see the world does not work well, but not smart enough to figure out what to do about it. Things most people are passionate about, like football, basketball, rock, will seem meaningless to you. Eventually, you will accumulate a small number of friends who are as smart as you. 
You find it very difficult to cooperate with the people, form teams, or stay in voluntary organizations for more than about a year. Your net worth is on average a little higher than your social peers, but highly volatile, and you're probably not rich. Zibatsu, $5. You should have lured this kid to the wilderness. You have brilliant ideas, often not worked out correctly, and peer reviewers just don't understand them. By the time you get old, you figured most of this out. Conditions are much less favorable to high IQ individuals now than they were 50 years ago. At the time when survival depended on solving ballistics equations, organizing million strong armies, and building nuclear weapons and computers and radar, you would be identified and put to work and your idiosyncrasies, idiosyncrasies tolerated. Now you're just taking up space better used for affirmative action because the, co the cohesiveness of society is more important. We can buy any of the above things from the Asians who are smarter anyway. Yes. We can even buy nuclear weapons from them. North Korea will sell to anybody who can run the blockade. We already get all of our electronics from Asians and many of our scientists. What is this? Is this the most upvoted answer? Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Timmy, did you not do your homework? Timmy! Uh, Mr. Garrison, haven't you figured it out? Timmy's retarded.